let us start from the very basics and first of all try to understand what is the need behind studying MySQL or what exactly is MySQL and what kind of solution does it offers to me. So if you just see the first point, I have written that MySQL is the most popular open source relational SQL database management system. So what does this mean? If you, uh, if you just uh, take the first line, then I have said that MySQL is a database. So my first, uh, my first thing is that MySQL is what? MySQL is a, it's a kind of database. And then, uh, so database is primarily intended for saving some kind of data that is associated. Uh, so it can be any kind of data like data for an organization, suppose data for an online departmental store, suppose data for a mobile vendor, all these kind of data you can use a database for storing all these kind of data. But I would last, I would like to ask you a question that why cannot we use files for storing data? Uh, so, uh, and even before that, let me first of all tell you, suppose uh, you are writing one program, suppose uh, you must be aware of, uh, of uh, suppose C programming language, and if you are aware of C programming language, then you declare the main method, and inside the main method you declare some variables, suppose uh, you declare an int, suppose uh, int, suppose, uh, suppose uh, id, and then suppose you declare the name, suppose I say uh, string name, these variables you declare. But these variables, uh, the, what is the lifetime of, of these variables that you are created in your program? They are just created till the program runs. So for example, if this is, if this is your RAM, then these variables will be allocated inside your RAM. But once the program finished its execution, these variables, they will be, you can no, you can no longer access these variables. Okay. So that means I need some kind of permanent storage in which I can save my data. And for that purpose, I need a secondary storage. So always remember that data, you always save data in some kind of secondary storage. So RAM, this is your RAM and this is the primary memory. We do not use RAM for uh, storing any kind of data that we frequently require by because RAM data is perm it's not permanent. It is a uh, data just comes and goes. It uh, lives for the lifetime of the program till the program is executing. But if you want to actually save data and retrieve that data for some later use, then you use then you use your secondary storage. So your secondary storage means your hard drive. So in your hard drive, you can save some data. All right. So your hard disk, or or popularly you call this as a secondary storage. So this is my secondary storage in which I want to save some data. Now what I can uh, I can do I suppose I write uh, I clear all this so we have seen that RAM is not uh, RAM is not a solution for saving data because it is, because it is temporary but we can have uh, we can have our hard disk and hard disk can be used for saving some kind of data now I can do something like this I can save data in my secondary storage in the form of files okay so files can also save some kind of data. But uh, why do not we use files and why uh, why we use database management system? Can you tell me the answer? Why file is not a very efficient store if efficient solution for st saving data? See, you can store some amount of data in files. For example, you can store your contacts, you can store your uh, friend's birthday list. But if the data becomes very large, then file handling the data through files, it becomes very difficult and tedious job and data also suffers from some kind of inconsistency. For example, if there are two files and the two files uh, suppose contain the entry for the same employee, suppose there is one employee and both of these files contain the entry for the same employee. Uh, suppose there is one employee E1 and his age is 21 and here also suppose the employee is E1 and his age is 21 and now what happens is that suppose one year passes away and the employee age has to increase by one year. So what it may happen that I can uh, increase the salary of, I can increase the age of this employee in this file but I do not increase the age of employee in this file. So in this way both of these files can become what? Both of these files can become inconsistent that is why files uh, storing data in files it is not a uh, very uh, it is not very so that means there is a problem that is associated with multiple updates in in files when we store data in files 
like uh, if they, if the, if some if the similar kind of data is present at multiple locations and if one of the location gets updated then it may happen that the other locations may not get updated and that may result in data inconsistency plus also files you cannot uh, produce data in files uh, from 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 files in very representable format if you want some aggregate data if you want to produce some kind of reports from your data which you have saved in your files then it is very difficult to produce all these kinds of report aggregated reports from files you'll have to write very complex programming logic for that and that is generally not very efficient and if you delete accidentally delete some data and uh, like uh, if you want to search for some kind of data like if file is very big and it contains many of the records and you want to search for some kind of data then you will have to traverse through the whole data and then you can then you can find that data so all these uh, all these things indicate that files are not very efficient mechanism for storing data and so we need a database and we do not need a database we need a whole database management system that means a whole software that can offer a solution for our data related problems so for that purpose we have databases and there are many databases that are in the market uh, many popular relational databases that are present in the market for example you have uh, oracle database you have sql server that is also meant for storing data and then of course uh, we will be studying mysql so my mysql is also there and then postgresql all these are uh, all these are the different kind of databases that you use plus there are also some no sql solution like so for, say for example mongodb and redis and uh, these are all your no sql database so no sql means uh, it doesn't mean that uh, they lack sql statement no sql means that not only sql so uh, of course our uh, motive uh, over here is not to study no sql databases our motive here is to study relational databases and what is the prime identification of relational database the prime identification of a relational database is that data is always stored in the form of tables okay so here for example suppose um, you have a, you have a uh, you have a server and inside the server suppose you have a database so inside the database data will be always stored in form of what in form of a table so what exactly is a table a table is a intersection of rows and columns so how can we say that tables can be used to represent any kind of data see uh, for example suppose i have uh, i have one real world entity and i want suppose the real world entity is what i suppose the real world entity is student so you can identify the fields that are associated with student for example every student will have a id every student will have a name every student will have uh, marks and uh, suppose every student will have what every student will have a subject so then what i can do is that i can design a table for that and how will i design a table suppose i say one student is one his name is amit his uh, marks are suppose 97 and his subject is say for example java then i can have one more student suppose two and his name is suppose webhoof and his marks are say suppose 85 and his subject is say for example c++ then i can have one more student for example 3 and his name is say suppose nitin and his marks are 91 and his subject is say suppose uh, nodejs so nodejs is a very popular uh, server side tool uh, written in javascript so of course we are not going to see this in this video but still uh, just see this so this is what this becomes my see this becomes my table where data is stored in the intersection of rows and columns okay so this is what is the table so each row is representing what each row here is representing one instance of student see this row is representing amit this is representing webhub and this is representing what nathan and each column is representing one of the properties of student for example this is representing id this is representing the name this is representing subject this column and this column is representing what this column is representing the subject of the student so that is where if you have intersection of rows and columns then you can model any kind of real world entities in that table so always remember that a relational database means a kind of database in which data is stored in the form of tables clear so let us continue our discussion and i will just clear all these fields and uh, so i we discussed 
that uh, we are uh, discussing about uh, relational database and uh, there are a lot many of re relational database uh, system that are available in the market for example oracle is is one of your database then there is one database uh, sql server this is also a relational database relational database means in all these databases data will be stored in the form of tables then you have what then you have mysql so these are all relational databases then what is sql so sql what can you tell me what is a what what does sql mean now many people carry this confusion that sql is also a database but uh, sql stand for structured query language so structured query language is a language that you can use to communicate with these databases so you can use sql to communicate with oracle you can use SQL to communicate with SQL Server and you can use SQL to communicate with what? You can use SQL to communicate with MySQL as well. So remember that SQL is a structured query language. This it is a language that is used to communicate with databases. So it is a four generation language, very user friendly language and it is almost written in the way we generally communicate. Like, uh, like uh, we want to fetch some data. So naturally we will say select this from this and get me this out from this. So it is almost, you know, very user friendly language. Uh, that is your SQL language. So always remember SQL stands for structured query language. So it is a language that is used for communicating with the database or it is a language that most of the relational databases understand clear. Uh, so with this, I'll just uh, end this video. In the next video, we will, uh, of course, continue our discussion of MySQL and we will see in the next video how can we connect to the MySQL database, what is MySQL server and what is MySQL client. So what I will do is that I will just open my database. Uh, it is asking for password and you know, password is I have not given any password. I just uh, so what are the current option of uh, uh, suppose I say what are the databases uh, that are available. Uh, uh, so I will uh, okay I, I, I just uh, you know the names of all the databases uh, okay it is not giving any okay what I will do first of all I will select a database uh, suppose it is a publisher database then if I say uh, select a database then what is the current database it is a publisher database so inside my publisher database i have one table this is the employee table this is the employees table okay and if i say select star from employees if i say select star from the employees table then you get this data now there is another table uh, i'll just show you the structure of these table departments table departments okay this is the departments table and if i say select star from departments then you get this data okay so let us first of all study the employees table this is my employees table so what all do you have in the employees table you have the employee id you have the employee name you have the department id you have the salary commission designation the manager id and the gen gender of the employee for example if i say select star from employee okay if i select star from employees since this is the data suppose uh, there is one employee his name is suppose uh, sonali and uh, sonali is having the employee id as 9 he her name is sonali he she works in department number 20 her salary is 40000 she gets the commission per month as 3500 her designation in the organization is, a, is as a developer and her manager id is 2 what does this mean her manager id is 2 that means her manager is an employee with the id 2 that means her manager is nitin okay and her gender is female similarly this is the data about all the employees so this is my employees table and then when i say select star from the departments table departments okay so you have one department uh, id suppose department id 10 and the department name is sales and suppose the city in which this department is located is the mumbai okay it is in mumbai so department number 20 is in bangalore department number 30 is in chennai so this is my suppose this is my uh, table and these are the two tables which i'll be mainly working on and uh, uh, so you can consider that these two tables belong to the same uh, these these two tables represent one single organization unit for example uh, 
I just want to say that if if for uh, suppose say uh, suppose the department ID of Nikhil is ten, then that means Nikhil is working. If you go to the department table and follow my mouse, then Nikhil is working in the sales department. Okay, uh, I'll just you know I'll just uh, explain it uh, here. Uh, I'll just take a pen and uh, suppose if you say about Nikhil, okay, suppose this is Nikhil, and so Nikhil is working in department number ten. Okay. This is uh, so. This is the case. Now, uh, now let us study about the select statement. So, select statement is used to know it, it is used to select some data from the table. So, the basic uh, you know basic format of a select statement is as follows. Suppose I will open this notepad, and if you want to write a select statement, then you write uh, something like this: column name one comma suppose uh, column name two and so on from suppose your uh, table name from the table okay for example here in the employees table i have the following column suppose employee id name department id suppose i just want to get the employee id name and department id of all the employees then what query will i like i will write something like this eid e name comma dpt id from which table from the employees table so this is my data okay i just got the employee id name and department id so i just fetched a part of the table see the table is uh, having the following you know it is having if you just count the number of columns there are exactly eight columns but i just fetched out of them you know the you know the name this the the id the name and the department id of every employee suppose i want the salary and name of every employee then what query will i like i will write something like this suppose salary from which table it is a employee table so this is what i get now uh, so if you are studying the select statement the very first thing that has to be kept in mind the select statement works row by row okay what does this mean the select statement works row by row see this is you know it is not you know any kind of formal thing or you know it, this kind of things uh, definitions you will not find in books standard books but this is what i have learned you know working in my sequel this is all what i have learned so select statement works row by row if uh, you want to understand what is what does this mean then let me go to paint and you, i know just let me explain it for example uh, suppose i have employees table and uh, this is my suppose this is my employees table okay uh, please ignore the font and everything and uh, uh, suppose uh, okay then this is you know some kind of your employees table and uh, i'll and i'll write something over here also suppose there is one employee and i will give random name suppose abc there is two third employee suppose x y z and l n n suppose he is working in department number 10 he is working in department number 10 he is working in department number 20 and then i say suppose his salary is suppose 2000 His salary, suppose X Y Z salary, suppose three thousand, and suppose uh, L M N salary is say about about one thousand. So this is suppose this is my table. Now if I say uh, I am uh, suppose select this is my employees table and select uh, suppose uh, so these are your columns. Suppose employee ID, then this is your name, and then this is your department ID, and this is your salary. So if I say select uh, salary. suppose select salary from which table from your employees table okay this is your table so what it will do it will go from one row to another row first it will go to this row it will get the salary then it will go to this row and it will get the salary and then it will go to this row and it will get the salary okay so if i say suppose uh, select salary suppose salary from from the employees table then it will go to each row and get the salary you know of every employee from that row but if i write suppose something like this select a from employees then can you guess what will be the output of this query if i say select a from employees see if you want to know about the output of this query you just remember this thing select statement works row by row okay select statement works row by row so if i write something like this then what you will get this output see 10 rows are being selected but from 
each row it is going to select what it is selecting eight and this is what i precisely said my dear friends if you go over here this is what i said the select statement so if i write select eight from employees if i say select eight from employees then it will go to first this row and select what eight it will go to this row and then you know although eight is not a column of this you know table but still it is going to select that thing suppose i write uh, select uh, suppose uh, krishna from uh employees if i say something like this then it will go to each row and it will get what it will get employees but if i say something like this these queries do not make sense but if i say e name comma salary from which table from the employees table <coughs> then what it will mean it will mean that it will go get go to each row and it will get the id name and the corresponding salary and now this is the case with you know the department table also select star from and so for what is star so star is a you know it's a kind of wild card operator that is used to select all the you know all the columns of your table okay so if i say select star from the employees table if i say something like this then the whole details of the employees table will be selected so this is you know this is the select statement and always remember that select statement works row by row okay it is going to go it is going to going to each row and then fetching the you know desired column for example if uh, you see select star from the department table this is my department table and suppose i say select dpt id comma d name from which table department table okay suppose this then it will go to each row and fetch the department id and the department name so this is the way you know the select class in this video we will study about uh, dml commands in mysql so uh, let me just go and open it uh, uh, so dml stands for data manipulation language and uh, to you always remember keep this thing in mind that whenever you are asking about or you know whenever dml commands are used they always work on rows okay they they perform some kind of operation on rows of a table and insert update and delete are the examples of dml commands so uh, without wasting any time uh, i have one table and this is the student table so student table has student id student name age and subject and now my task is to insert a row inside the student table so insert is a dml command why it is a dml command because it is inserting one row inside the student table and this i have already told you that dml commands act on rows so what will i write insert into and then you write the name of the table so in my case the name of the table is student and then you give the name you know and then you give the column names so i will say sid and then i will say s name and then i will say age and then i will say subject these are the columns and now what values i want to insert i want to insert one suppose uh, amit and suppose age is 21 and subject is say suppose his subject is java all right so i have inserted one row and now once when you say select a star from student table then you will get this one row it is also possible to change the order of columns for example i do not write like this first uh, i say something like this for example age and then i say s name and then subject followed by the subject all right so how now you are going to insert it so now you are going you the the way you have given columns the order in which you have you know you have given the list of columns in that same particular order you have to perform insertion so here first you have to mention what first you have to mention the age and now you have to mention what and now you have to mention the name suppose uh, age is 22 and then suppose name is uh, uh, Vishal and uh, subject is suppose come uh, com compilers and uh, now if you do select star from student so you will get two rows so it is also possible to change uh, uh, you know the order of columns and the way you change the order of columns inside the insert uh, query you have to supply the columns in you know the values in those fashion in that particular order uh and uh, there is a default ordering you know if i say b s c s t u d and t so default ordering is that first uh, 
first you have to you know default by in default way first SID has to be entered then stm has to be entered and then age and then subject so if you perform you know if you perform insertion operation in default uh, in default ordering way then you do not have to give the you know the column list so i can directly insert how i can directly insert i do not have to if uh, if i do like this see i am performing a default uh, you know default ordering of insert first SID is coming, then name is coming, then age is coming and then subject is coming and that is what is exactly over here. First SID, then name and then age and then subject. In this case you do not need to give the uh, the column list. Uh, so I say 3 and suppose the the name of the student is Rithik. Uh, suppose her age is 24 and subject is uh, say suppose um, um, Ada analysis and design of algorithms so it will be successfully inserted but if i change the default ordering and then try to insert it for example if i if i change the age uh, if i change uh, first of all i give the age and then i give you know then i give the name suppose uh, uh, sharuk suppose i give this name and suppose i set the age to 25 and suppose uh, uh, suppose uh, id to be 5 and subject to be suppose TOC that is theory of computation if I write like this it will not it will not insert because column count doesn't match the value of count at row 1 so in that case now you will have to supply you know the order in which you are performing the insert so how you are performing the insert first you are giving the SID and then you are giving what then you are giving age and then you are giving what name and then finally you are giving what subject so if you break this default uh, ordering then you have to then you have to give your column list okay SID H name and subject uh, I should get inserted SID H then I'm giving the age and then I'm giving the name and then I'm giving the subject okay uh, Okay, uh, I think there is a insert into student uh, values uh, SID then I've given the age then I have given the name okay so I forgot to add a comma over here so all right so now it will get inserted okay so this is how you work with insert query and now we will talk about updates so this is uh, my table student okay suppose uh, I want to do one thing. I want to update uh, this employee. His name is Rithik and his age is 24. I want to set his age equal to 42. Suppose I do. I want to do like this. Then what query will I issue? I will say update the table name. Then what is the name of the table? Student. And then I say set. Set what? Age. Age equal to new updated age is say suppose 42. And where you know? Where what? Where SID equal to what? SID equal to 3. See? This employee Rithik has has an SID of what? It has an it has a student ID of three. So that is why when I say SID equal to three, this row will be selected and age will be updated to what? Age will be updated to forty two. So if you say again say select start from student, and the new updated age will come become what? It will become equal to forty two. Okay. Uh, suppose uh, I can do suppose I want to um, um, uh, this employee Sharuk. Uh, suppose I want to change his age to 26 his age his age is 25 I want to change it to 26 and I want to set the subject to be say suppose operating system then what will I do I will say uh, update update uh, which table update the student table update student set what age equal to 26 comma all right so if you have if you are performing multiple updates if you are performing updates on many columns then you have to be a, give a comma separated you know you have to separate every column by a comma and then age equal to 20 sing and then i will say subject equal to suppose uh, operating system os where i can write s name equal to what sharp okay uh, if I try to run this, okay, so it is working fine, and you are now you are getting you know Sharu cage has become 26, and subject has become what it has become OS. But uh, I can also write the previous query, you know, like uh, writing like this, uh, for example. Yeah, over here I do not write 
I write SID equal to what? SID equal to 5. I can also write this. In both of the cases, this row will be selected. See, this row will be selected. All right. But it is always a better approach to catch a row by the prime by the primary key or you know the ID column. In this case, the ID column is SID. So it is always better to uh, to you know when you are performing you know when you are writing where then it is always better to write the ID. Why? Because there can be two employees whose name can be Sharuk, but they will have different IDs. So it, this is always better approach to uh, you know whenever you are performing updates in the where class you you have to perform on specific rows and you you perform update the you, you know you catch those those rows by their IDs. All right. So this is you know how you work with update and then finally delete. So delete also works the same way. Suppose I want to delete this row, that is Sharuk. So what will I say? Delete from which table? Delete from student table. Where what uh, SID equal to what? SID equal to 5. See, in place of SID equal to 5, I can also say S name equal to Sharuk. Why? Because this is because I want to select this row. I want to select this row. But it is always, you know, as I told, it is always advisable to write the you know to catch hold of the row by the primary key so here i do it so this row will be deleted and now once when i say select star from student this row has been deleted all right so this is how you work with delete and now if you want to delete the suppose i write delete from student all right a quiz time for you suppose i write delete from student where one equal to two okay what will happen why you know uh Okay, this is a you know this is a kind of specific query that works in Oracle. It's not working in MySQL. All right. Suppose I only write delete from my delete from student. Then what will happen? Can you guess? See, this is a very dangerous query. If you write if you perform delete operation without using the without any without giving any where condition, the whole records of the table will be deleted. So if I write delete from student and I just give an enter then what will happen you know if i write select star from the student table if i write select star from uh, student table then all the rows of the table have been deleted so you have to be very cautious when you when you write delete queries why because if you if you just delete then you, if you just delete by give, without giving any where condition then the whole table will be deleted okay so in this way we perform insert update and delete operations on mysql in this video we will study about uh, dml commands in mysql so uh, let me just go and open it uh, uh, so dml stands for data manipulation language and uh, to you always remember keep this thing in mind that whenever you are asking about or you know whenever dml commands are used they always work on rows okay they they perform some kind of operation on rows of a table and insert update and delete are the examples of dml commands so uh, without wasting any time uh, i have one table and this is the student table so student table has student id student name age and subject and now my task is to insert a row inside the student table so insert is a dml command why it is a dml command because it is inserting one row inside the student table and this i have already told you that dml commands act on rows so what will i write insert into and then you write the name of the table so in my case the name of the table is student and then you give the name you know and then you give the column names so i will say sid and then i will say s name and then i will say age and then i will say subject these are the columns and now what values i want to insert i want to insert one suppose uh, amit and suppose age is 21 and subject is say suppose his subject is java all right so i have inserted one row <clears throat> and now once when you say select a star from student table then you will get this one row it is also possible to change the order of columns for example i do not write like this first uh, i say something like this for example age and then I say S name and then subject followed by the subject. All right. So how now you are going to insert it. So now you are going you the the way you have given columns the order in which you have you know you have given the list of columns in that same particular order you have to perform insertion. So here first you have to mention what first you have to mention the age and now you have to mention what and now you have to mention the name suppose uh, age is 22. And then suppose name is uh, 
uh, Vishal and the subject is suppose uh, com compilers and uh, now if you do select start from student so you will get two rows so it is also possible to change uh, uh, you know the order of columns and the way you change the order of columns inside the insert uh, query you have to supply the columns in you know the values in those fashion in that particular order uh, and uh, there is a default ordering you know if i say b s c s t u d n t so default ordering is that first uh, first you have to you know default by in default way first sid has to be entered then stm has to be entered and then age and then subject so if you perform you know if you perform insertion operation in default uh, in default ordering way then you do not have to give the you know the column list so i can directly insert how i can directly insert i do not have to if uh, if I do like this, see, I am performing a default, uh, you know, default ordering of insert. First, SID is coming, then name is coming, then age is coming, and then subject is coming. And that is what is exactly over here. First, SID, then name, and then age, and then subject. In this case, you do not need to give the, uh, the column list. Uh, so I say three, and suppose the, the name of the student is Rithik. Uh, suppose our age is 24 and subject is uh, say suppose um, um, ADA analysis and design of algorithms so it will be successfully inserted but if I change the default ordering and then try to insert it for example if I if I change the age uh, if I change uh, first of all I give the age and then I give you know then I give the name suppose uh, uh, Shahrukh suppose I give this name and suppose I set the age to 25 and suppose uh, uh, suppose uh, ID to be 5 and subject to be suppose TOC that is theory of computation if I write like this it will not it will not insert because column count doesn't match the value of count at row 1 so in that case now you will have to supply you know the order in which you are performing the insert so how you are performing the insert first you are giving the SID and then you are giving what then you are giving age and then you are giving what name and then finally you are giving what subject so if you break this default uh, ordering then you have to then you have to give your column list visible okay sid h name and subject uh, i should get inserted sid Age, then I'm giving the age and then I'm giving the name and then I'm giving the subject okay uh, okay uh, I think there is a insert into student uh, values uh, SID then I'm given the age then I'm given the name okay so I forgot to add a comma over here so all right so now it will get inserted okay so this is how you work with insert query and now we will talk about updates so this is uh, my table student okay suppose uh, i want to do one thing i want to update uh, this employee his name is rithik and his age is 24 i want to set his age equal to 42 suppose i do i want to do like this then what query will i issue i will say update the table name then what is the name of the table student and then i say set set what age age equal to new updated ages say suppose 42 and where you know where what where sid equal to what sid equal to 3 see this employee rithik has has an sid of what it has an it has a student id of 3 so that is why when i say sid equal to 3 this row will be selected and age will be updated to what age will be updated to 42 so if you say again say select start from student and the new updated age will come become what it will become equal to 42 okay uh, suppose uh, i can do suppose i want to um, um, uh, this employee sharuk uh, suppose i want to change his age to 26 his age his age is 25 i want to change it to 26 and i want to set the subject to be say suppose operating system then what will i do i will say uh, update update uh, which table update the student table update student set what age equal to 26 
comma all right so if you have if you are performing multiple updates if you are performing updates on many columns then you have to be a, give a comma separated you know you have to separate every column by a comma and then age equal to 20 sing and then i will say subject equal to suppose uh, operating system os where i can write s name equal to what sharp okay uh, if I try to run this, okay, so it is working fine, and you are now you are getting you know Sharu Cage has become 26, and subject has become what it has become OS. But uh, I can also write the previous query, you know, like uh, writing like this, uh, for example. Yeah, over here I do not write. I write SID equal to what? SID equal to five. I can also write this. In both of the cases, this row will be selected. See, this row will be selected. All right. but it is always a better approach to catch a row by the prime by the primary key or you know the id column in this case the id column is a id so it is always better to uh, to you know when you are performing you know when you are writing where then it is always better to write the id why because there can be two employees whose name can be sharp but they will have different ids so it this is always better approach to uh, you know whenever you are performing updates in the where class you you have to perform on specific rows and you you perform update the, you, you know you catch those those rows by their ids all right so this is you know how you work with update and then finally delete so delete also works the same way suppose i want to delete this row that is sharuk so what will i say delete from which table delete from student table where what uh, sid equal to what sid equal to See, in place of SID equal to 5, I can also say S name equal to Sharu. Why? Because this is because I want to select this row. I want to select this row. But it is always, you know, as I told, it is always advisable to write the, you know, to catch hold of the row by the primary key. So here I do it. So this row will be deleted. And now once when I say select star from student, this row has been deleted. All right. So this is how you work with delete. And now if you want to delete, the, suppose I write delete from student all right a quiz time for you suppose i write delete from student where one equal to two okay what will happen why you know uh okay this is a you know this is a kind of specific query that works in oracle it's not working in mysql all right suppose i only write delete from my delete from student then what will happen can you guess see this is a very dangerous query if you write if you perform delete operation without using the without any without giving any where condition the whole records of the table will be deleted so if i write delete from student and i just give an enter then what will happen you know if i write select star from the student table if i write select star from uh, student table then all the rows of the table have been deleted so you have to be very cautious when you when you write delete queries why because if you if you just delete then you, if you just delete by give, without giving any where condition then the whole table will be deleted okay so in this way we perform insert update and delete operations on mysql and in this video we will study about ddl commands in mysql so ddl stands for data definition language so data definition language commands are those command in which you modify uh, or change the structure of your data. Uh, so this is actually different from inserting, updating or deleting a data. This is basically uh, used when you are creating a table or when you are altering the structure of a table, then you issue DDL commands. So if you just read it over here, DDL statements or commands are used to define and modify the database structure of table or schema. So they are either used to create table or they are used to create, uh, you know, alter the structure of a table or there can be some other database structures, database objects, uh, which we create or alter. And for that purpose, we use DDL commands. So some of the DDL commands are create, alter, drop, truncate, rename. So let us try to explore and learn all these DDL commands. Okay. So I'll just uh, go to my uh, database and uh, all right. I will select the database. Uh, okay. All right. So database selected. If I say uh, select database, then you will get this database. Now, uh, my task is to create a table and uh, suppose, uh, first of all, let me say something. Uh, let me ensure that, uh, all right. Let me create a student table. 
so how will I create a table so if you have to create a table then you use something like this you know I'll just uh, minimize it uh, I think uh, I need to skip it yeah now I will go over here and uh, so if you have to create a table then you use the following command create table and then you give the table name and then inside the brackets you give a column name uh, one and column one data uh, type okay so all right i don't i don't have a comma over here you give the column name and then you give the column data type so uh, you can have many numbers of columns inside uh, your table for example uh, i can then you have a comma and suppose again then you have new column suppose column two and then you mention the column two data type and then you know this way you keep on uh, you know adding columns to the table this way you create tables in uh, MySQL. So let us create a table. Suppose the name of the table is student table. Suppose I say the student serial number and let us. Uh, so this is my this is the name of my column serial number and I am having this. I am telling it that the data type of serial number is int and then I have a column suppose student name and then suppose it is of varchar 20 and uh, suppose uh, age suppose student age is also an int and upon one more column I have suppose date of birth and I say it equal to be of type date so I have created a table and what is the name of the table the name of the table is the student table so once when I go and you know you know I say student then you are getting this table so you are getting these columns serial number ser name age and date of birth so this is this command see this command which you have uh, you have issued over here that is you know create table command so this is a ddl command why it is a ddl command because you are actually uh, kind of you are creating a structure in your table okay you are not creating new data you are creating a new structure in the table see if i say insert into student uh, values suppose student uh, name is one suppose name is uh, Amit and suppose age is 20 22 and then I say suppose date of birth is I, I can say anything suppose he is recently born okay <laughs> I cannot you know because age is 22 so I cannot set it to current date uh, but let us again do it doesn't make any difference just for trial and testing purpose select star from student if I say like this see here by using this command I have created a new data inside this table I have not changed the structure of the table I have just added a new data so this command insert command this is a kind of DML command it is a DML command why because it is manipulating the data it is a data manipulation language but this command which is actually changing the structure of you know structure of table or creating some new structure so these type of commands are called your ddl commands so we have created the table that is called the student table so now let us go and uh, you know uh, you know if i want to drop this table then what command will you uh, suppose you want to drop a table then i will say drop a table and then you give the table name so if you want to drop the table then what will you say you can say drop uh, sorry drop table what is the name of the table drop table student so the table will be dropped and now if you say select star from student student table you will not get it why because this not this dot this table does not exist because we have already dropped this table so drop is also a kind of a, it's a kind of ddl command data definition language command so let us go and again create this table so i have already you know let me create this table again so this table is the student table student this is my de student table this is my student table sorry type of mistakes all right so this is my student table suppose now i want to do something i want to add a uh, marks to the student so i have not given a column so if i want to add a new column to a table so what command will i what command will i use so if you want to add a column to a table then you use this command alt table uh, then you give the table name and then you give uh, you write this add and then you give the name of the column which you want to uh, add to the table column name 
and then you give the data type so all right like this alt table table name add column and then the data type associated with the column so here i can write alt table what is the name of my table student suppose i say add marks and the marks is of type int so i have added one column and now if you say dsc student then you are getting one more column in this table that is a marks column so this is the command that you use to add some column to the uh, to existing table so this alter command alter table command is also a kind of ddl command why it is a ddl command because we are not adding some new data to the student table we are actually changing the structure of a of the student table see what this is what we have studied over here for example if you just uh, i mean if you uh, if you see this ddl statements are used to modify you know the database structure you they are used to define or then they are used to modify so alter command is you you are using this alter command to modify the structure of the table now if you you have created this marks column suppose you want to now if you want to drop a column from a table drop a existing column from a table suppose you want to drop the date of birth column from the student table then what command will you use to drop a uh, column you use this command alter table and then you give the table name and then drop and then you give the column name this way you drop a column from a table so now if i go to my database for example this is my database and now if you want to drop the date of birth column then what command will i say alter table which table the student table and drop what date of birth so i've dropped one column and now if i say dsc student i will only get serial number name age and marks so this way you can drop a column now you can also do something very interesting suppose uh, you can also uh, suppose now let me add one more column to the student table suppose uh, this is the student subject and uh, suppose alt table uh, suppose uh, student add subject and uh, suppose i write like this then when i say d e s c d s c s t u d e n t this is my student table so i have serial number name age mark and the subject of the student so let me insert one data inside this table suppose i say insert into sorry insert into which table student table and then i say values suppose there is there is one student 2 his name is neha her name is neha and age is suppose 21 and suppose marks are suppose uh, 98 and suppose i say the subject is uh, maths uh, will it work out let us try and see okay if i say select star from std and suppose i write like this then you are insert getting the subject to be what then you are getting the subject to be zero this is happening because you are setting the subject you see the data type of subject is integer so because it is a subject it has to be var cat type but i have you know by mistake i have made that made it an integer so now i want to modify the structure of the table and i want to change the data type of subject which is initially it isn't and now i want it i wanted to change it to var cat see here i am inserting maths as a subject for the, this neha student but the subject is coming out to be zero why because it is not getting you know properly inserted so now i want to change the structure of the student table and now i want to modify i want to modify this column that is the subject column and i want to change it to var cat type so what command will i use i will just write the command and then we will you know um so yeah i just uh, i just uh, create this command is will be used for uh, creating a table and uh, this uh, this command we use to drop a table this command we use to add a column to a table and this command we use to drop a column from a table okay so now what i want to do i want to modify a column so i will say modify a column so what command will i use to modify a column in a table i will use this command alter uh, table 
alt table and then you will give the name of the table so what is the name of the table table whatever be the name of the table alt table table name modify and then uh, you give the column name that you want to modify and then you give the new data type so okay like this you modify all right so alt table table name modify column name whichever column you want to modify and new uh, date type new data type okay the new data type which you want to this which you want this column to have for example in this case our subject column i want the subject column to be of type varchar so what will i say i will say uh, alt table what is the name of the table student table and then will i say modify modify what subject and i want this subject to be of type what i want this subject to be of type varchar i say varchar 100 okay so here if i say again bsc student then what will i get see now this student is subject is of type what it is of type varchar so now let us if you try to insert one more row suppose uh, the student is uh, amisha and uh, her roll number is say suppose 3 and uh, now this then now this will be properly inserted if you say select star from student then this will be properly inserted why because we have changed the data type, data type of subject all right and you can also do something uh, you know uh, very interesting uh, you can also set a null value uh, you, you 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 know you can uh, for example if you just observe this uh, column this column has a default type of null i can change this also and i can you know um, uh, i can uh, you see uh, this can this column can be set to null value and it has it has default value of what it has default value of null so i can change this also for example uh, i can write uh, what i can write modify varchar subject and then i can say not null and i can give a default value associated with the column also suppose i say default value is uh, suppose the default value of uh, every student uh, subject is uh, uh any subject you know i think uh, let us make it uh, history all right and then once when you say um dsc student the student table if you describe it then see this column where subject is now it is no more you know it is no more uh, you know it cannot be set to null and the default value of this column is what the default value of this column is equal to history so you can also do this all right uh, let us move on and uh, now uh, suppose uh, uh, the default value of this column is history but uh, now i want to change the default value of this column uh, and i want it to set it to suppose sanskrit sanskrit is a very uh, popular language um um as far as our indian vedic civilization is concerned sanskrit is a is a, is a language of uh, of uh, of the gods so let us try to modify this so how will i do it alter table so i am making a lot of typos in this video all right what table i want to modify alt table student and alter what subject and i will say default to be sanskrit uh there is some problem with this let me you know alt table student alt subject default sanskrit Okay, there is some problem with this uh, i think uh, i need to add one more you know thing i'll alter table student name alter table table name alter column name and then set subject default is equal to what sanskrit so now if you go and student suppose you write like this then you know the default value so this also i can do now i i can change the default value of some column okay uh besides changing the data type of the column i can also change the default value associated with that particular column and then uh in the end i can also rename a table so what command will i use to rename a table alt suppose uh uh 
suppose these students are all engineering students and i want to and i and I, and i'm an engineer and i want students of type engineer so i don't want this table to be named student i want this table to be named as e student that will stand for engineering students so what will i say alt table student and rename to suppose e s t u d e n t e students so i hope there will be many engineers who will be watching this video so all right if i do like this then if i say d e s c what e s t u d e n t s t u d e n t e student then you will get this table so uh, this command also you can use you know you can use this command to rename a table so what will i use what command will i use to rename a table uh rename a table so alt uh, alter table uh, um table name and then i say rename to what rename to a new table name new table underscore name so these are uh, some uh, of the dvl commands and yes one more thing i'm missing that is a truncate so this is a very popular interview question for example i say select star from e s t u d e n t then you will get this if you want to uh, if you want to remove all the records from a table then you will say delete from what e s t u d e n t all right if you write this command then all the records from your uh, or from your table will be deleted but this delete command is a kind of dml command see it is a data manipulation language command but i can also issue one more command that is a truncate command so if i say truncate table s t u d e n t if i say like this truncate table student command then this will also uh drop all the rows from the table but this truncate command is not a dml command like the delete command it is a ddl command why uh, because <coughs> because the operation which it is performing it cannot be reverted back it cannot be put into some kind of transactions and it cannot be you know it cannot be reverted or rolled back and uh, all the space that has been allocated uh, for the rows of this table that is a e student table that will be deallocated so always remember this is the difference between uh, truncate and delete okay uh, this table does not exist actually i have the e student table exist so if i say uh, now if i say select star from uh, sorry select star from e student so i will not get any rows so why because i have used this command truncate command okay so this command is going to delete all the rows from a table but this will be a ddl operation so always remember this is the difference between delete and truncate and they in in interviews many frequently they ask what is the difference between dml between the de truncate delete and drop so drop is you know this table structure is remaining you know if you say s t u d e n t this table structure is always here but the rows have been deleted and truncate is a ddl command but if i say drop table e s t u d e n t then the whole table will be dropped and if we say d e s c e s t the structure is being dropped so this table will not exist okay so truncate is a ddl command always remember this all right in this video we will study about uh, few clauses in mysql programming and uh, you will use them use these clauses frequently when you write your sql queries so i will just uh, so when i say show data bases so it will list out the list you know the all the database in my server and i will out of you out of it i will use the published database so this is uh, okay sorry use uh, publisher so i'll use a publisher database and inside this database there is one table the uh, employees table so this is my employees table and there is one more table uh, the department table select star from Depart. So this is my department table. Okay. So now uh, let us continue. And uh, over here, uh, suppose uh, first of all, let me tell you what I am going to explain in this video. So I'll just open the notepad, and I'm going to uh, discuss few uh, clauses in SQL. Okay. That's uh, okay. So 
I will talk about in class. Then I will talk about you know the uh, between clause, and then I will talk about the like clause. So when you say the in clause, so the in clause is used for then you can say exact matching. Okay, between clause is uh, is used for uh, uh, sorry range matching. Okay. And like clause, like clause, uh, this is used for uh, your uh, pattern matching. Okay, so like clause is used for pattern matching. So all these clause we will study one by one. But before that, uh, let us uh, move to the database and uh, let me tell you one important thing that whenever you deal with string literals in MySQL, you always enclose strings in single inverted commas. For example, if I want to find out the salary of Nikhil. So I wa I want name and I want the salary from which table from the uh, yeah, the employees table okay where e name equal to what is equal to is equal to suppose Nikhil because I want to find out the salary of Nikhil so Nikhil has a salary of uh, twelve uh, one lakh twenty thousand per month but uh, uh, you know you have to keep this thing in mind uh, for example I'll just use a pen tool over here. Uh, to just you know highlight things uh, here you know I have used these you know if you just observe I have used this single inverted commas over here so always remember that whenever you are dealing with strings in a database you always use single inverted commas okay so this is very simple but uh, now I will just minimize it and then suppose now I want to find out all the employees who are either managers and who are either developers okay so what I will do I will write down the queries one by one and uh, okay and you can just you know so you can refer them okay so like this so my first query is find all the employees who are you know either managers or developers okay they are either managers or developers so what query will I write select ename E name uh, comma designation designation from which table from the employees table where I say that the designation can be manager or it can be a developer so what I can write where designation equal to what it can be either equal to a manager or designation can be equal to what it can be equal to or designation equal to what it can be equal to a developer so I can write uh, something like this okay so if I write like this then I will guess I'll get a list of employees who are either managers or developers so here also if you ob observe I have because you know uh, designation is also of type var characters if you suppose if you write DSC the employees table if you describe the employees table then you find designation is of type var cache. so whenever you and you know you operate on you know var cache, you write where uh, you know we you perform some search operation in in your where clause using some var data type then you enclose them in your in single inverted commas for example i have enclosed manager and developer over here in single inverted commas okay so just keep this thing in mind okay now now let us move forward and first of all let us study the in clause so all right I will study first of all the in clause. So in clause is used for exact matching. How is in clause used for exact matching? Just take the previous query. This query is returning me all the employees who are either manager or developer. Okay. Now uh, I can write this query in some other form using the in operator. How? I will use select e name comma designation from the employees table where designate designation in I can say something like this either the designation can be a manager or the designation can be a developer if I write something like this okay okay now it is correct so here I have what what operator I have used I have used the in operator over here if you just observe I have used the in operator over here and why do I say that in operator of if you just look at this in operator you use for exact matching why I have said like this because it is going to exactly match either manager or exactly match what either developer and carefully note the word either I am using either 
so either means it can be either manager or developer so that is why you can also write this query using or you know or operator but in over here i used in so you can either use you know either you can you can use in or either you can use or for example suppose i say i want the list of all employees who work either in department number 10 or in department number 20 okay i like the query uh, suppose uh, uh, get the uh, list get the list of all employees who work either in department either in a department 10 or 20 okay i want the list of all these employees so what query will i like select ename comma uh, dpt id dpt id from which table from the employees table where dpt id can be equal to 10 or dpt id can be equal to what it can be equal to 20 also but the same query I can write in this form also select ename comma dpt id where dpt id in what it can be either in 10 or it can be in what 20 okay I can write this okay select ename comma dpt id from which table from the employees table okay from employees where dpt id in 10 or 20 so I'll get the same record so over here if you observe also I'm I'm writing what where department either in 10 or either in 20 and it is exactly matching 10 and 20 okay like this uh now uh we'll study the so this is my employees table if i write select star from the employees table this is my employees table okay now uh Suppose I say list all the employees who work either in department number 10 or in department number 20, but their salary is greater than suppose uh, 60,000 or uh, say suppose 40,000. Okay, like this. Uh, I'll just, you know, copy it. And this is my third query. So what is the third query? Uh, I'll just paste it. get list of all employees who work either in department id 10 or 20 and whose salary is greater than uh, suppose 30000 okay 30000 then what query will i write i will you know i this i have already written where department id in 10 and 20 and what and uh, salary is greater than what it is greater than 30000 if I write this query, then I will get this these employees. Suppose uh, if you want, you know, if you want to justify also, then you can write salary over here also. Salary from employees where department ID in 10, comma 20 and salary is greater than what? It is greater than 30,000. So this is very simple in clause using the in clause. Now we will use the between clause. So why do we use between clause? I have written over here. Between clause is used for some kind of range matching. Okay. So what kind of range matching? Let us see. Suppose. Uh, this is my employees table select star from the employees table this is the employees table now i want a list of all employees who get a salary greater than say suppose 40000 and less than 90000 okay i want a list of all these employees whose salary is greater than 40000 and less than 90000 so i would like the query so whenever I say, I, uh, I mean, whenever I write the query, you just pause the video and try to write the query on your own. If you are not able to write, then we will try to solve it on, on, you know, you can just watch the video to solve the query. But here I want the list all the employees whose salary is uh, greater than or uh, equals uh, 40,000 and less than or equal to say suppose uh, 90,000 okay I want this query then what query will I write I will write something like this you know we you you have operated the, you have you have used a greater than or equal to less than equal to operator so I can write something like this select ename comma salary from which table from the employees table where salary is greater than or equal to 
thirty thousand, and salary is less than equal to what? It is less than equal to ninety. Sorry, yeah, uh, less than equal to ninety thousand. Okay. If I write the write this, then I will get the list of all employees whose salary is between thirty thousand and ninety thousand. What is thirty thousand? Okay, I have said forty forty thousand. Okay, so you know, just um, I'll just change this three to four. Okay, now it is correct. So you are getting these list of employees whose salary is between forty thousand to thirty thousand. But now I can write the same query using the between operator also. How I can write like this: select e name comma salary from which table? From the employees table. Where salary between between what? Forty thousand and ninety thousand. Okay. If you write this query, then also you will get the same result. That, so, so you can observe this between operator is you know it is performing a range matching between forty thousand and ninety thousand. Okay, so uh, one thing to always keep in mind uh, when using this between operator is that you know it is inclusive. That means it is searching for salary greater than or equal to forty thousand. You observe that there is an employee web of and whose salary is forty thousand, and that this employee is also getting selected. Why it is getting selected? Because between means uh, you know it is it also perform you know you the you know the matching set endpoints. What are my endpoints over here? Forty thousand and ninety thousand. That is why it is equal to greater than or equal to forty thousand, less than or equal to ninety thousand. Okay, so like this. So always remember this. You know it is inclusive. Between operator is inclusive of the endpoints like forty thousand and ninety thousand over here. If for example some employee is getting ninety thousand, that that employee will also get selected by this query. Okay. So what is my employees table? This is my again my employees table. Okay, now good. Suppose now I ask you to list all employees whose commission is between um, suppose five thousand to uh, sixteen thousand. Okay, whose commission is between five thousand to sixteen thousand. So what query will write? What query will you write? I'll just copy it and. Uh, Uh, okay. List all employees whose uh, suppose I will say commission. Commission is uh, what did I say? Commission is uh, between. Suppose between I say five thousand and uh, sixteen thousand. Okay. So in what variable I write? I think it is very simple. Again, you can use the between operator. How you can use? Select e name. Comma what commission from which table from the employees table where what uh, commission between what what I have said five thousand and sixteen thousand okay and I'll get the list of all employees whose commission is between five thousand and sixteen thousand okay so this query is also in a you can write it through the use of between operator okay so. Uh, Now suppose I want the list of all employees whose commission is between five thousand and sixteen thousand and who work in department number ten. Okay, so what query I want? I'll just copy it and uh, okay, uh, paste it. And who work in department ten? Okay, this is what I want. I will say this is my fifth query. Okay. Okay, this is not the fifth query. This one is the, this one is the fifth query, and then again this one is the sixth query. Okay, now correct. Okay, sorry, yeah, cancel. So can you do it? I think it is very simple. Just give it a try. I'll just pause. Okay, if you are not able to get it, then I have to add one and condition over here also. And what? And department ID equal to what? Equal to. Then okay. Then all I will get only one employee. I can also write this query like this using the between operator and in operator both. You know, I can write where department ID in what it can be in only in what then. Then it is going to perform exact matching for the value then. Okay, is it correct? Yeah. Okay. Again, uh, suppose this is my employees table. Select star from the employees table. This is the employees table. Now. Uh, Suppose, uh, uh, okay, now it is uh, our turn to study the like operator. So, like operator is used for pattern matching. Okay, so 
uh, pattern matching you can you know you can think about you know pattern matching is done through uh, wild card operators so you can think of pattern mat matching in terms of you know some regular expression matching you perform I, if you have worked on some programming languages you must have worked on some regular expressions so it is same like that here you we will study two wild card operators one is the m percentage operator and the other is the underscore operator so m percentage operator is used to match anything you know it can match any string and this underscore is used for matching a single character at a time okay remember this all right see percentage is used for matching any string and underscore is used to match a single character at a time now let us move to uh, this employees table and what are the employees and employee uh, what are the names of the employee in employees table select enum from what from the employees table this is my employees table now i want the list of all employees whose names uh, you know whose names start with n then what query will i write give it a try i'll just pause i think it is very simple if you're not able to get it then i have to get the name uh, from which table from the employees table where e name is like what it is it must start with n and then it can have anything okay that is why i have given the wild card operator in your percentage that means anything okay first it will start with n then it can have any string okay now i want the name of all those employees uh, whose names ends in a okay okay i'll just write the queries so that there are no confusions seventh list all the employees whose name ends in a okay how will you write the query just give it a try okay if you are not able to get it then it is very simple i can write select e name from which table select uh, e name from the employees table where e name sorry where e name like what it will always end in single a character but before that it can contain anything that will that means i will write this query so you will get these employees neha rashmita and anshita are three employees whose name ends in a okay now uh, again these are my select e name from employees this is the this is the list of all employees the names of all employees now i want the names of all those employees whose name contain at least 2a Oh, first of all, let us find the names of all those employees whose name contains at least one A. Okay, at least one A. What query will I write? Okay, uh, list all employees whose name contain at least what one A. It must contain at least one A. Okay, then what query will I write? Give it a try. i'll just pause i think it is simple select uh, if you are not able to get it select e name from which table from the employees table where e name is like like what it is like something like this okay yeah now it is correct how come uh, how come i have written this wild card operator you know well, let us go and test it out against few names for example i you know i just open the pen tool and uh, i'll just take this uh, i'll just take the pen and uh, suppose it has to match sonali then you know for the first percentage it will match s o n and then it will match a and the next percentage it will match what against l i okay if it has to match anchita then the first percentage over here you see this first this first percentage in case of anchita will be replaced by nil then again this a will be matched and the next percentage will be replaced by what n s h i t a okay so similarly it will be true for all the names so this is the you know this is the query which you can use to list all employees whose name contain at least one okay clear now i want to list all employees whose name contain at least two a's how will you write the query first of all just let me par so control z copy it uh, paste it at least not one but two okay at least two is what uh, query will you write i'll just give it a try i can just pause the video 
so always you know it's always good you know that you try to solve queries on your own I, i'm giving some queries you first try on the, them on their own on the on your own and then if you're not able to get then eventually i will solve it okay so if you are not able to do it you just pause the video and then you try to do it on your own okay if you are not able to do it then it is very simple what i just need to select the name from which table from the employees table where e name like what it has to be like something like this okay uh a a and then again a percentage is it correct okay all right e name okay now it is correct all right these are the names of all the employees whose name contain at least two ways okay then again you can you i mean you can see for example suppose i again use a pen tool and uh, i think it is easy to do, easy to understand but still you know if you are not able to get it then for example if you want to match anchita then you know this first percentage will be replaced by null then this a will be matched against the first a of anchita then n s h i t will be replaced by this percentage and then again this a will match against this a okay this a and then you know this percentage that is remaining will be matched by what it will be matched by null similarly if you want you can match jayant also the first percentage will be replaced by j then a will match and then the second percentage will be replaced by y and then again a will match and the third percentage will be, will be replaced by what n t so okay it is getting matched okay so this will give you a list of all employees whose name contain at least two ways okay correct fine uh again i would give you a query just try it on your own uh list all employees uh, uh whose name is at least uh say suppose uh, mm, five characters long 10 uh list all employees whose uh name is exact exactly five characters long okay exactly five characters long give it a try okay a hint for you you have to use this uh, this wild card okay we have used this percentage now you have to use this underscore and it is used for matching a single character a hint for you try it pause the video okay if you are not able to get it then select e name from this table from the employees table where e name like like what sorry e name like what e name will be something like this 1 2 3 4 5 it will have 5 underscore okay the only name that is being selected is nothing you know this means one underscore will replace it can be a substitute for one single character and that character can be anything okay that is why when i write five underscores you know in one sequence then you know it will give me a list of all employees whose name is five characters long okay uh, again uh, one more query for you uh, okay i have uh, okay 10 sorry okay i'll just move these dots i mean you'll get the you know you are intelligent enough to you know get it what i want to what exactly is the query which i want to ask now suppose uh, my 11 query is that just try on your own uh list all employees whose name uh uh whose uh, second character in name in name is i okay so it can be any name but the second character has to be what it has to be i okay all the employees in whose name the second character is i okay try to try it okay try on your own i'll i'll, I'll wait okay If you're not able to get it, then this is also very simple. I think you can do it with all the tools which I, you know, I provided you from this table, from the employees table, where e name like what? It has to be something like this. See, the first character can be anything that I can replace it with underscore. The second character has to be what? It has to be i. Sorry, it has to be i. And after that, it anything can come. So I can write something like this, and then you know, if I do something like this, and Nikhil and Nitin are two employees whose second character in their name is. i okay 
so this is the you know this is the use of like operator so like operator is what i have said it is used for pattern matching okay if you go over here i have given you know like operator is used for pattern matching see i have performed some kind of pattern matching in these of names okay all right now uh, oh, all right this is my employees table uh, again one more query will write and then i will just know i'll end the video select star from employees this is my employees table and uh, suppose uh, i want you to find uh, all the managers and developers uh, whose uh, name can either start with uh, you know n or s okay okay i like the query okay uh 12 list all list all managers sorry managers or developers whose name can either start with n or s what will be the query which i will write okay just give it a try okay if you are not able to get it then i think i will write it select e name okay and designation okay so i am performing operation on name and then on designation from i think the first part is simple you know you want the you know all the employees who are either managers or kya uh i will write and over here okay. list all managers or developer okay Uh, whose name can either start with n or s okay so the first part is simple you know listing all managers or developers S select e name comma designation from employees where designation in what it can be it can be either a manager or it can be what it can either be a developer and what the name has to be either it has to start with n or it has to start with what it has to start with s so i can write the and e name e name like uh, say suppose uh, n percentage okay if i write this uh, then what you will get these two employees are managers but i am getting no developer so i can write something like this uh and uh or e name like i don't know if it will work or not let us try it out okay okay s percentage and uh, i'll just you know just also close it so you are having these two conditions e name can be like you know uh, n or s starting with n or s and your know, designation can be what it can be either a manager or either it can be what it can be a developer Okay, so then you are getting these three employees. You know, Nikhil, Nitin, and Sonali. They are managers or developers, and their name are either starting with N or they are starting with S. Okay, so <coughs> you have to group these two conditions. You know, <coughs> you have to group these two conditions using the and. You know, because they can be either manager or developer. And what? And so you can you know when I state the query, then you can you know understand. You have you have to use or or and over here. and what you can use e name like n percentage or e name like yeah what s percentage in this video we will try to understand what does null mean so many times you know some you know at in your tables in your relational database many times the values are null so what does null means so if you go to the first line what i have written is that value of null at any cell means an undetermined value and arithmetic operation on any null value also returns in null value so what does all this mean let us try to understand this with the help of examples so i will go to the database uh, for example uh, okay so i'll use the publisher database and if i say sorry select the database then you know it is a published database and then uh, there is my employees table see this is my employees table now you find that uh, the commission for some employees is null for example for anshita the commission is null 
for Basim, the commission is what? The commission is null. So uh, what does this null value mean? The null value means over here is that this value is undetermined. Okay, this value is undetermined. The, or it means that the organization has not yet decided what commission will it give to Vaseem or what commission it, if it will give to Anshita. So the, commission, the organization is not clear with it. So that is why it, the value has been set to what? The value has been set to null. Okay. So, uh, so this is what we saw. So the value of null at any cell means an undetermined value. Okay. And null values in table is not the same as zero. See over here, for example, the commission for Rajneesh is zero. That means it is a determined value. How come a determined value? Because the organization has decided to give no commission to Rajneesh. That is why his commission is zero. But for Vaseem, the organization is not yet sure. What commission will it give to this employee? This Vaseem employee. See, his commission is was. His commission is coming out to be null. Vaseem commission is null. So the value of null means a undetermined value. Now, uh, let us try to do something. For example, I'll, you know, I'll take, uh, I'll just, you know, I'll remove this. Uh, query to find the effective salary of all employees. You have to write this query. And what is the effective salary? The effective salary is equal to salary plus commission. Okay. Effective salary is equal to salary plus commission. So I can write something like this. Select ename, comma, salary, comma, what? Commission, from which table? From the employees table. So you'll get, you know, the ename, salary, and commission for him, for all employees. Now, if I want the effective salary also, then what will I do? I will write uh, salary plus what? Commission. Suppose I say as effective salary, from what, from which table? From the employees table. Now, uh, for example, the salary of Nikhil was 1,20,000 and his commission was 30,000. So the effective salary is coming out to be what? 1,50,000. Similarly, in the case of Nitin, the salary was 80,000 and the commission was 15,000. So effective salary was 95,000 per month. But now you observe a very important difference and I'll take the pen tool to make you understand with this. For example, you take Anshita. Anshita's salary was what? Anshita's salary was 60,000, but her commission was what? Null. So her effective salary is also coming out to be null. Why the effective salary of Anshita is also coming out to be null? It is because of this reason. See, if you just see the third line, you know, you here you see the, uh, okay. The second line, arithmetic operation on any null values also result in what? It also results in a null value. So why it results in the null value? For example, you say, um, suppose you say infinity. So if you add a number, suppose you add 10 to infinity, the result will also, will, will always be what? It will always be infinity. If you subtract 10 from infinity, the result will be what? Result will be infinity. This is the basics of mathematics. So here, you know, suppose, you know, the salary of uh, Anshita is determined. This is, it is 60,000, but the commission is undetermined. And if you add an undetermined value to a determined value, the result will also be what? The result will always be what? Undetermined. That is why arithmetic operation on any null value results in a null value. Okay. So here, I think I have written this. Arithmetic operation on any null value also results in a null value. Why it results in a null value? Because null means an undetermined value. And you add anything, subtract anything, divide, multiply anything from an undetermined value, the result will be what? It will always be undetermined. So arithmetic operations on any null value also results in what? A null value. Okay. So I think this much is clear. Now, um, I want you to find uh, the name of all the employees whose commission is null. Okay. So what query will you write? Uh, okay. I will say uh, query, sorry, query to find the names, sorry, the names of all the employees whose commission is Null. Okay, I want to find the name of all employees whose commission is null. So what query will I write? Uh, select, uh, suppose name, select e name from which table? From the employees table. Where what will I say? 
where commission is equal to what is equal to null will it work it will not work see now so here right you can you know i'll just write it i'll write it control z we can never equate uh, null values okay null values can never be equated see here you are saying that the commission is equal to null you cannot equate an undetermined value this is never allowed allowed in sql see you can say something like this where commission is equal to what equal to say suppose um, 30000 you can say something like this and nikhil's commission is what 30000 but you cannot equate a undetermined value for a null a null is a undetermined value you cannot equate a undetermined value so for this we use the is clause so whenever you want to perform matching with nulls you use what you use is so how do you use this something like this where not commission is null we will not write commission is equal to null instead we will write what where commission is a null okay clear so here you know you are getting anchita webha and vasim three employees are there whose commission is what whose commission is none suppose uh, uh, i copy it and you know again you know a very simple query is uh, suppose i say commission is not null then what query will you write so you will write something like this where commission is not what where commission is not null so you will get all these employees for example if you select the commission of these employees you will get a commission okay so all these employees the commission is not null c and rajneesh is also getting selected rajneesh is having a commission of zero but this is not equal to null and this is you know a common confusion null values in a table are not the same as zero okay so rajneesh commission is zero means the organization has decided that it will give only zero commission to which employee to the employee whose name is rajneesh okay so this is my employees table you can see the employees table okay so this is the way you know you work with null values for example i give you a query write a query to find the how many employees in your organization uh, suppose how many employees in department number uh, 30 have null commission okay you have to write this query write a query uh, okay I'll, uh, I'll say I'll formally state the query uh, okay I'll remove it uh, query to find the count of all employees in DPT department ID 30 who's uh, what commission is uh, say suppose none so you have to write a query for this okay try out on your own okay i want the count of all employees in department number 30 whose commission is none write this query on your own i'll pause the video okay if you're not able to get it then i think it is very simple i just want the count so i will use the select count star from which table from the employees table where what commission is null and dpt department id equal to what it is equal to 30 so you are getting two employees in department number 30 whose commission is null and see these two employees are what one employee is you know this vaseem his commission is null and the other employee is what other employee is webhub he belongs to department number 30 and his commission is also what his commission is also null so this way you know you work with null values this uh, video we will study the order by keyword so what does it means by order by so order by is you know it is basically meant for sorting of rows and you know, i have given you the you know the general form in which you can use order by in your query so let us uh, try to understand it with some practical examples okay so here uh, this is my employees table which we generally use uh, employees table this is employees table sorry select uh, star from the employees this is my employees table now uh, i want uh, suppose the name and uh, salary of all employees and what query will i write uh, select e name comma salary from which table from the employees table so i have got uh, the name and salary of every employer 
But now suppose I write something like this. I select the name, select the e name, and I also select the salary from the employees table, and I write order by also. Order by what? Order by suppose salary. Then what will happen? Uh, so you observe that now the salaries are being ordered. For example, Lashmita was having the lowest salary. You know then you know it is coming first and then giant was having the next highest the second lowest salary then it is coming like this okay so the rows are you know they are sorted on the basis of salary okay if you observe the rows are sorted on the basis of salary so this is the way in which we use you know order by clause uh, we can also do something like this uh, suppose i say order so what is the you know uh, what is the default ordering of salaries in mysql if you observe the default ordering is, you know, ascending order, you know, they have, it has arranged it in ascending order. Okay. If I want it in descending order, then I will use a DSC keyword. Okay. So suppose if I say like this, then you will have the salary order by salary descending order means from highest to the lowest. So Nikhil is getting the highest salary, 120,000. So it is coming first followed by Nitin and then, you know, Abhinav and all, you know, then in the end you have Rashmita because she is getting the lowest salary. Okay. So this is the way you use order by, you know, okay in your sql queries okay again uh, i'll go to my employees table select star from the employees table okay and you can also you know uh, apply order by on multiple columns how you can apply order by on multiple columns let us have a look suppose uh, i say something like this uh, select e name i want the name i want the salary also and i want the department id also from employees then you will get a list of all the names salary and department ID for example Nitin is getting a salary of 80,000 and he's in department number 10 but if I say something like this order uh, by department ID comma salary okay then what you will you get if you just observe uh, see okay I'll just you know I'll just change uh, I'll not write uh, salary first I'll write department ID first uh, that is you know it doesn't it's not any kind of error you know uh, you know uh, it will help you to better visualize the result okay i'll write sadly again uh, basically these both queries are same okay now uh, suppose you so what it is doing when i am when i am using order by on multiple columns then it is you know first of all it is sorting by the first column so the results are sorted by the first column. So if you sort by, the, you know, so department IDs are, you know, 10, 20 and 30. So 10 will come first, 20 will come second. And then, you know, in the end, what will come? 30 will come. And now inside department number 10, the salaries are will be sorted. For example, Nitin is having salary of 80,000 and then Nikhil will have a salary of 1,20,000. For example, now if you go to department number 20, then all the employees in department number 20 will be sorted on the basis of their salary. For example, Rashmita is giving, getting the lowest salary. Okay. If you are not able to, you know, get it, then, you know, you can better visualize this, you know, with this, uh, I'll just open the pen tool. Uh, okay. Pen. So, uh, if you observe, then, uh, you know, first of all, it is having this, you know, when I say order by department ID, you know, then, you know, you form these, you know, department ID, there was department ID 20 and then, you know, there was department ID 30. All right. These three department IDs were there. Now it, it has first sorted on the basis of what it has first sorted on the basis of these department IDs. Now in this dip, for example, now in this department ID 20, it is going to sort on the basis of salary from the highest to the lowest okay so i think it is clear okay now uh, suppose i say something like this um, i just have uh, the same previous query i just make some modifications uh, so i write order by dpt id dsc and then i write salary then what will be the result can you guess what will be the result see what is the result so you have ordered you know from department id you have ordered in a descending way so first of all it is going to order by in in what by which order by the department id in descending order so first of all department 30 will come then department 20 will come and then department 10 will come and then in department 30 you know salary will be in ascending order for example if you see department number 20 salary is always in which order it is in ascending order okay but now if i write something like this salary 
and I also write DSC after salary also then you know I think results are obvious you know now if you go to department number 20 then the employee that is having this highest salary is coming first because you know salary is also ordered in a descending fashion okay so this is the use of uh, this uh, order by clause in MySQL so and you you can also use order by clause in conjunction with the where clause for example i want uh, the you know ordering of salary in department number 20 okay how suppose i want uh, salary from highest to lowest in department number 20 okay i'll just you know i'll just write the queries uh, list list all employees in department 20 uh, arranged in uh, descending order of their salary okay this is the first query so just write this query okay I think it is very simple uh, you just have to use order by clause in conjunction with the whereby okay so what query will you write give it a try I'll just pause if you're not able to get it then I have to write just something like this what I want ename comma salary comma dpt id from from which table uh, from employees table where department id equal to what 20 order by what salary order by salary okay so this is the you know so you are now getting okay sorry i want it in arrange in descending order so if i want in descending order then i have used to use the descending keyword also okay dsc okay so a ascending order is you know by default they are arranged in ascending order so for ascending you have to use you know asc for ascending order but you don't have to you know every time use it see now the salaries are arranged in ascending order so say the lowest salary was coming first and the highest salary is coming in the last okay so you don't have to you know by default it is all automatically taken so you don't have to put asc but still if you want you know you want to you know still better describe your query then you can use explicitly use asc also okay like this uh i think this much is clear i would just like to you know i would just like to uh make to make things clear how will you process this query this is my employees table and then this is my uh, this is the query which you know i wanted you to uh, I wanted you to work on okay now uh, first of all uh, I you know first of all how this query will execute you know this query looks out to be very simple but I will just take one you know few seconds you know to explain how this query will execute so I'll just you know I'll just take the pen tool okay so <coughs> always remember my dear friends then select clause is used for uh, select clause will go from row by row and where clause will you will then filter those records for example select clause will move from every row and then where clause will filter those records so what is my where clause department id is equal to 20 is department id 20 in this row no and <coughs> is it 20 in this row no over here it is 20 it will be selected over here it is it is 20 and then it will be selected and what will be selected name salary and department id okay and then uh, this is not uh, this is not true and then this is true this is not true again this and this are true so <coughs> in these four row first of now these you have got all these four rows so first the where clause will execute first which clause will execute this where clause will be executed and now if you have got these results they will be sorted they will be sorted on the basis of the salary in a descending fashion okay like this so this is the way you know you know you, you can better understand you can better have a feel of this query first where clause is executing it is you know fetching the results and then the results are being sorted in descending fashion okay like this so it is executing in this fashion so you know you if you remember like this you i mean this looks out to be very simple but once when you go to formulate you know complex queries then if you have a feel of uh, all these things then you cannot uh, you can have better intuition in solving complex queries okay thank you and uh, so this is the way we work with you know with the order by clause and there is one more clause that is a limit uh, one more limit keyword is there so limit keyword is used for limiting of records how does it limit records select uh, suppose i say select ename com suppose i say eid eid comma ename comma salary sorry salary from the employees table 
so you have got the id the name and the salary but uh, suppose i say something like this uh, select uh, ename comma oh sorry first the id then the name then the salary from employees limit uh, suppose i three three okay suppose i say limit three then what does it mean so it will fetch me the first three records okay it will fetch me the first three records okay so all the it is getting all the records and then you know it is limiting the number of records which have to be you know finally given to three okay then if i write something like this limit uh, uh, if i write so i am also not sure let us see how it runs if i write uh, uh, limit one comma three if i write something like this what will be the result yeah you are i mean it is better you know you can understand it how you can understand it you know uh, so you can you know index every position how you can index every position look like this okay suppose here again i suppose uh, again if i you know i take this pen tool to better explain it uh pen tool okay so uh you know you can think i am thinking in these terms at least suppose the, you know it is having every column you know index this column has index 0 uh, and then you can have this this column has index 2 now if i write limit 1 comma 3 what i am writing limit 1 comma 3 so it is going to this one first row okay and then from the first row it is pulling out which all rows how many rows three rows so we are getting nitin sonali and anshita okay suppose uh, i write uh, i don't write limit 1 comma 3 I write something like this. Suppose I just minimize it. <coughs> oh, sorry. Suppose I, uh, I, you know, I. Okay, I'll just, you know, I'll just. Now suppose uh, I write this query. Uh, limit say suppose not one comma three. I say mm -hmm. uh, limit zero comma suppose four. Okay. So it is, it is, you know, this is, this row has an index zero, first row has an index zero and from the, this position it is getting how many rows, it is getting four rows. So Nikhil, Nitin, Sonali and Anshita are being selected, okay. So this is the way you, uh, you know, you work with limit clause. Now uh, limit clause, you know, with in use, uh, when in conjunction with order by keyword, then you know, it is, it, uh, it is, very, it, it can be very interesting, you know, you can have some queries through, uh, some good queries you can formulate through with the help of order by and limit. For example, suppose I say something like this. And then uh, I say uh, uh, select the name of the employee getting the highest salary. Select the name. Select the name of the suppose uh, employee who gets the highest salary. Okay, if I want the name of the employee who gets the highest salary, then how will you how will you uh, write this query suppose i say then i can write something like this select ename comma salary from which table from the employees table then you will get uh, all the names and salary now if i say order by salary sorry order by salary okay then you will give get the results you know ordered by what ordered by the salary but i want the highest salary then i will use you know i will use first dsc clause over here then you the salaries will be arranged in descending fashion so nikhil is getting you know i have got this nikhil is getting in the highest salary but now my query is saying i want just want the name of the employee who gets the highest salaries then what will i write i will just write like this limit what limit one if i say something like this then you know out of this you know when when you say it, when you say it limit one then it what it means that out of the whole records out of the all records which is getting which it is getting over here it is just you know you have because you have set limit one so what it is doing it is just selecting this record which record this this record if you go over here this first record it is select only this record has been selected nickel one okay now uh, so I, now I will keep give you one or two queries for you to solve. I'll just escape it. Okay, now. Mm, suppose. Uh, uh, list the first three employees 
who get the lowest salary okay uh, suppose uh, list I, I won't say first I would list the three list three employees who get the lowest salary okay so I want all the employees so that I want three I want employees who are getting the I want the employee who get the lowest salary the second lowest salary and the third lowest salary so uh, what will I write what query will I write if I just go to my SQL console what should I write just try it okay I'll just pause the video okay. so I think it is I think this can also be done select ename comma salary from employees order by what order by salary if I write something like this then you are getting the salary in ascending fashion okay Rashmita is having the lowest salary then after this you are getting Jayat and then after that you are getting, getting what you are getting Webhub now I want all these Rashmita, Jayant and Webhub then what will I write I will write uh, um, sorry limit 3 okay okay then you will get these three salaries the lowest salary in the you know organization the second lowest salary in the organization and the third lowest salary in the organization so if you want to better you know if you want to better have an understanding of this query then first of all what is happening first of all this order by is executing and then in the order by what the results the sorted results that you have got then on that the limit operator is being applied okay for example now suppose uh, a good query if I, I give you just try to work on this query uh, find the employee getting the highest salary in department 20 i want the employee in department number 20 okay i want only the employee in department number 20 who gets the highest salary what query will i write just try it i'll pause okay so please uh, when i say i pause and just try it so please uh, you or first try out on your own May, many times you may not be able to do it but still if you just try keep on trying you know you will get you know a better intuition uh, when you will be able to solve complex queries you know uh, life is also like that you have to learn by you know you have to learn from the go you know when there are some challenges then you you know you try to work on them you try and then you many times you fail also but failing also you know you, you're failing but still you are learning new ways to success okay so this way things work so if you just keep on trying so ultimately success will come so here uh, what is my query my query is to find the employee getting the highest salary in department number 20 so I will first of all write uh, select ename comma salary comma dpt uh, department id from which table from the employees table this is my employees table now i only want results for which department for department number 20 so i will use that where clause where department id equal to what where department id equal to 20 i will get only employees of department number what department number 20 but are these results sorted they are not sorted then i will apply what i will apply the order by clause so what will i say order by what order by salary i'll get this but now I have got the lowest salary first. I want the highest salaries. And what will I what will I say? See, I want I want the highest salary. Then what will I say? Order by salary DSC. Okay, then first of all I will get Abhinav that is getting the highest salary. But now I only want Abhinav. Then what query will I write? I will write something like this. Sorry. Limit one. It is going to fetch only the first row and so Abhinav is the employee in department number 20 that is getting the highest salary and his salary is 70,000 okay and uh, uh, so first of all also this may look out to be very simple but still I would like to you know explain this query how this query is executing sequentially first of all first of all select clause and the where clause are running in conjunction okay so how select clause and where clause are running in conjunction look i'll just i'll just explain it i'll use a pen tool and uh, okay so if you go over here okay i'll just you know pull it uh, sorry it's not coming down okay skip i'll just uh, pull it down I just hope again I'll you know I'll use a pen tool 
there must be some shortcut for this I think I, I don't have to every time uh, tool pen okay I think uh, all right now um, first of all uh, select statement and the where clause will run is this row in department number 20 no is this row in department number 20 no this is in department number 20 this is in department number 20 and then you know you know this row uh, this sorry uh, okay this row is in department number 20 and these are rows in department number 20 so first of all select and where are executing now these rows are getting sorted by the ordered clause order by clause so when they are sorted by the order by clause and then you know the result that has been obtained by the order by clause then limit is being applied on them so first where is running then order by is running and then what is running limit okay remember this always remember this i'll just escape it for example if i am saying something over here uh, you know i just applied the order by I didn't apply the limit so here you see where 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 clause has been written and the order by has been written so these after where order by is running and then what and then after that what you are writing then after that you are writing limit one so you are getting the lowest early okay so this is very simple now uh, I'll give you one more query and after that we'll end the video uh, find the employee getting the second lowest Sally in department 20 I want the employee getting the second lowest salary in what? In department number 20. See, I don't want the lowest salary. I want the second lowest. Okay. That means one level above the lowest salary. Okay. How will you write this query? I'll just pause the video. Try on your own. I have given you all the tools so you can write this query. Uh, please try it on your own. Okay. Let us try. Let us uh, see how I do, how I approach this query. So this part is common, you know. I think... Uh, where department ID 20 so you will get all the employees from department number 20 and then I will order by them on basis of what order by what order by salary but now I want the lowest salary because you know order by is defined default in the ascending order I want the lowest salary so I will not use the DAC over here okay then I want the second lowest salary so I don't want you know in this case I don't want uh, Rashmita, I want Sonali okay because she is getting the low second lowest salary so how will I write this query I can write, uh, let us see, I can write 1 comma 1. Will it be correct? Yes, it is correct. Why it is correct? This is correct because this row has the index what? This row, this row has an index. I told you, this row will have the index 1. And from this row, how many rows will be selected? Only one row will be selected. So you will get what? You will get Sonali. Okay, so Sonali is getting the second lowest salary in uh, department number 20 and if you want to have the second highest salary in department number 20 what is which is the employee getting the second highest salary in department number 20 she is Neha so I think you have just have to make this one change in this query to get the second highest salary case statements are, you know, are very important when you design SQL queries if you want to design complex SQL queries and you have to understand how you how no, you know you can properly work with case statements so understanding case statements is you know the backbone of you know writing effective sql queries so this is you know the basic format of writing any case statements so uh, when you so case is almost like you know uh, it is like the you know the it, it can be said about you know like you have done casing in c++ programming also or in c you have done it so you match it against a certain value and then uh, you know you uh, perform the actions accordingly for example in this uh, slide what we have written if you just observe this case expression will be matched against case expression 1 and then it will be matched against case expression 2 if it is if it matches against case expression 1 then these commands you know this command will be executed if it matches against case expression 2 then this uh, command will be executed else you know you can also you know give a default route if nothing matches then you know uh, you can write else and you know this this thing is gonna execute and then when you uh, you know when you terminate a case then you write end okay so this way you write case statements in mysql so if you don't understand it then let us try to uh, understand it with the help of examples so what i will do i will just go to my mysql uh, prompt and uh, i think you know i have just opened one window okay yeah okay and uh, 
I will use the publisher database. This is my publisher database. And uh, so case statements you generally use when uh, you know there are some conditions which are involved. For example, I want to find out whether a number is even or odd. So select, uh, suppose I set a number and uh, suppose I set the number to be 10. Okay. Suppose the number is 10. Now I want out, so I have set it to certain value. Now I want it, want to find out whether the number is even or odd. So what uh, effectively, what, what query can I write? Okay. So I'll just open the notepad and you know, I'll, you know, formally I'll state the query. The query is, uh, uh, write a query to find whether a number is even or odd okay so we have to do this so we have to write a query to find whether a number is even or odd so writing a query for this so there are two you know uh, there are two conditions involved you know if it is even or if it is odd so what can i write i can write something like this i can write uh, suppose I can write select first of all I will write select and then what I will write suppose case and then the number what is the number it is denoted by at the rate number so you have to you can declare the variables in MySQL like this you know set number equal to 10 so that is setting this uh, variable that is you know to number variable to 10 okay then I will you know I will perform the modulo operation modulus operation by 2 okay so uh, when it is 0 then you know the number is what the number is okay uh, even and uh, when it is one then you know then the number is what it is odd okay and then I will you know uh, and so always you have to end the case you know similarly you see if I have ended this case using this end okay and uh, suppose uh, I can give an alias name to this column also I will right now I'll not give any alias name to this column so you know you can get uh, what is happening behind the scenes uh, and then you know I'll just uh, I'll just copy it and it's very simple you know I'll just paste it let us see what is the output okay so you get that number is what number is uh, number is uh, even because 10 is even suppose I set the number to piece uh, suppose I say set at the rate uh, number equal to say suppose 11 I set the number to be 11 now again I'll copy now what I will do is that because you know so this big name is you know this column name is getting this much big so I will align this column so how will I align this column using you know as I will guess I, I will give a last name suppose even or uh, suppose uh, even or odd okay okay I write like this and then suppose now I you know I copy it and then suppose now over here I just paste it oh so I think it's not get copied I'll copy it and then again I'll paste it all right I'll run it so now you get the value is even or odd to be odd because you know 11 was a odd number okay so I've given you know some allies name to the column also suppose E C double O D this uh, you know you can take it to be anything you can do it uh, you know whatever you like you can name this column i have named it to e double e c double o d okay so this much is clear now i have this employees table i write the query select star from the employees this is my employees table and uh, uh, now uh, now the organization has uh, decided something uh, for the benefit of the employees suppose say, I'll, I'll you know i'll just remove this query from here and then i will formally state the second query uh, write a query to uh, conditionally increment the salary of employees okay and what is the condition if the if the employee is a manager then the <coughs> salary is uh, incremented by say suppose uh, by 2000 okay and then i'll copy it uh, uh, if uh, the employee is say suppose uh, if the employee is a developer okay if the employee is a developer if he's a developer then salary is incremented by say suppose 1000 else uh, I will write uh, salary will remain the same okay so here also you can observe these condition if the if some employee is a manager then his salary has to be incremented by 2000 
If the employee is a developer, then his salary has to be incremented by what? It has to be incremented by 1000. And if it is not a manager or a developer, then the salary will remain the same. So what, uh, you know, how will you write this query using case statements? Go for it. I'll just pause the video. We just uh, try out. How will you write this query? Okay, if you're not able to get it, then uh, let me write it. Uh, how will I write it? I'll write it in the notepad. Okay. Suppose I say select ename, uh, select the ename comma salary comma case i will say for the okay i will select designation also from here designation okay designation comma case designation okay and uh, what is the cases for designation when the employee is a manager when the designation is a manager then what will i select then i will select uh, salary plus 2000 this is what i said and uh, when uh, you know when uh, the employee is a developer then what will i select then i will select uh, salary plus 1000 else you know in every other employee who are not managers or developers the salary is going to you know remain the same and then you know i will just end this case statement and i am going to align this as suppose say net cell okay and from which table i have to select it from the uh, employees table i have to select it okay so i have written this query let us see if it works out or not i just copied it and i'll just paste it and run it okay so now you see this nikhil is a manager see nikhil over here is a manager so nikhil net salary has become 12,000, you know, 1,22,000. Why? Because he's a manager and he's getting an increment by 2,000. Okay. And Nitin's salary, Nitin is also a manager. He, his salary is also getting incremented by what? By 2,000. Okay. Uh, and then you see there is one employee, Sonali, and Sonali is a developer and she's getting 50,000, but her net salary is now 51,000. Why? Because she's a developer. Okay. And for developers, the salary has to be incremented by what? 1,000. So you see, I have not performed any updations over here and let us try to see, uh, I have not, you know, first of all, let be very clear that I have not performed any updations here. For example, when I say, uh, select star from employees table, when I say like this, you see, this Nikhil salary is still 1,20,000, you know, but I have not performed any kind of updations over here. This is just for display purpose. Okay. But now let us try to understand this query. So I will, you know, I will just, uh, take the pen tool and uh, you know i'll try to you know make you understand the query so i will take this tool and this is the pen tool okay i've got it now you have the select statement select statement i already told whenever you work with select statement select statement works from row by row okay so it is going to go from one row to the next row first of all it will go to the first row it will select what it will select the name it has selected the name it has selected the salary it has selected the salary you said designation, it selected the designation. And now what it is saying, case designation. So in the case of Nikhil, what is the designation? It is manager. That is why it is getting matched against manager. And what is being getting selected? It is salary plus 2000. Whose salary? The salary of the current row. That is Nikhil salary. And Nikhil salary was 1 lakh, 20, uh, you know, 1 lakh 20,000. So the new salary of Nikhil is 1 lakh 22,000. Then it will go to the next row. Again, it will select E name that is Nathan. It will select salary. <coughs> Sorry, that is eighty thousand. It will select the designation that is manager, and then it will go for case designation. The current designation for you know it is in the second row. That is mean the current designation it is about Nathan. So the designation of Nathan is again manager. Then again it is going to be matched against this, and it is going to select what? It is going to select the salary plus two thousand. And whose salary? Salary of Nathan. Salary of Nathan is 80,000 and now it is showing it to be 82,000. Okay. Now, for example, it is going over here. Suppose it is going to Anshita and Anshita is an analyst. It is selecting Anshita. It is selecting, suppose what? It is selecting this Anshita. Okay. It is selecting Anshita, 6,000 analyst. And then it is again going to this K statement. Okay. And the, you know, in designation, I have written what? Designation will be now analyst in case of Anshita. So it will not be matched against this against manager it will not be matched against developer it will not be matched what will actually run this else part will actually run when it is going to anshita's rows okay and what is being selected it is just being selected as a salary and what is the salary of anshita it is 60000 so you see in this case 
net sally is getting you know net sally the sally is also 60000 and the net sally is also coming out to be what it is coming out to be 60000 okay so in this way you know it is going to every row and you know performing these case operations okay clear so all right so i have written this query okay now one more interesting query for you uh, i hope uh, you try this query on your own so i'll you know i'll just move it the third query uh prefix every name uh prefix every name in the employees table uh with mr or mrs depending on the gender of the employee okay i want to write this query i want to you know for example um, over here if you just um, i i just uh, you know i just do a select star from employees table for example this is nikhil and the gender is male that is why i have to prefix the name of nikhil by what by mr okay suppose sonali is she is a female so i have to prefix her name by what i have to prefix her name because you know in gender it is what it is what written it is written as f so she is a female so i have to prefix her name with what with, with what i have to prefix her name with mrs okay so you just write this query see this is the query just write the query prefix every name in employees table okay with the uh, okay i'll say mr and mrs okay depending upon what depending upon the gender on the employee okay if she is either a male or female so try try this query okay i'll just wait i'll just pause the video okay if you are not able to get it then i think this is also you know pretty you know uh, i mean i'll use one single row function for this uh, you'll get it so we'll eventually cover this function when you know when we will cover single row functions string single row functions in mysql we will cover it but still let us you know let us do it suppose i have to get the you know suppose i say gender also e name comma gender comma case what i have to write case on what i have to write case on gender okay because through gender i am deciding whether i have to prefix a name by with male or i have to prefix the name by you no know, by mrs okay if he is a if if he is a male then i have to i have to prefix it by mr and if she is a female then i have to prefix it by what by mrs okay case gender when when the gender is what it is male then what i have to write then i will write something like this concat so concat function is a function that is used for what you know concatenation of strings so i will write mr comma name okay and then uh, when it is what it is female then i will uh, again use the concat function and this time i will write what i will write not mr i will write mrs and mrs comma what name okay uh and then i will end you know end because there are only two conditions male and female okay so we are not considering considering the third gender okay mr and mrs and then i will end and then from this table i am you know i am selecting all these records from the employees table okay and uh, okay so you get you know uh, suppose one employee is nikhil then uh, you know okay i'll just you know uh, okay suppose i'll just take the pen tool you know i'll just explain this query before explaining i just let me you know do some modifications i forgot you know to you know analyze this column so i'll you know analyze the column also i'll, I'll copy it uh sorry 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 um, i'll just uh, i'm going to copy it so it's not getting i'm just going to copy it then i'm i'll go to the notepad uh, i'll just paste it over here and i'll remove this okay this i'm going to remove again from here this and uh, from here this okay uh all right so it is properly indented also and here i will give the you know as you know uh, suppose i call this you know this column new name then i can write something like this new name from which table from the employees table okay and now suppose uh, i you know i copy it and then i run this query let us see what is the output okay uh all right for employees you got now for example nikhil is what nikhil is a male that is why it is printing mr nikhil suppose uh, anshita is a female so though it is what the new name is becoming mrs anshita why 
so now again you know you can if you want to understand this query let me explain it once again although i have explained you know but still you know if you get any kind of confusions uh, then i'll explain this query also i'll take the pen tool for example how this query will run so select statement is here you see select statement and when i say select statement select statement will run how select statement will run from row by row okay it will run from row by row okay so first of all it will go to the first row this it will go to nikhil and then it will select what it will select the e name it will select nikhil then it will select gender that is m and then it is selecting performing case against what against gender so gender in this row current row is what it is male so it is getting matched over here and then what i am printing concatenation of mr and e name so the current e name is what it is nikhil if it is going to this anshit suppose sonali's row so sonali here the case gender is what it is female it is getting matched over here and then it is what printing what concat misses plus what e name and what is the e name of the employee this employee it is sonali that is why it is printing out misses sonali okay so in this way this query is working okay clear in this video we will study about uh, string functions in mysql so all the operations that uh, you know we generally perform on all the strings uh, that we will study all right so let us begin with the understanding of what are string functions and before starting string functions let me tell the time only dealing with string row functions okay single row functions so what is single row functions it means that they operate on one row at a time okay so the first string fun function that we will be covering is the length function so how does length function work let us see suppose i write one query and uh, i write this query like this select length of uh, suppose amit then what will be the output you will get the output as follows well. suppose uh, suppose i say uh, length of vishal then you are getting length so this is giving the length of every name for example i say select e name from employees table okay then you are getting the name of every employee but now if i say select e name comma length of what length of Name from which table? From the employees table. Then you will get the length of every employee. So this is the length function. Okay. Then there is one more function that is the upper function. So how does the upper function work? Suppose I say select upper Amit from employees. Then this will give you what? Every name in what? Uh, sorry. Select upper. Uh, select upper. Okay. Select only upper Amit. Then this will give you what? This will give you. Amit. Okay, and if I say select upper of e name from the employees table, okay, select upper from the which table? From the employees table. Okay, then this will give you every name in what? In which case? In the upper case. So you can easily observe that these functions, you know, these functions, this upper function is also a single row function. Why a single row function? Because it is operating on row by row basis. Because it is going to the first row and then you know converting it it into upper case, then going to the second row. Converting it into the upper case. Then there is one function that is a substring function. Suppose I write the sub uh, sorry substring, and I write suppose Nikhil and Nikhil, and I say from the second position extract four characters. All right. Then you are getting I K H I. Okay. From the second position, I have extracted how many characters? Four characters. So this is the substring function. Then there is fun one more function that is the INSTR function. Okay. Then what is the INSTR function doing? It is you know it is finding the index position of a substring within a string. For example, I say Nikhil and I say uh, suppose I. Then what will it give me? It will give me the first index position of occurrence of I. That is. Second position. Then, if I say suppose I N S T R of uh, suppose I say K, uh, okay, then it will give it will give me what? It will give me three, okay, like this. Then this is your I N S T R function, and uh, yeah, there is one more function. Uh, okay, we will see all these. Uh, some more functions we will cover later. Let us try to work with these functions. Okay, so uh, let me you know formally state the first uh, task that is in uh, that you have to do. And you have to do, you have to write this query, okay? And there is one more function. Let me tell. That's most important. That is the concat function, okay? The concatenate concat function. Suppose this is used to concatenate two strings. Suppose I say Nikhil, uh, 
and the second argument I give to be suppose reverse of then it will do what it will do it will concatenate these these two strings so so it is used to merge or combine two strings okay this is the concatenate function or concat function all right now uh, you, you have to do this query okay you have to do this query generate the full name from first name and last name with space between first and last name so this is your test table select star okay uh, I'll you know I'll, I'll write it this is my test two table insert into test two values suppose uh, Amit and the second argument is Shah and uh, suppose uh, uh, Agarwal and the first argument Webhav okay. Web Agarwal let us just take two names select star from which table from test two table now you have to you know you have to uh, generate the full name and full name with space between the first and the last name go for it this is your first task i'll pause the video okay if you are not able to get it then uh, i think uh, it can be done select first comma what last comma what we have already studied the concat function so i will use concat and arguments that i will give first comma what comma last from which table from the test two table so you are getting concatenated name but i uh, first of all let me you know uh realize this column as uh, as say suppose the full name column let me realize it okay so you'll get this now i don't want i want there should be a space between the first name and the last name okay a space between the first name and the last name so what will i do tell me i think you can approach it again i can perform a more you know one more level of nesting of concat suppose the first uh, i give this argument and then i write something like this over here i give a space and then now if i write this then let us see what will be the output now you are getting proper full output why because you know you are having two level of nesting of concat function so the inner concatenate function will you know prefix the last name with a space and then you are concatenating what you are concatenating concatenating the first name with this so you'll get you know space between the first name and the last name by using this so this problem has been solved okay now let us see what is the second problem query to display name in inet cap okay you have to display the name in inet cap so what does name in inet cap mean inet cap name in inet cap means this if the name is say suppose nikhil then i have to write nikhil okay for example i'll write okay uh, for example nikhil uh, becomes what you know the first alphabet has to become caps and the rest alphabets have to be what they have to be in small case okay the first alphabet have to, has to be in what in which case it has to be in uppercase okay try this okay i'll pause the video okay if you're not able to get it then let us try to solve it no uh, so this is the list uh, list of name from the um, uh, sorry employees table this this is uh, these are all the names now i have to take now what i have to do i have to take the first alphabet of every name how will i take the first alphabet of every name select ename comma uh, substring substring of what of ename from first position take how many characters one character from which table from the employees table if you do like this you will get the first character of every name now what i do i convert it into uppercase so upper upper of this string all right now if i write then like this then what will be the output let us see what is output you know now you have taken the first alphabet of every name and converted it, in, it into which case converted it into uppercase okay uh, i will write you know i will uh, i will ins i will analyze this column okay i'll, I'll analyze this column also now you have get it okay i need cap now uh, what you have to do now you have to you know you have to concatenate it with the rest of the string you have to concatenate it with the rest of the string how will you concatenate it with the rest of the string I, i'll take you know i'll take a new paint and i would don't save it suppose the name is what suppose the name is nikhil okay and then you have taken this first uh, you have taken this first 
al first alphabet and convert it into uppercase now this remaining ikhil string is what it is remaining so you have to take this how will you take this this will be done with the help of substring position from which position you have to take the substring from the second position and how many characters i can say the length of the name because you know if the if suppose length of the name is 6 from the second position you will you take six alphabets so you'll get the, the all the remaining string out of it okay so what can i write i can write something like this so okay i'll take this okay here here i have to concatenate concat okay concatenate what concatenate this you know upper with what with a substring and substring of what substring of e name from which position to this from the second position sorry till which position till the length of e name and then i will end this concat function let us see if it is giving the required output yes it is giving me the required output so you have converted a name into inet cap okay so we have solved this problem also again now there is one more problem for you and let us see what is the problem uh display name in form like nikhil shrivastava has to co be converted in in you know n dot shrivastava uh, so let for you know for simplicity purpose let us keep this you know, in small case because otherwise you know unnecessarily we'll have to do some more uh, things and the query will become more complex anyway this is also in a seizable amount of very complex query okay how will you approach this problem let me tell you how can you approach this problem also let me go to paint okay suppose uh, i'll take a new paint document new I don't want to save it. I want suppose the name is Amit Shah. A M I T S H A H. Okay. You index every position. This is the first index position. This is the second, third, fourth. This is the fifth. Space is coming at fifth position. Fifth position. Then Shah is coming at sixth position. Okay, and so on. Okay. Now what I have to do? You have to first extract this string, this A, and you have to convert it into what? uppercase so you will get capital a then you have to concatenate it with what you have to concatenate it with a dot and then you have to concatenate it with what sha this you have to do but remain but remember one thing how will you get this substring how will you get this substring this substring this substring for that for getting substring you'll have to definitely use which function which function the substring function substring of what substring of name and from which position the sixth position to the length of the whatever the name okay but here how you will be getting this six see this six position is equal to five plus one that means for come you have to compute first of all this at which position this five is occurring so you have to compute the index position of this space and then you have to add one to it and then you will get the rest of the name okay this way this logic we are going to apply see if you are not able to get it then let me you know go to the uh, see now I've, i have explained this query now you can write this query on your on your own at least you can try it if you're not able to do it then let us solve it okay uh, select e name e name from which table from the employees table see this is the e name then uh, you know uh, this part i think i've already covered uh, uh, substring of what e name from which position from one one okay and then you know you have to cover, convert it into uppercase so i convert it into which case the uppercase so what will i get as uh, suppose uh, i will analyze this column as s name okay so that you know okay so we okay um uh, sorry huh uh selects the i'll i'll not use this table selects are from test 2 this is my sorry select uh, sorry uh, just one minute select star from test one suppose this is my test one table it is empty and now i say insert into test one uh, values suppose uh, uh, sorry amit shah sorry amit shah and then uh, uh, uh suppose anshita mata okay all right and suppose uh, one more name i will insert suppose uh, kiran term kala okay like this then now if i say select star from which table from the test one table if you do a sorry then you are getting these names now if i write uh, if i write something like this 
uh, from test one and this is not enum this is name similarly here this is not enum this is name okay now if i write this query let us see what is output so you are getting the first you know the first character you know in upper case of every name now i have to concatenate it with what i have to concatenate it with a dot so how will i do it i will do something like this i will write a dot over here and then uh, okay if i close it then you will get something like this okay now you have to do what you have to uh add for in case of amit shah you have to add what you have to add shah in the end for getting shah you have to get the index position of what this space and for that you will have to use the instr function so how will you get it let me explain it for example i'll just you know i'll i'll uh, i'll say substring substring of what substring of uh, name and at what position suppose uh, sorry name comma a uh, space and the third argument which i pass is suppose the length of name okay then what you are getting output see you are getting output shah mota and tangala because you are getting the last name out of it how you have get it how you have got it you are doing the substring function and substring of what substring of name from which position from the from the position where you know uh, okay there is one issue with it you know i will add uh, plus 1 to it why i will add 1 to it because you know this uh, okay now you know there there were spaces you know some some leading spaces were there i have removed these leading spaces why because it was taking substring from the space itself so if you know if you go to this paint you know you were getting uh, this uh, you were getting here you will getting it at this space it was there at this with this fifth position so you have to add one to the fifth position so okay so this is what i have done i have one i have added one to the position of occurrence of space and then the rest of the characters so that can be specified by length of the name okay in any case it will it will be bigger than that okay so you will get this output now i have to do what i have to concatenate both of these so how will i do it okay i will again use what i'll again use the concatenate function sorry the concat function and then i will put one more bracket over here and then i will what i will write suppose s name from this so you are getting the output amit shah anchita mota a dot mota and kiran dot tankala k dot tankala because many times you know it is a requirement that you have to write your names you know in uh, in such format on some on your board in your home and anything like that okay clear now let us move forward and uh, yeah there is one more uh, query this is the query query to find the mid alphabet of a name okay so what do i mean when i want to say the mid alphabet of a name suppose i say the name is nikhil okay or okay yeah nikhil n i k h i l so what will be the middle alphabet see if you find the middle alphabet this is of length 6 so it is not possible so in this case it the middle alphabet will be kh why because this is of even length so if the string is of even length then the middle two characters will be of you know the mid alpha but if the string is say suppose krishna so how what is the length see it is of length 7 so in case of krishna the middle alphabet will be what s okay so now your task is to find the middle alphabet in this employees table for example i will go to the com you know and select e name from which table from the employees table see this is my employees table and now you have to get the middle alphabet for example in case of nikhil the middle alphabet will be k h but in case of nitin it will be what it will be t so i will give you a hint you have to use case in this case why you have a, you have to use case because there are two cases for the even length string and for what and for the odd length string you have to form two cases how will you go for it i'll pause the video okay if you are not able to get it uh, then let me solve it but first of all you should have tried it on your own i am assuming that you have you know tried it on your own what will i write select e name comma what case how will i find this uh, you know this string is even length or odd length i will do i will say length of e name divided by uh, length of e name modulus 2 okay so if the length of the e name modulus 2 is what if it is 0 when it is 0 then it is what it is even length then for even length i have to get a sub sorry substring substring of what e name 
from which position I have to get I have to get it from the length of enum divided by 2 and how many characters two characters and when it is 1 that means the you know it is uh, that means it is odd length so for odd length I have to you know uh, from the middle of the string so middle of the string you will get by length of enum divided by 2 and from that position you have to get how many characters one character okay I just forgot to write uh, n over here so I'll write it okay n and then I'll uh, end as suppose uh, mid l okay from which table from the employees table okay now if I just uh, sorry if I just uh, copy it and then uh, over here if I go and just paste it let us see what is how I just not get copied okay I'll copy it copy it. Uh, all right here if I go and just paste it let us see what is out but you know okay for Nikhil you are getting KH for Nathan you are getting T so are getting the middle alphabet of every so how it is working select statement will always work from row by row and for every row it will test this condition is the length of enum divided by 2 is equal to it is 0 or is it equal to 1 for example in Nikhil it is of length 6 so the modulus will be what it will be 0 so it will go to this first condition and it will take the substring of which enum that is Nikhil in this case and then it will divide it by 2 length of enum will be what 6 divided by 2 what it will be it will be 3 and from the third position it will take how many characters 2 characters for example n i k k is at third position and from this position take how many characters 2 characters okay like this okay similarly in the case of Nathan also it is an odd length string so it will go to this position okay clear like this all right so we have done this also again let us see what are uh, yeah uh, let us have uh, let us try to solve this query also query to pad left spaces and name bit star okay but for that I'll have to you know I'll tell you some more functions there is one function that is a ltrim function a ltrim function is used to you know remove the left side uh, you know leading spaces from a string suppose I say uh, I don't say I say Krishna select tell them Krishna then it will give you what it will give you Krishna if you just select Krishna for example if you don't say you know if you don't uh, uh, then you Krishna is having some spaces over here you can see it is having some spaces but what Ltrim is doing it is removing all the leading spaces from the left side it is removing all the leading spaces from the string and uh, you know you can verify this also for example I say select uh, length of what Ltrim Krishna if I write this then you will got then you will get seven why because Krishna is of seven length and it has you know it has removed the you know left side spaces from Krishna so it is coming out of what it is coming out to be of length seven okay I think it should be clear and there is one function the repeat function r-e-p-e-a-t okay repeat function it is it is used to repeat some strings some specified number of times for example star five if I write this you know it is repeating star how many times it is repeating star five times okay clear now um, there is one table uh, select star from I think the test two table is there okay no, no select star from test one table is there all right this is one test one table I will say uh, delete from test one okay I deleted and then I will insert into test one well, sorry values suppose uh, I will insert some names uh, Krishna uh, suppose the next name is with more spaces suppose the name is Govinda and uh, suppose the next name is Madhava and suppose uh, suppose there is a name and uh, suppose the name is Gopal okay these are the names and then when I say select star from which table from the test one table then what will you get okay you are having spaces but now my task is to do something like this okay I have to this is the task query to pad left spaces in name with what in star so what does this mean this means something like this uh, for example uh, there is name one there is one name Amit and before Amit there are three spaces and then Amit is coming okay so I have to replace all these spaces with what with I have to replace them with star okay clear I have to do this 
So try to do it on your own. Uh, I'll pause the video. How will you go for it? See, I'll give you one hint. Okay, if you are not able to get it, select name, comma. If I write something like this, uh, uh, length of uh, name minus uh, length of suppose l trim of name. If I write from which table from the test one table if i write what you are getting see you are getting the number of spaces see in this case uh, for example if you just observe i uh, just my mouse here krishna is having five spaces govinda is having how many spaces it is having 13 spaces how the length of whole name for example if you go over here the, you know the length of the whole string be what it will be equal to 3 plus 4 that is 7 and so length of name in this case will give you seven and then you subtract what length of l trim name so if you have l trim name then you will you will be left with only what this summit and this will be equal to what four so seven minus four equal to what seven minus four equal to three this is exactly the number of spaces that are present in the name okay clear so i have counted the number of spaces that are present in the name now can you approach this problem i think you can do it with the help of repeat function for example, now if I say, uh, okay, try it on your own. Pause. Okay, not able to get it. Watch me do it. Repeat what? Repeat star. How many times? These many number of times. Okay, these many number of times. From which table? From the test one table. See, for Krishna I am getting five stars. For Govinda I am getting you know thirteen stars. For Madhva I am getting five stars, and for Gopal I am getting fourteen stars. But but now this is only half of the task. The remaining task is to concatenate it with what? It with Krishna, Govinda, Madhva, and Gopal. So what will I do? I will just use the concat function. How will I use the concat function? Concat. Okay. Concat this with what? I have to concat this with l trim of what l trim of name if i write like this then i think i will get the output yes okay yeah and uh, suppose uh, i will con uh, you know i will uh, i will analyze it also suppose i say it is new name okay clear okay so let us uh, now return i think there is one more function that we you can use to you know solve this problem in there is one function replace select a replace and what does the replace function does uh, suppose the name is Amit and I replace a with say suppose B okay then what will it give every occurrence of V a will be removed but replaced by what it will be replaced by V so I can do something over here also select I suppose select name comma replace replace what name and in name replace what a space and replace a space with what a star so this is a you know a cute method of okay from which table from the test one table if you do like this so sorry i think there are some problems select name comma replace replace name okay there are two commas sorry all right now i think it will be correct all right okay so you have got the same output using the replace function also so let us you know move to our last task and that task is uh, you know performing a credit card masking okay you have to perform a credit card masking so what is credit card masking uh, I'll, I'll tell you what is credit card masking and what you have to do i'll take a new file okay i'll just new and uh, i don't want to save it so many times when you you do some kind of transactions suppose your credit card number is two one two six five two one two and seven four one zero so it can be of arbitrarily of any length i'm not you know, i'm not concerned about the length but it it masks how it masks it because you know you only get to see the last four digits you know rest are all masked with with, with what x so here two 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 one two six will be replaced by four x then five two one two will be replaced by four x's and then you will get what seven four one zero you will not get the whole number so i am you know i am having some credit card numbers and i want to mask them how will i mask them using string functions okay uh, i'll just you know uh, i'll just go to here and i'll write uh, uh, sorry delete from which table from the test one table i'll delete everything 
and then I will you know insert into test one oh, sorry. values okay and I'll insert some red uh, you know random numbers okay and I'm not concerned about the length only thing is that the last four character last four digits should be you know should be visible and the rest of all of them should be replaced by what it should be replaced by X let us insert one more row and then we'll end, okay some uh, random values and just you know i'm just adding to it okay suppose these are the credit card numbers so i'm not you know in this case i'm not worried about the length of the credit card numbers for example you know in my i work in india so in india you know credit cards of, of length 16 16 digits but here i'm not worried about the length okay clear now how will i approach this problem can you can you think how will i approach this problem See, I'll give you a hint. I you so formulate a strategy strategy for doing it. For example, see this number. It is of which length? It is four plus four eight. Then it is of length twelve. Okay. So out of twelve, if you subtract four, you will get what? Eight. So you have to replicate x eight how many x how many times? You have to replicate x eight times. And then when you replicate x eight times, then you have to concatenate it with what? Seven four one zero. That means the last four last four uh, digits okay so i've given you a hint you can try the problem on your own i'll pause okay if you're not able to get it then let us try to solve it uh, i'll go to my okay here uh, select a name sorry select name from which table from the test one table you have got it all the names now i will say select a name comma length of uh, name minus four if i write then what will i get okay i'm getting something like this now if i write uh, replicate replicate what S sorry capital x how many times these many number of times length of name minus four then you will get what you will get uh, sorry Oh, relicate. It is not relicate. It is replicate. All right. Oh, it is not replicate. I am sorry. It is repeat. I am sorry. Replicate is in my SQL server. In my SQL, it is repeat. Okay. So you are doing getting something like this. Now, if you want to get the last four alphabets, what will you what will you write? Necessarily, you will use the which function the. Uh, substring function and substring of what substring of name from which position from the length of name minus fourth position okay and uh, till what i can safely say till <coughs> sorry length of name okay if i write to this then what will be the output let us see okay so you are getting the last uh, four digits i think okay uh length I think it'll be plus one. Now I think it should be correct. Yeah, I have got the last four digits. Okay, and now my task is to what? Is to concat concatenate both of them. How will I concatenate both of them? I will use the concat function. Concat and concatenate this with this as mask name. Okay, uh, mask name. All right, now it is correct. Okay, so you have masked every credit card number. Okay, clear. Let us continue our discussion with some more, uh, some of more date functions, and let us, you know, try try to see how we can apply more uh, date functions in uh, some kind of real scenarios. So uh, this is my employees table. Uh, I'll just, you know, I'll just show you my employees table. Select uh, star from the employees table okay this is my employees table now uh, you are getting the high date also okay now uh, let us uh, see some more uh, uh, some more uh, date related functions there is uh, one so you i'll not cover all the functions i'll just cover a few i'll just tell you how to apply them there is a there is a, there is a date related function time set diff, time stamp diff function and that is taking a unit and you know uh, that is subtracting you know finding the difference of two dates based on that unit for example if i say if uh, you know they have written this query for example timestamp diff month and they have given these these three date, these two dates then it is you know finding the difference in months between these two dates okay clear it is something like this see i can write like this 
select uh, times stamp okay and uh, i want to say suppose month okay and i this i just pass uh, suppose uh, 2014 uh, suppose the year is uh, 04 and the day is 13 and i pass the second day suppose uh, 2014 and the month is say suppose 09 and the date is say, suppose 23 okay if i do like this then you okay you are not getting all right timestamp diff month uh, okay i have given 19 okay it is it should be 09 all right let us see so you're getting a difference of five months between these two dates okay clear now if i want to define the difference between these two dates in uh, in terms of day then what will i write i will write day okay so how many days difference is between 163 days <coughs> but if i write year okay then what is the difference in year because uh, you know this they belong to the same year so that is why there is not uh, you know the, the there is no year difference between these two dates so now uh, you have to write a query suppose that the organization has decided to give some increments to the employees so suppose a 10 percent increment uh, to all the employees who have worked for more than one year okay uh, write a query to compute the new salary of all employees which is uh, which is what which is 10 percent of current salary if the if the employee has to work for more than one year okay if the employee has worked for more than one year then he will be getting what then will he be getting an increment of what a 10 percent okay so he'll sadly suppose if uh, suppose if some employee has worked for uh, say suppose more than one year and his salary is say about uh, 20,000 <coughs> then he will be getting a 10% increment that means he will be getting 22,000 as a new salary okay so here is my employees table okay select star from the employees table this is my employees table now you have to find out uh, the uh, and the you know what is uh, what will be the new salary of each employee? So how will you write the query? I'll just pause the video. Okay, let me see. Uh, suppose this is a name, select e name, comma say suppose this is a salary, comma this is the high date. Okay, now if I write times stamp dip, and I give I want the difference in year <coughs> of the high date and what and the current date. Okay. So if I write like this, then what will I get? Okay. Okay, here I did. Okay, I have to write something like this also. From which table? From the employees table. Okay, if I write like this, then you will get a listing. Suppose uh, I will, you know, I will realize this column as uh, suppose year worked. Okay these employees have worked for this these many of years okay so for example uh, you know uh, current you know when you say select uh, you know current date if you are selecting the current date then the current year is 2017 and this you know this employee was nickel was hired in 2015 so he has worked for you know two years okay he has worked for two years and this employee has worked for what it he has worked for three years now I have calculated the how many years every employee has worked and now I have to compute the from on this column I have to compute what I have to compute what will be the new salaries so how will you do it okay so uh, there is function that is the if function so we can use it you know how we can use it I can use something like this uh, if uh, okay let it be like this and is year work and uh, I'll you know I'll go to a new line how I'll write it. I'll just, uh, um, okay, let me do something like this. Uh, let me copy it. Okay. Let me write the whole query on a notepad. Okay. I'll just, uh, I'll just go to the notepad and let me write the whole query over here. Okay. Year work. And then, you know, I'll select this. I'm going to select this. So these are not, you know, very simple queries. And then I've 
I write something like this. If if this value is greater than what? If it is greater than or equal to one, then what I write? Then I write <coughs> salary plus salary into uh, ten percent, so zero point one. Else I write salary. Okay. Suppose as new as new salary from which table? From the employees table. If I write this query. Then uh, what will be the output? Suppose I copy it and then I go to over here and I just paste it. Let us see what is the output. Okay, I'll just minimize it. Suppose now I paste it and if I run it, okay, you are getting some errors at line two. If time, okay, what is the error? Let us uh, go over here. As new cell from employees, it is getting. Okay, let us see what is the error. As new cell select if time stepped it. I think there is a problem of one bracket. You know, I think I'll just add one bracket over here. Okay. Now it will be correct. Okay, if I again copy it and then if I go and just paste it over here, then let us see what is the output. Oh, again, you are getting some errors. N two okay. Uh, all right, I have you know. I have not added the comma over here. All right. Now I think it will work. Okay. Uh, I'll just copy it, and then again I think now it will work. It should work. Okay. Let us paste this way. It's not getting pasted. Let me copy it, and then let me paste it over here. I think now it should work. Yeah, it is working. So now you can see you. Oh, for example, this employee Nikhil has worked for two years. So his new salary is what? Well, one lakh twenty thousand plus what? You know, it is getting one lakh thirty. He is getting one lakh thirty thousand. For example, Nitin, he has also worked for three years, so he is also getting what? He is also getting ten percent increment. So his salary was eighty thousand. Now his salary is what? New salary is eighty eight thousand. But you take this employee, for example, Anshita. She has not worked for year for how many years? For one year minimum period. So her salary has, is remaining to be what? It is remaining to be what? It is remaining to be sixty thousand. Okay, clear? All right. Let us try and explore some more date functions, and then we will practice some more stuff. Okay. Uh, here uh, you are getting uh, there is one function that is a quarter function. Okay. Let us try to work on it. So, what is quarter function? So, quarter function is giving you the quarter of a specific date. Suppose I will write Q U A quarter, and uh, I pass the argument as a current date. Then it is giving me the you know the okay. Q A Q U A R okay, quarter okay. Now if you are right, then you are getting the quarter of the current uh, you know um, the current date. For example, this belongs to the second quarter okay. So January, February, March belong to the first quarter uh, belong to the first quarter and April, May, June belong to the second quarter okay. So now you have this employees table. Select star uh, from employees. This is the employees. This is my employees table. And now I want to find out in which quarter every employee was hired. For example, if I write select e e name from a uh, suppose sorry I'm writing fire date <laughs> uh, hire date from this table from the employees table. If I say like this, now I want to find out in how in which quarter the in every employee was hired. For example, you say. Nikhil was employed. Uh, was hired in you know because he is employed in second month. That is February. He is he is employed in the first quarter. But uh, you know if you if you say Abhinav, then Abhinav is in uh, is employed in April. So that is why he was employed in the second quarter. Okay. So uh, now I want to find out in which quarter every employee was hired. How will you approach this query? Uh, you have to approach this query with the help of case. Okay. How will you do it? Try it. 
Okay, if you are not able to get it, then let let me solve this problem. How will I approach this problem? I will say something like this: select ename, comma what, hire date, comma, uh, comma, case. Okay, suppose I write case over here, case, and uh, when suppose I write uh, quarter, uh, hire date. Okay. when one then i say suppose uh, first quarter okay and then i just uh, okay if i write like this okay if i just uh, copy it control z if i it copy it and then i paste it then i paste it again and then i paste it again so here i will write uh, second here i will write third here i will write fourth and here i will write what four three and again two and here i you know i'll in this case as uh, suppose i say higher quarter from the table from the employee table okay i write something like this so i have uh, let us try to run this query if it is running or not then i'll explain this query okay i'll explain this query also um i'll just you know i'll just go to my mysql prompt i've copied it i think let me copy it and then i'll paste it over here let us see if it is working yeah it is working see nikhil is being hired in the first quarter and nitin is also nitin is being hired in what in which quarter the second quarter but if you go to webup he is being hired in which quarter in the third quarter okay so you are getting uh, you know in which quarter every employee has been hired so how this query is working this is very interesting you know you can see suppose i go to screen drawer and i take the pen tool okay if i take the pen tool then uh, you can observe i think it is very simple to see i think because uh, if you just go to this query suppose you you so select statement will always work in which way in, it it will work from row by row basis oh, okay it will work on row by row it will go to the first row it will select the e name it will select the hired it and then it will work on what it will work on the case statement so it is taking case of what it is taking the case on the quarter of hired it suppose the hired it for nikhil is 2015 to and 05 so his quarter is equal to one. it is equal to 1 so that is why in case of nikhil first quarter is being is getting selected but if you go to nitin then in the nitin the high date will become 2013 so the quarter will become quarter value will come what it will become 2 so in that case of nitin sec, sec, okay second uh, okay okay i have to you know i have to change this query little i have to change this query some you know some cosmetic modifications i have to make make this make to this query i'll escape this uh you know i uh, you i have not properly formatted it let us write something like this you know it is not first quarter it is uh, uh, fourth quarter and then uh, i will write uh, third quarter and i will write you know what second quarter okay now it is uh, you know it is proper it is properly looking query okay copy it and then suppose if i go and paste it yeah you are getting you know proper okay so now you have got an you have got an understanding how this query is working select statement is working row by row and on each row case statement is also operating okay so you are getting the quarter in which in which quarter uh, every employee was hired okay clear all right now uh, again one query using case statement also i'll i'll remove this this is a uh, so what was the previous query uh, find the quarter in which each employee was what hired okay and now suppose you have to write one more query uh find whether the current day is uh, uh week day or week end okay so i have to find whether the current day is week day or weekend so you have to do this query try to do this query how will you do it i'll just pause the video just try this query try, try to do do this query on your for example on my system if i say the current date you know if it is you know 23rd and it is sunday so it should give me weekend it should not give me week day you know but if it if it is was you know something uh, you know suppose 20, not 23rd april it would if it would have been set as 25th april then it would have been given me you know week day okay not a weekend so the current uh, if i so if i say 
select a date you know so it is Sunday in my case how will you approach this query again this also you have to approach by what you'll have to approach this by uh, case statements okay how will you do it see I'll give you a hint uh, select a day name okay select day name uh, card date if I write then I am getting Sunday okay so you have to work on it I have given you a hint try on this basis okay if you are not able to get it then let me solve it how will I do it select select what select day name and the argument what I will give cut it okay and uh, when when this is equal to what when this is Sunday if it is Sunday then what I am going to write then it is a weekend okay uh, I'll just copy it and if it is Saturday also so in most of you know the IT companies which you work it is off on Saturday also so if I write if it is Saturday then also it is a week what it is a weekend and else it is what else it is a uh, week day and then I will end the query as a D of W suppose I say day of week okay D or W means day of week okay it is a short form and then I'll just copy it and I'll paste it over let us see if it is working or not okay it is giving some error when Saturday then weekend okay I have not uh, okay I have not given the case all right I think now it is correct yeah all right I'll copy it and then I'll just go and paste it over here let us see if it is working on it yeah so today is a it's a weekend okay clear all right I'll just ask you to write one more query and then I'll pause this video select start from I'll not cover all the you know all the date functions it is left upon you as an exercise to cover all the date functions okay clear now uh, for example now I want to have uh, uh, suppose all the employees who were hired in the same month in which Jayanth was hired okay I want to have a list of all employees who were employed in the same month in which in which Jayanth was hired so how will I write the query okay I'll just state the query write a you know query to find all the employees were hired in the in the same month in which Jayanth was hired okay how will you write this query try it on your own so uh, okay so if you have to write this query you have to first of all find the month in which giant was hired so how will you approach this you can write something like this we have already covered the extract function what extract month from what card date okay so you're getting four okay so if you want to find the month in which giant was hired how will you write the query so you will say something like this select extract uh, month from high date from which table from the employees table where e name equal to what is equal to giant okay then you are getting the high date of what giant and now if I want to find a list of all employees who were hired in the same day in which Jayant was hired then what will I write then I will write something like this see this is this query is giving me three and now if I write something like this select e name from which table from the employees table where extract Uh, month from high date equal
equal to this if i write like this okay if you run this query what will you get you will get sonali jayant and neha okay so you are getting this you can verify this also sonali is also you know sonali she is getting on hired and if you say about anchita also okay sonali neha and then you have then you talk about neha then she is also getting hired on which month the third month so you are getting this query also okay so we have solved this query also all right write a query to find all the employees who were hired in the same month in which jayant was hired so now you can you know there is one assignment for you here jayant is also getting selected so you manipulate the query in such a way so that jayant doesn't get selected okay manipulate this query in such a way so that jayant doesn't gets selected how will you approach it you just try on your own this is left in as, a, as an assignment for you again uh, let me see select star from the employees table this is my employees table okay uh let me see if there are some more date functions which we can see okay seconds and uh, all right str to date yeah there is one more very important function str to date function i think this is you know this function used for converting some you know some you know some given string into a date format so you have to specify the format in which you have specified the date okay for example here if you just copy it see i'll run it if i copy it you know it is getting selected was 2004 431 okay so it is you know converting into date this string format you are converting into date but you are also providing you know the format in which thing this string was given for example i could say something like this uh i if i were to write like this okay and then if i were to write like this then i have to specify the format like this okay all right suppose uh, you know this year was not given uh, in uh, you know in in four digits it was given in two digits for example i say 1 7 okay this was given in two digits then i have to i think it, i have to specify small y over here okay yeah it is giving okay all right all right okay so you have to do uh, yeah, this is also very important query you know okay like this uh, if you sub, if you say suppose you are not to specify you are you are first specifying the month then you are specifying the day then you are specifying what then you are specifying year if i say you first specify the day then what will you write you first specify the day then you specify the month and then you specify what year so here also you will have to first specify what the day then you have to specify the month for example 04 and then you then you specify what the year so you are getting it 2031st you know 31st april 2017 okay clear this way it is working all right uh, i think now i have covered all i mean i mean all of the you know most of the important functions to in uh, mysql date functions in this video we will study about some null related functions in mysql so what is my database uh, this is the publisher database now again you know this is our own table this is the employees table okay sorry employees this is my employees table and for some employees the commission is null so if i write select e name comma salary comma commission from employees then you will observe that for anshita for example over here for anshita the commission is what the commission for anshita is null and in the previous video we we, we saw something about null related null values so null values means an undetermined values any arithmetic operation on a null value also results in null value and null value are not the same as zero so this we saw in the previous video so uh, now uh, to just revise you know uh, for a revision i want the name of all employees whose commission is null so what query will i write select e name from which table from the employees table where commission is equal to null will it work it will not work because you can never equate null values you have to use the is operator if you want to find some if you want to you know perform some comparison related operations on null values so you have to use is okay so this is a brief revision of null values now uh, in this video we will study about some null relate related functions so first is the if null function okay so i'll just you know i'll remove it and this function is the if 
नल फंक्शन इफ नल फंक्शन इज टेकिंग टू आर्ग्यूमेंट्स ई एक्स पी आर वन एंड ई एक्स पी आर टू एंड वॉट इट इज डूइंग इट इज डूइंग समथिंग लाइक दिस इफ ई एक्स पी आर वन इज नल देन इट रिटर्न ई एक्स पी आर टू एल्स इट रिटर्न ई एक्स पी आर वन ओके so it is taking two argument this function if null function it's a single row function and it it is taking two arguments it is a single row functions that means it executes on each row one by one and it is taking two arguments so the first argument is null then it will result, return the second argument else it will return the first argument so this, this is very simple for example i say select if null uh, suppose i say uh, 3 comma 4 so it will return what it will return 3 why 3 is the first argument see what is the first argument the first argument is 3 what is the second argument the second argument is 4 is the first argument null no it is not null that is why it will return which argument the first argument but now if you said the first argument to be what null then what it will return it will return the second argument and this is effectively what we have what i have written over here you see if the first argument null then it returns the second argument else it returns the first argument okay so this is the if null function and it is a single row function now let us uh, move on to our original problem and i want to compute the effective salary of all employees so what is a query query uh, to find the effective salary of all employees and this is equal to salary plus uh, uh commission okay it is equal to like this so what will i say select e name oh, yeah, i have written this okay so i can so i can you know i think yeah okay select e name comma salary plum comma commission comma what salary plus what commission as suppose i will say effective sal from which table from the employees table So now uh, there is one problem with this. Suppose uh, for Nikhil the salary is one lakh twenty thousand, the commission is thirty thousand. So the effective salary is coming out to be one lakh fifty thousand. But for Anshita, if you observe the salary is sixty thousand, but the commission is what null. So effective salary is coming out to be what? It is again come out coming out to be null. Why null? Because any arithmetic operation on a null value also results in what? A null value. See here, I have added salary to commission. The arithmetic operation plus was applied, and commission for Anshita was null. That is why her effective salary is also coming out to be what? It is coming out to be null. We don't want this to happen. So how can you control this? You can do it by using the if null. If suppose you do something like this. if null commission and uh, i will you know comma zero as effective salary from employees now if you run this query you see for anshita the salary is 60000 and commission is what commission is null but the effective salary is coming out to be what 60000 okay so in this way i use the if null function but if you are not able to understand it then let me try to you know make you understand this okay i'll take the pen tool all right uh i'll uh, first of all uh, uh, for example i'll move to the first row so there is a select statement which statement is used select statement is used select statement will work row by row first of all it will go to the first row for example this nikhil it will go to this employee and it will find the salary the salary is 1 lakh 20000 the commission is 30000 effective salary you know it is add, adding salary plus what for if you go where it is salary it is adding salary plus what if null commission comma zero does the commission for nikhil is zero no what is the commission for nikhil the commission for nikhil is 30000 okay so this is taking two arguments 30000 comma zero is the first argument null no it is not null that is why it will return what the first argument first argument is not null that is why the first argument will be written and you know the effective salary will become what 1 lakh 20000 plus 30000 so that will come out to be 1 lakh 50000 in case of nitin also you know the commission will be replaced by what see this 30000 in case of nitin when it will go to nitin it will be replaced by what 50 15000 comma 0 so the first argument is null no therefore 15000 will be written and effective salary will come out to be what 95000 but once when it will go to anshita anshita salary is what anshita salary is coming out to be here i will write it okay anshita salary is coming out to be 60000 okay and i am writing if null and her commission is what her commission is actually 
null and the second argument is what zero the first argument is null therefore in case of anshita it will return the second argument that is zero so her effective salary will be equal to what 60000 plus zero okay that is again you know it will be equal to 60000 okay so this is what you know this result you are getting similarly in the you know in the case of web of and similarly in the case of what in the case of Wasim. see there for example when you take uh, web of the salary was 40000 commission was null but effective salary is coming out to be 40000 Wasim also the salary is 34000 but commission is null so the effective salary is coming out to be what 34000 but there is one problem and uh, let me you know tell you the problem i am not able to decide what i am not able to decide again i'll just you know i'll uh, again let me you know again take the pen tool because you know it got out to be a little clumsy so here i am with this employee suppose let me first of all say, state the problem this anshita anshita's salary is 60000 her commission is null so her effective salary is also coming out to be what 60000 that is equal to the salary similarly in the case of Vasim also you know the commission is null that is why you know the effective salary is coming out to be 34000 but if you take rajneesh if you take rajneesh her salary his salary is 40000 and his commission is what zero that is why his effective salary is coming out to be 40000 but you know what is the difference between for example i say anshita and rajneesh what is the difference between effective salary of anshita and rajneesh i write it over here for anshita and one employee is anshita and other employee is rajneesh both of their you know for anshita the salary is 60000 effective salary effective salary is also coming out to be 60000 but her commission is what her commission is null and in case of rajneesh if you observe the salary of rajneesh is 40000 and commission is what null uh, commission is zero so her effect his effective salary is also coming out to be what it is also coming out to be 40 see it is also coming out to be 40000 so here the problem is it because you know for both of them the effective salary is coming out to be equal to what it is coming out to be equal to be salary but for anchita you know in this salary only which part is there the salary part is there only for anchita the salary part is there but for rajneesh you know the salary part is also there and which part is there the commission part is also there although rajneesh is getting zero commission but it is actually decided you know for example if you take nikhil Nikhil also, you know, this, you know, his effective, his effective salary is equal to what? It is equal to the, you know, effective salary is comprised of the salary part also and which part? The commission part also. But for example, for Anshita, because the commission is null, the effective salary is only comprised of which component? It is only comprised of the salary component. Okay. So now what my task is that I want to find out the salary component of every employee in the organization. Okay. So let us try to do this. So I'll, you know, I'll briefly, you know, give you an overview of the if, uh, if uh, condition. For example, I say select if, uh, suppose I say two is greater than one. This, if, if this condition will true, it will select uh, a, 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 else it will select what? Suppose BPP. So, you know, this is, you know, working off if, if two is greater than one, then it will select the first argument, else it will select the second argument. So this is, you know, this is the function of uh, if, so let us try to solve this using uh, so now i'll return to the problem and what is my what what is my problem the problem is like this uh, query to compute the uh, salary component of uh, effective salary okay i want to compute the salary component of effective effective salary and this salary component can be equal to what salary plus commission or only what or only salary so this i want to do try to do it on your own i have given you a hint you have to use if over here you can also use case but uh, for sake of simplicity i will just use if over here okay just try to do it how you approach this problem i'll just pause the video okay if you are not able to get it then uh, i'll explain it as effective salary comma what will i say i will say if if the commission 
is what commission is null if the commission is null then you know the effective salary will only be comprised of which part sorry commission os null commission is null effect if the commission is null then the effective salary will com will be comprised of only the salary part but if the commission is not null then the effective salary will be comprised of what salary plus commission so here if you go and i just you know run this query so here you get for example, in the case of Nikhil, the effective salary is comprised of the salary part also and commission part also. But if you observe Anchita, her salary is 60,000 but commission is null. So you know the effective salary is comprised of which part as only the salary part. But for Rajneesh, you know, because the commission is not null, it is equal to zero but it is not null. So now her if salary component is, is what? It is salary plus commission. Because the organization, I, I, you know, I'll realize this column also as sal comp, okay? salary component oh it's not getting okay uh, from employees uh, okay as sal comp i think not will work yeah so it is it is coming out and now you can differentiate between you know wasim and rajneesh see you can now differentiate between wasim and rajneesh how because both of their effective salary is equal to salary but for rajneesh the salary it is you know the effective salary is comprised of both part the salary part and commission part but for Vaseem it is only comprised of which part it is only comprised of the salary part okay so uh, this video we will study about group functions so what are group functions and how do they work all this we will study in this video so in order to understand group functions First of all, you have a look at this line, what I have written over here. Group functions act on multiple rows at a time, like sum, min, max, average, and count. So sum, min, max, average, count, these are all what kind of functions? These are all group functions. And how do they operate? They operate on many, multiple rows at a time, okay? How do they act on multiple rows at a time? Let us have a look. Let us also see what have we, what have we been doing till now. So this is my, this is my database and uh, there is my employees table and then there is my departments table okay see select a database okay so this is my publisher database and inside this there is employees and the departments table now uh, how do group functions work and how do they are different from you know from single row functions so this we have already seen you know for example if i say select upper of uh, e name from which table from say suppose uh, employees table if i write like this then you know this upper function is working on row by row basis why it is called a single row function because it acts on one row at a time see here i am writing suppose this query select upper ename com select ename comma upper ename from employees okay so what it is doing it is doing something like this this i have already told but still for you know for a kind of revision i am telling uh you know First, it is going to this row and then, you know, applying an upper function to which applying an upper function to the name and then, you know, converting it into uppercase. Then it is going to the second row. Then it is going to the third row. So it is how it is acting. These are single row functions and they are acting on one row at a time. OK, they always act on one row at a time. There, can, there were many examples of, you know, single row functions, which we which we saw. For example, there was one function, suppose, uh, you know, the length function suppose length function is also a you know a single row function for example suppose i say like this uh, length of uh, e name from employees so this was also a what this was also a kind of single row function because it you know it it acted on one row at a time but these now functions are different from group functions and how do group functions work they work on multiple rows at a time for example suppose uh, I uh, write when I write select star from employees this is select star from employees how many rows are there in this table there are 10 rows in this table see there are 10 rows in this table okay now I want to have a count of all employees in the table then what will I write I will write select count star from It is giving a count of what? It is giving a count of 10. So there are total 10 employees in my organization. So how count is a group function, you know? How, so count is used for counting, you know? 
count is used for counting so it will count all the uh, you know distinct occurrences of all the rows for example you know how this count is a kind of group function because you see if i you know if, if i take this pen marker so you will observe that you know this count function is working on how many rows at a time it is working on all these rows sorry oh, it's not connected one minute okay this count function it is acting on you know these these many rows at a time and it, it, it is you know it is counting you know having a count of all the these the row occurrences of all these rows okay so this is where you know and this count function is working all right clear now there can there are many more count uh, there are many more group functions so we will take all these group functions one by one okay let us uh, there is one function that is a sum function so suppose i want to have a query to find the sum of sally of the you know of the organization so then what query will i write Ah, uh, sorry, I'm not. Sorry. Yeah. Okay, it's all right. Select sum of sum of what? Sum of salary from which table? From the employees table. Then it will give a sum of the salary of all the employees. See, if you add all these salaries, if you add all these salaries, you will get this five lakh seventy two thousand. Okay. Suppose I want to want want the minimum salary of the organization. Then so what query will I write? Select min salary from which table? From the employees table. Okay. So minimum salary of the employees table is what? It is fifteen thousand. That is being earned by Rashmita. And suppose I want the maximum salary. Then what will I write? I will write max. Okay. Max salary from employees. So this is my max salary. Okay. So in this way, you know these. Uh, suppose now if again you are you know working with suppose min. uh so how it is min how min is working so if i take you know if i take this pen tool again and you know how suppose when i when i am writing this query select uh, suppose uh, when i am writing suppose select min sal from emp min sal from emp then how it is working it is taking all these rows into account see all these rows all these rows are being taken into account and then the minimum salary amongst them is being found okay this is where you know this minimum <coughs> <clears throat> is working now similarly there is maximum it is acting on all these row and finding out what finding out the maximum salary i also have an option to find the average salary how will i find the average salary for that i have to use the group function that is the avg function how will i use it like this for example when i say uh select avg average average of salary from which table from the Okay, <coughs> so you are getting an average of five fifty seven thousand two hundred, okay, and that is validated also, you know, because what were the total number of employees? The total number of employees were ten, and what was the sum of all the salaries? The sum of sal all the salaries was five lakh seventy two thousand. Therefore, you know, the average salary is what it is fifty seven thousand two hundred. Okay, clear. So this is where you work on. So this is the way of working of group functions. Now let us try to uh, solve few examples and uh, work on them. So the first, uh, the first query that you have to write is uh, is is to write a query to display salary statistics report of the organization uh, as maximum, minimum, and average salary. So what do I want out of it? I want the maximum, minimum, and average salary of the organization. So how you how will you go for it? uh try it okay it is uh, i think it is very simple select max salary uh suppose i say as max sal comma min of what min of also salary as suppose min sal comma average of what salary as av sorry avg sal from which table from the Employees table. So you are getting the maximum salary of the employees of of all the employees, the minimum salary that is being earned by all the employees, and the average salary that is being earned by all the employees. Clear? So this is you know this is the way you work with which kind of function. This is the way you work with group functions. Okay. Let us. Uh, 
so uh, group functions uh, and then <coughs> okay so i think here till here it is uh, you know it is very clear <coughs> now <coughs> now let us uh, let us try to work on one more query and this is your this query query to find the highest salary for managers okay so i want the you know what is the maximum salary that is being earned by managers for example when i say select star from the employees table if this is my employees table and then you go there are two managers first manager is nikhil and then the second manager is nitin i want to find the highest salary that is being earned by what that is being earned by managers okay so how will i go for it uh, give it a try okay let me uh, you know let me tell it if you are not able to get it uh, the query is will be like that select max of what max of salary from employees if i write like this then it will give what it will give the maximum salary of all the employees okay but uh, i have one thing okay let me do it okay uh, where if i write like this where designation equal to what where designation equal to manager then it will give the max <coughs> okay where designation equal to what it is equal to manager so it will give the maximum salary of which employees of the managers uh i am not sure if you are able to get it but let us you know try to understand this query before and try to understand this query you take uh you take what i have written on this line group functions are evaluated after the where clause what does this line mean this means this line means that group functions are always evaluated after you know after after the filtering of records okay clear group functions again i would repeat group functions are always evaluated after the filtering of rows which is done by the where clause clear let us try how it is working let us see how, how it is working for example uh, i won't say so this way you can find the you know higher salary of managers also but uh, i won't say for managers suppose i say for i want to find the highest salary for developers okay what uh, query will i write mm. see select max of what i have written where designation equal to what it is equal to a developer so you are getting the maximum salary for a developer that is 50000 see in this table there are two developers how many developers are there two developers are there one is vaibhav and one is sonali and vaibhav salary is 40000 sonali salary is 50000 and maximum salary is what it is 40000 if i say suppose the minimum salary from employees were designation equal to developer so it will find the minimum salary for all the developers in the organization so how this query is working particularly select star select star from employees okay this is my employees table so you have a look suppose now i'll take you know to better you know understand make it explain let me you know take this pen to right fine okay now like right. now if you have observed this query okay uh, all right if you observe this query select min salary from employees where designation equal to developer okay this salary this this query if you observe okay now here what i have written if you go here uh so i have written that group functions are evaluated after the filtering of rows so what does this mean this where clause we already studied that select clause select when you write select statement it works on row by row and then where clause performs what it performs the filtering of rows so here also suppose i write select min salary from employees by designation equal to developer so this will go to all the rows of the organization all the rows and will select only which rows it will select only the rows that are where the designation is developer so here designation is manager it will not be selected this will also not be selected this row will be selected this will also not be selected this will also not be selected this and again vaibhav will be selected and rashmita neha and you know ranish will not be selected so effectively how many rows will be selected by the query see this you know this vaibhav will be selected and then this row this sonali will be selected 
and now in these two rows the group functions will be applied okay now in these two rows group functions will be applied when i say the minimum salary then out of these two rows which is the which what is the minimum salary when i say maximum salary then out of these two rows what is the maximum salary clear so in this way you see group functions are operating uh, how do they work after the you know after the execution of filtering of rows that is being done by the where clause let us try and take another example suppose uh, here is one more query for you find the count of all employees whose salary is between 40000 and 90000 <coughs> okay you have to write this query try it on your own i'll pause the video okay if you are not able to do it then i think again this query is also you know not uh, very difficult to understand uh, what will i write select what i have to find the count therefore i will use the count uh, group function select count star from this table from the employees where uh, what will i say salary between where salary between what i have said 40 uh, it is 40000 yeah it is 40000 and 90000 so where salary between 40000 and 90000 see it is giving a total count of what seven when i say select count star from employees when i say like this total number of employees are what total number of employees are 10 but when i write like this then the count is coming out to be what count is coming out to be 7 why it is coming out to be 7 because where clause over here is performing filtering of rows and then after the execution of where clause you know the select clause you know this uh, the select clause is working. Uh, I'll just uh, all right. If I take this pen now, if you observe this query, this query, then here it is. Here the where clause is performing filtering of rows. This row is being filtered because you know no no. This row is not getting filtered. Okay, this row is getting filtered this row is getting filtered this row is getting filtered this is not getting filtered again this row is getting you know selected this row is getting selected this is not getting selected and this row is getting selected and Rajneesh is getting selected so how many rows have got selected one two three four five six seven you know seven ticks are there this is a cross okay so seven ticks are there okay so in this way you know first this where clause has formed the filtering of rows these rows have been filtered and in these filtered rows the group functions are being executed okay this is the way group functions work clear all right uh, now again let us have a look at a very important point group functions do not operate on null values what does this mean <clears throat> this means that group functions will always omit the you know the rows that are null okay let us see how this is working suppose for example i say uh, select uh, i don't say when i say select count ename uh, from the employees table then it is you know it is giving it is giving the count of all the enames you know it is taking all these enames and get, giving a count of all of them now if i say <coughs> select count of uh, salary from employees if i say like this then what will be the output see again the output will be 10 because you know it is having a count of all the you know all the salaries this is my employees table this is my employees table now if i say something like this select count of commission from employees select count of commission from employees then what will be the output then you see the output is not coming out to be 8 it is coming out to be 10 but still if you observe here commission if you go to this commission column this commission here will you observe that the total number of rows are what these total number of rows are 10 but why it is giving the output of 8 it is giving an output of 8 because the, there are two null you know there are two nulls in the commission column that is why here you observe there are two nulls this is the first null okay sorry 
So this is the first null and this is the second null. And what I've written, group functions never operate on null values. So it will omit these null rows, okay? Wherever the commission is null, it will omit these rows and then it will perform a count, okay? So always remember these fact that group functions never act on null values, okay? Clear? Uh, for example, uh, suppose when I say, uh, uh, sorry, I write this query. Select max of what? Max of say commission. Max of commission from which table? From the employees table. When I write like this, it is, sorry, maximum, okay, maximum commission, it is giving to be 30,000. When I write sum of commission, suppose sum of all commission from employees table then it is giving what it is giving 74000 see 30000 plus 45000 50000 52000 56000 56000 plus six, you know 18000 equal to what it is uh, 74000 it is 74000 but it is not adding these null values okay and this is also you know it is verified it cannot add null values because we already saw if you add null to any value the result will also be what it will be null clear because null is an undetermined value you add an undetermined value to a determined value the result will be undetermined so this that is why this sum is not taking these nulls into account you know this null and this null into account because if you add these null you perform a sum of it then the result will also be what it will also be null so for the sake of secure you know for the sake of you know security these group functions never act on null values clear i think this much must be clear okay now um, let us have a look at one more query okay get count of all employees whose commission is null okay count of all employees whose commission is null how will you write this query i want to find out all the employees whose commission is null try out try this okay try this query i'll pause the video okay if you are not able to get it then again this is very simple select i have i don't want a count and then i will say select count star from employees where Commission is equal to what? Commission is equal to null. My dear friends, will this query work? Will this query work? It will not work. See, okay, it is giving a count, you know, count of zero. It is not giving the result. Uh, I am the, I mean, two employees are having commission as null. So it should exactly give the count, count of what? Count of two, okay? So, you know, you can never equate null. For having, for matching null, you always use the is operator, okay? So where commission is null, if I write like this, then you will, then you know, it will, it is giving a count of all employees where commission is null. So here, you know, uh, it, I have written star. So star means a row. Okay. It is, no, no. Uh, so, uh, so here, uh, if you, I mean, I don't want you to get confused with this query. Let me explain this, uh, select star from the employees table this is my employees table you know if this is my employees table then you know this where clause again you know it is performing filtering of roads so two rows are being filtered you know these row and this row and then you are performing counts of star so star it is you know it's a kind of wildcard operator that is you know that will take into account the distinct occurrence of rows so this row is is there you know this row is also there that is why it is you know it is giving a count of what it is giving a count of two okay clear so in this way this query is working uh this video we will further continue our discussion with uh, the group functions so we will take a look at few queries few practice queries and we will bet, try to better understand how group functions work okay and how can we apply working of group functions okay so this is my employees table and you know if my, this is my database uh, for example if i go over here uh, okay select data base okay sorry the published database now um, okay okay have a look at this uh, I want you to uh, first of all I want you to write this query okay uh, I want you to find the number of employees who are hired in the year 2017 okay so find the number of employees who were hired in the year 2017 all right how will you go for it so these two employees, you know, these, these employees, this, uh, this is one employee, this is one employee and this again, you know, all the employees who were hired in the year 2017. For example, when I say select, you know, select ename comma hire date, hire date from which table from the 
employees table when i write like this you are getting this so for example nitin nikhil is getting in the year hired in the year 2015 but sonali is getting hired in the year in which year in the year 2017 so i want you to find a count of all employees who were hired in the year 2017 go for it okay if you are not uh, if you if not if you don't uh, get it then i i would like first of all you know first of all revise your you know uh when i when i told you about the you know date functions so there was one date function that was the extract function and when i write extract year from which table from the uh, from uh, sorry high date as suppose year hired if i write like this then what will be the output you know you will get you know the year in which every employee was hired for example this nikhil was hired in the year in which year 2015 so extracting year from which from the hired date so you are extracting a part of hired date that is a year part so you are so this is this extract is a, you know it is a single row function this extract it's a single row function clear it is see it is working on row by row it is a, it is acting on every row and finding you know the year in which every employee was hired so now i want a count of all the employees who were hired in the year 2017 so what query will i write i think it is very very simple uh, to write this query i just want what i just want a count so i will say count star uh from which table from the uh employees table where ex extract extract what year from which from hire date hire date is equal to what is equal to 2017 Okay, so you'll get the count of all employees who were hired in which year? Who were hired in the year 2017? Okay, so I've solved this query. Uh, let us now look at one more query, and uh, suppose this is the query. Uh, all right. Organization has decided to give commission to only those employees who have worked for more than one years. Find the total commission that has to be given by the organization. Okay, so what do I mean when I say this query? okay let us go to this database and uh, i this is my employees table uh, select star from uh, suppose i say select e name comma salary select e name comma salary comma commission from which table from the employees table now what the organization is decided it has it has decided to give uh, you know the commission to only only the employees who have worked for uh, uh, more than one year okay so so now for example if you take nikhil this row if you take this first row okay this first row nikhil nikhil was hired in which year it was he was hired in 2015 and you know the, you know if i write uh, so if on my system if you see select uh, card date card date if i write then the current date is what it is 2017 okay so that means nikhil has worked for more than how many years he has worked for more than one year that is why he will be given commission but in case of you know in case of sonali she is just started to work on 2017 so she will not get any commission because she has not completed minimum one year duration okay so although her commission is 5000 but she will not get any commission so i want the total commission that has to be given by the organization i mean okay So total commission means the sum of all sum of commission that has to be given by the organization. Okay, write this query. How will you write this query? To write this query, I will again give you one more hint, and that is the timestamp diff. Okay, so if I write uh, select e name comma hire date comma time stamp diff. Okay, if I write timestamp diff, and I give two arguments year hire date. and then the third argument is say suppose the card date if i give from which table from the from my employees table then you will get a count of how many years this so this time stamp diff function is doing what you just observe this time stamp diff function okay time stamp diff is finding the difference between years of these two dates the high date and the current date the high date and the current date difference in year this time stamp diff function is finding so the if the you know the current date is 2017 current date is 2017 and in case of nikhil the high date is high date is 2015 so you know it has found find found out the difference to be 2 years okay so how will you go for this query how will you write this query try on your own i'll pause the video i i think i have given you a big hint okay 
if you are not able to get it then i will write select count of what select count star from what from the oh sorry i have to find the sum of commission so how will i write select sum of uh, uh, select sum commission from which table from the employees table where what condition will hold true where this condition will hold true where time stamp dip of year from the hire date and what cut date is greater than or equal to what is greater than or equal to so this has to be the total commission that has to be given by the organization okay according to my condition so for all the employees who have worked for more than one years okay clear see if i write like this see if i if i write the e name comma commission uh if i write select e name comma what select e name comma commission from employees where time stamp diff is equal to, is equal to one so you you will get all these rows you know you will get all these rows and now when you write sum of commission when you write sum of commission then it is you know performing the sum of the commission of all these filtered rows where is a what is a filtering condition all those employees who have worked for more than one year okay so if you perform the sum you will get this sum to be 67000 clear all right let us move to uh, again a very you know okay write a query you know uh, write uh, write query for this you know get count of okay not for this uh, yeah count of distinct jobs per department count of distinct jobs uh, per department so what do i mean when i say this query uh, i so for example when i write uh, select dpt id comma designation from the employees table when i mean like this you see 10 rows are getting selected okay 10 rows are getting selected you know in department 10 there is one job manager in 20 there is a job that is developer in 20 there is a job that is analyst then in department number 20 there is a job that is a trainer and then there is hr head and then there again there is again a trainer and then there is again a technician but i want only the distinct job so what query will i i want a count of distinct job here you are getting the count what here you are getting the count of 10 so if i write select count uh select count if i write like this from employees okay sorry no i'm sorry uh if i write select count distinct department id comma designation from employees then you will get a count of what <coughs> you will get a count of 8 okay because you know the total number of distinct jobs are what the total number of distinct jobs are only Eight because ten manager and ten manager it is getting repeated similarly twenty developer and this uh, sorry twenty trainer and again this twenty trainer is getting repeated so it is you know you know counting the number of distinct occurrences of this okay clear all right now uh, again one more you know uh, one more very challenging query find the total males and females in the organization total males and females in the organization so. Uh, i want this query in a definite format i don't want you know i want it in a specific format in what format do i need this query uh, i want this query in this format i'll you know i'll just take the pen tool and then i'll try to explain okay so i want the output in this format how i want the output i want suppose number of males and number of females these will be the two columns and say suppose the number of males are what suppose the number of males are 7 and number of females are three whatever may be their count i just found you know this space so here you take just male m and f are two columns or i can say i can analyze this column as this also for example i can say you don't write uh, you don't write m over here you can write uh, males and you do, you have right females okay the count of all males and females in the organization clear how will i go <coughs> how will you go for this query so this is query you know it is a kind of challenging query so i will not ask you to do it but let us try let us see how we can approach this query if you can understand the working of this query you know it will be very good so, uh, so to find all the suppose this is my employees table select star from which table from the employees table this is my employees table now what is the total number of males in the organization total number of males in the organization is like this select uh, i want the count so i will this a count star from which table from the employees table 
ver sorry where uh, uh, gender equal to male okay so total number of males are six and total number of females are what total number of females are four but now i want you know i don't want this re result to be like this i don't want to write one separate query for males and one separate query to be of what to be of females i wanted the result in you know what i told exactly what what i wanted the query in which specific format okay this was a format in which i asked you so i want you know both count, count of males and count of females in a single query and how will i you know this way count of suppose males is six and count of females is oh sorry it is not 10 it is four i want the result in this format how will i go for it so let me write this query you try better try to understand this query how, how am i writing this query okay so for this writing this uh, i will say select i will use a group function and group function inside group function i will use a case okay and inside the case i will pass this gender uh, when m then 1 if i write else i say 0 sorry 0 as males and then i copy it and uh, i put a semicolon just a and i forgot you know i just you know you need to end the you know and case also so end as suppose uh, when gender suppose if i write f and then females uh, from which table employees table if you write this query if you write this query then you can see what will be the output let us try to work work on this query. If I've written this query, I'll just explain this query. How this query? How this query is? See, the number of males are six, and the number of females are what? Number of females are four. How this query is working? If you can understand the working of this query, I think you have you know you have a good understanding of you can uh, solve complex SQL queries. Just try to understand this query. I'll I'll, I'll try to explain it, and uh, I'll take this pen tool. Okay, here. So select clause is there. You you are using the select clause. So select clause will always work from in which basis? It will work in row by row basis. Okay. So here you see there is no where clause. Okay. So now first of all it will find you know it will go to this row function some case. So it will go to the first row. And what is the gender? Suppose the gender here it the gender is male. So you know the gender is male. So it will give you know it will produce what? It will produce one. Okay. Then it will go to this row also. It will go to this row also. And then gender is male. So again, the count will be what? Again, the count, it, you know, in the, this case will give the output of what? It will give the output of one. But for Sonali, it will give the output of zero. So it, you know, for all males, it will, you know, it is giving out, uh, you know, giving output of what? This, this case, this, if you observe this case, for all the, you know, for all the, when it goes through all the rows who are males, then it will give, you know, one as the output and you know we have i have written some outside so it will count all the ones so it will give the count of all the males and similarly this will give a count of all the females clear so in this way you know i'm writing this query so you know it is a very popular and you know popular format of you know writing these queries now i want you to write one query on your own on the basis i have you know on the on the basis how i have solved this query i want you to solve a one more query so I want you to write this query. I'll just remove it. Find the count of em employees hired in year 2017 and uh, 2015, 16 and 13. Okay, 2016 and 2015 and 2013 okay so <clears throat> i want all the employees who were hired in the year 2017 i want a count of all separate count of all the employees who were hired in the year 2017 16 15 and 13 this is the query i want you to write so how will you approach this query see i i want this output in this form so for example i'll if you just take the pen tool here so here what now what format do i want i want this format say 2017 then 2016 will be one more column 2015 will be one more column and 2013 will be one more column and these four will be the columns and then i want the count for example for in the year 2017 say suppose three employees were hired in 2016 say are uh, two employees are hired and then say in 
2015 you know uh, four you know four and then you know maybe three whatever may be the count i want the output in this format okay write on your own this query i think you can write on the basis of what i've written over here try it on your own if you're not able to get it then of course we will solve i'll pause the video okay so this query is also i think uh, not uh, very you know difficult if you are able to understand the previous query how will i write it select uh, what select sum of what select sum of uh, what uh, case case of what extract year from high date okay uh, extract <coughs> year from high date when it is 2017 then i will give the output 1 else i will give the output 0 and then i will end the case and then i will say as 2017 if i write like this is it correct see i think it is correct and then uh, similarly i will write it for what i will copy so i'll just copy it and then i will write it for what 2016 2015 and then 2013 so here i will write 2016 2015 and then here i will write 2013 and then if you go here also similarly i like this 2016 15 and then 13 and I'll remove the comma from here. From which table? From the employees table. I think it should work. Okay. Let us see if this query is working or not. Copy and just paste it. Okay. Oh, there is some problem. Okay. It is giving problem. Where it will just let me, you know, work out with this problem. My SQL version setting. I think there is some problem with the brackets. Let me see. Case uh, of extract year from high date. what uh, may be the possible error with this select case extract year from high date when 2017 then 1 l0 end and uh, as 2017 i think it is uh, correct i have put the commas also from employees select uh again let's just let me you know i'll just uh, maybe i'll just again try to run it um uh, okay. on the place oh. okay uh, let me break try to break this query select case uh, of uh, extract uh, year from high date uh, uh, when 2017 then one else zero and from Yes. Just let me take a part. Is this working? Yeah, it is working. So uh, I think uh, then uh, extract year from high date. Yeah, when 2017 case. Okay. All right. I think yeah. Uh, if you just go over here. Okay. This some function is ending. Okay. I am not able to you know track the error. <sighs> okay. I 
I think you you can just you know try this query on your own. Maybe you know just there must be some kind of syntactical error with this query. Why this is not working from employees? Some case. I just uh, what is the error in it? Just. Uh, Right syntax to use near 2017. Okay, I'll just uh, I'll just try to do it like this. Suppose uh, mm, I think it should work. No? Yeah. Okay. Great. See, it was, you know, it was considering these allies column as numbers. So, you know, I have to, you know, I have to enclose them in single inverted commas to make them back as, okay. So, this is working. So, you are get the, getting the count of all employees, you know, who worked in 2017, who were hired in 2016, 15 and similarly in the year 2013, okay. We will study about the group by clause. So, we have already studied about the group functions. What were the group functions? Like the sum, average, count, min, max. All these were the group functions, but now we will study something different and that is a group by clause. So always uh, take a note of this, that group by clause is different from group functions. So what we have already studied, we have already studied that group functions never operate on null values and group functions are executed. And now we will study, you know, the later part of it, you know, group functions are executed after the, <coughs> after the where clause and group functions can never be written inside the where clause. All these things we will study when we try to see the group by clause. Okay, so let us uh, first of all go to my database and here is my, I'll again write the query. Suppose this is, again, I'll, I'll work with employees table. Or not. This is a standard table which we, with which we work, okay. So this is my employees table and now let us uh, try to uh, work on it. Suppose uh, I want to find a count of all the employees who work in department number 10, okay. Okay, so this is not, you know, this, we have already done this query, so I'm not going to, you know, uh, you know, I, this is not a query that you need to attend. You have, we have already done this, but still, I need, if I need to find a count of all the employees who work in department number 10, just for your revision, then what query will I write? I will write this query, select what count star from which table from the employees table, where what DPT ID equal to. 10, department ID equal to 10. So you get two employees who are working in department number 10. Okay. And just to revise your concept, you know, uh, we already saw in the previous video that, you know, first of all, the where clause will execute and then, you know, the, these group functions will run. Okay. So how it is working? <coughs> it is working like this. Again, you know, to make the concepts clear, it is working something like this. If I, you know, I just take the uh, pen tool. Okay. Here. So you have written that where department ID equal to 10. So how many rows will be selected by the where clause? You know, these two rows will be selected by the group group by clause. Okay. But by the where clause, you know, these will be filtered by the where clause. And when these two rows have been filtered by the where clause, now the group functions will be applied. And what is a group function? The count star function is, is there that this is our group function. So count star is will produce the result what it will produce the result to be two. If I wanted, suppose, uh, suppose, uh, you know, the sum of salary of all the employees in department number 10, then what query will I write? I think again, you can, you can write this query instead of using count star as you know, I will use what I use sum of salary. Okay sum of uh, salary okay but the sum of salary is you know two lakhs <coughs> so nikhil and nathan are two employees who work in department number uh, department number 10 and their sum of salary is what their sum of salary is uh, here you see these two employees are working in department number 10 department number 10 and their sum of salary is two lakhs so here the same thing is happening what the same thing that is the first aware clause is you know filtering the rows how many rows are being filtered two rows have been filtered and now in these two filtered rows you know this group function has been applied okay clear so always keep this execution in mind okay so let me you know write this very important point uh, for you know uh, okay we'll just you know see all right now let me minimize it and now suppose i want to you know i'll just return suppose the count of all employees who work in department number 10 so this was the query okay 
this was the query suppose now i wanted to find for department number 20 then what query will i write uh, all the employees who work in department number 20 so there are 26 employees in department number 20 and how many employees work in department number 30 see two employees are working in department number 30 okay and this is my employees table and just i'll write select star employees okay this is my employees table and you can verify this from this table also you know two employees are in, de are in department number 30 this jayant and uh, Vaibhav are in department number 32 employees, Nikhil and Nitin are in department number 10 and the rest of the employees are in which department? They are in department number 20. Now, uh, I don't want the result in this manner. I want the result in different manner and uh, let me tell you in what way I want the result. So, uh, I want the result in this way. Suppose if I take this, okay, uh, all right, okay. If I just take the pen and how do I want the result? I want the result in this way, you know. Suppose uh, uh, the department 10, 20 and 30. And here this is department ID. Okay, and, and here, here is the count, you know. For example, two employees in department number 10, six employees in department number 20 and then again two employees in department number 30. I want the result in this way. Okay. For that purpose, I am going to use the group by clause. Okay. For this purpose, I will use a group by clause. How I will use a group by clause? Let us try to see this. Okay. So, uh, first of all, just write, let me write a query and then you will, then, you know, I'll just explain what I have written. Department ID. From which table? From the employees table. And then I write group uh, by PPT ID. Okay. If I write like this, <coughs> sorry. Okay. You get the correct result. You know, in department number 10, there are two employees in department number 20. There are six employees and in department number 30. There are how many employees? There are two employees <coughs> to better, you know, uh, if I, you know, first write the department ID and then I write the count star and, and I analyze this column also. Account star as say, suppose num employees okay from which table uh, from the employees table uh, from the employees table and group by which column group by de department id clear so in department number 10 two employees 26 employees and 32 employees so <coughs> now we want to study how this query is working okay let us try to understand how this query is working and in this query uh, you see what I have used. I have used the group by clause. I have used which clause? I have used this clause. This is the group by clause. Okay. This is the group by clause. And this is my group function. Count star, min, max, sum, average. These are all group function. But this is the group by clause. So what effectively this group by clause is doing? It is grouping by which? It is grouping by department ID. Okay, it is grouping by what? It is grouping by department ID. So how many groups, how many, you know, distinct department IDs are there? If you just, you know, if you write this, uh, if you write a query, how many departments IDs are there? Then uh, uh, suppose uh, I write, uh, select distinct DPT ID from which table? From the employees table, you know, sorry. Select distinct, sorry, DPT ID. <coughs> from the employees table there are three distinct departments now let me you know uh, select uh, star from employees group by department id sorry sorry group by department uh, select star from employees and then i write order by order by what order by department id if i write like this okay then what effectively if you uh, let me you know uh, just uh sorry and just uh, that query you know it's uh let me i like it okay select uh, dpt id comma count uh, star as num employee from which table from the employees table and then i was saying this this query i've already written group by what group by dpt id okay dpt id all right now how this query is working you know how it is working let us try to understand this i'll take the pen tool and here let us go so what uh, what am i doing i am doing i am doing i'm using the group by clause okay group by and group by what 
I am saying group by department ID. So how many distinct departments were there? You see previously what we saw, how many distinct departments were there? 10, 20 and 30. So for department number 10, a group will be formed. Okay, this is the group for department number 10. For department number 20, again, one more group will be found. And this is the group for what? This is the group for department number 20. And for department number 30, again, a group will be formed. And what will be this group? This is the group of department number 30 comprising of Jayant and Vaibhav and department number 10 group comprising of what Nikhil and Nathan. So you have group by what? You have group by department IDs. Okay. So you have made three groups. Okay. How many groups? You have made three groups. All right. Just, you know, try to be patient and try to understand this. Okay. This is very important. If you have to write complex queries, try to understand this. Now, once you have grouped, how many groups have been formed? Three groups have been formed. Once these groups have been formed, the group functions will be applied individually on these groups. For example, one, for example, the, you, you, which group function you are applying this group function count star. So here <coughs> in this group of department ID 10 count star will be applied and how many count will come count will come out to be two. Again, for this group, this group, the, you know, this group function will be applied and what will be the count for this? The count will come out to be six. And again, for this group, the count star function will be applied and the count will come out to be what? It will come out to be two. Clear? So in this way, group functions are working. You know, they are grouping. First, they are grouping and then you, you know, they are applying the you know, group functions. Okay. So, uh, let uh, me write like this uh, and I just uh, <coughs> sorry. All right. sorry. okay and just uh, let it be what it is okay, I'm just uh, I'll take one notepad okay and uh, you know whatever important deductions we have we will keep on writing them first uh, um, first grouping is performed and then on those groups group functions are applied okay are you able to get this line what I have written first the grouping is performed and then on those groups group functions are applied so what does this mean this means what we have seen over here what we have seen my dear friends we have seen that first the grouping was applied we have written group by what we have written that group by group by department ID the first the grouping was performed or how many groups were formed three groups were formed or department number 10 20 30 and then on those groups the group functions were applied clear okay this way this you know it is working so let us again you know try to solve one more query for example i want to find the maximum salary in every department okay so for example if you say department number 10 the maximum salary is it is what it is one lakh twenty thousand and you know similarly for every other department i want to find the maximum salary so what query will i write select select department id comma what uh, then I will use the group function what I will use the group function as you know sorry I will need I, I want the maximum salary then I will use max max of what max of salary from which table from the employees table and group by what group uh, by department ID because I want the result per department S okay so you are getting, you know, for department number 10, maximum salary 1 lakh 20,000, for 20, 70,000, 70, and for 30, it is what? It is 40,000. And one thing to keep in mind over here is that, again, if you observe, first the group functions, you know, first grouping will be formed. How many groups will be formed? Of three groups will be formed of department number 10, 20, and 30. And in those group, the group function will be applied. And what is the group function? This group function. Maximum of salary will be found. Okay. So in this way, the group by clause is working. You know, I am I am little slow because I want to explain each and every concept. Please bear with me. If you have already studied it, then you can, you know, I mean, you can skip this video. But I want to, you know, target those students who are, you know, just trying to understand what is SQL. Okay. Okay. Let us uh, write one more query. So we have already seen this query. 
uh, you have to now write this query query to find the maximum minimum and average salary per department okay so write this query i'll just pause the video you write this query how will you go for this query i want to find the maximum minimum and average salary per department what query will i write okay if you are not able to get it i think uh, select department id comma i want to maximum i want the maximum salary per department then i will i will write what max salary suppose i say i like this column as max salary comma if i want the minimum salary then i will use the group function with what min okay and then again i like this column as min sum and if i want the average salary then i will i will use a avg okay avg salary as uh, suppose avg sal from which table from the employees table and group by what group by department id because i want the result per department so you are getting for department number 10 the maximum salary is 120000 minimum salary is 80000 and average salary is this okay so you are getting the average minimum and then maximum salary per department clear hai? uh let us uh, you know uh, just uh, just just observe this query so here the same thing is again happening you know the same same thing is happening what is happening you are forming the groups by the group by clause and on those groups three group functions have been applied what three group functions the max sal the minimum salary and what the average salary group functions have been applied okay let us try to work with again one more query find the average salary group by what group by designation so now i want the average salary by designation can you write this query okay so here is my employees table so i want the average salary of each and every designation select start from employees okay so how many designations are there managers developer analyst trainer technician i want the average salary per de per designation so how, what query will i write i will write like this select what designation and i what do i want i want the average salary therefore i will use the group function which group function avg salary from which table from the employees table and group by now group by what now group by what designation designation if i now group by designation you know sorry um select okay select designation comma average salary from which table from the employees table and group by what group by designation yeah so you are getting the average salary per designation so here also you know if uh, if you observe we have group by what we have group by designation so if i write select star from employees and order by designation if i write like this i uh, just uh, just just for making things clear and then you know so here again if you go you know if you again go over here okay oh, sorry again you know if i you know just take the pen tool so what is effectively happening the thing that is effectively happening is now you are grouping by what now you are grouping by designation so how many groups will be formed this analyst group will be formed this developer group will be formed hr head group will be formed manager group will be formed this technician group will only contain how many employees one employee and this trainer group will contain how many employees two employees now how many groups have been formed 1 2 3 4 5 6 and six groups have been formed and now in each group what group function will be applied this group function which we have seen okay okay if you go over here okay here uh, sorry yeah this average salary you know this group function this group function this average salary group function will be applied for example if you go to suppose uh, analyst suppose you group for uh, technician then what is the uh, you know what is uh, the average salary for technician it is 40000 okay so it is coming out okay this much is clear this much is clear i'll you know i'll just exp uh, escape it okay and then uh i will uh, uh, make one more important uh, suppose let us try to write one more query F query to find the number of employees hired per year hired per year so 
for example you know if you take this uh, again you take this uh, employees table and now i say ordered by hired it uh, order by hired it so this is your uh, this is your table and now i want to find out the employees number of employees who were hired in every year for example when i say that in 2013 three employees were hired for in 15 two employees were hired and 16 two and then 17 how many employees three employees were hired so what query will i write okay you just try this query i'll pause the video try this query on your own okay i think this query is also very simple uh, what i have to write so what do i want i want the count and which column do i want to group them about i want to group them by year so what will i write we have if you, you know if you have not studied date function then first of all try to study the date functions okay extract what extract year from which from higher date extract year from higher date comma i want the number of employees so i will use the count cell group function from which table from the employees table and what will i write i will again you know group by extract um, year from higher date if i write like this you know you are getting in, in 2013 three employees were hired 2015 two employees were hired 16 two employees and 17 how many employees were hired three employees were hired and you know you can also group uh, you can also write this query like this for example if i write select and uh, as uh, year h suppose i allies this column i allies this column as year h or year hired and now i write from employees and then i write uh, group by i don't write this you know extract year from higher date i don't write extract year from higher date i just use what what was the allies uh, i use for it this column i used year h then suppose if i write year h is will it work i'm not sure just let us try okay it is working okay so you can you know also use allies allies names of columns when you are grouping them okay allies names for example you have we have allies this column as what year h and we are using the same in group by class so here what is happening again the same thing is happening you are forming groups of the of years and then in each group you are performing the group function that is the count star function okay clear so this query we already seen okay okay so i think uh, all right so we will our continue our discussion of group by fun group by clause in the next video also we will study the group by you know how group by is used in conjunction with having so uh, we will study this all this in the next video okay i'll just pause it with this video for now we will continue our discussion of group by clause so what we studied in the previous video we saw that uh, group by clause is used to group together rows and then you know group functions are applied on th those group rows so this we already saw in the previous video now let us continue our discussion after this so if you just have a look at the second point uh, group functions are executed after the where clause. So what does this line mean? So, okay, so you can always you know keep this thing as a, you know it, You can keep it as a rule uh, That you can always remember that group functions will always be executed once the where clause has finished its execution Okay, so let us try to practically understand it. So this is my database and you know, I'll just you know Although I've selected but still again, you know, this is my employees table. Okay now uh, this you know what we what we have already seen till now is that suppose i want you know i want you to find the count of uh, all employees per department okay for example how many departments how many employees in department number 10 how many in department number 20 and how many in department number 30 so this query is very simple you have already we have already you know uh, already seen this query comma suppose uh, so i want uh, you know from which table from the employees table and group uh, by department id if i write like this i will get you know department number 10 20 and 30 and what uh, exactly is happening over here if i you know just i revise your concept for just your revision and i'll just draw it so that you know things are clear so what exactly is happening is that you know it is uh, grouping together rows so, you know this uh, for example this department number 10 is forming one group this department number 20 you know it is forming one more group you know this this is these all rows will come under department number 20 these these rows will come under department number 20 
this group will belong to department number 20 this will group will also belong to department number 20 and this group will also belong to which department department number 20 and once you know these uh, groups have been formed the group functions will be applied and what is the group function we have used over here we, we have used a count function so it will count the number of rows okay so this way it is working uh, it looks out to be fine but uh, now uh, i have some more requirement and i you know what I want, I want to omit out the department number 30 and I only want the count of employees working either in department number 10 or in department number what or in department number 20. So what query will you write? What will you do to solve this query? Give it a try. I'll pause. I'll wait. I think it is very simple. Uh, so what we will, what I'm going to do, select department ID comma count, uh, count of what? Uh, let us first of all, you know, write us. Uh, select uh, star from you know so that every uh, and let me order it by suppose department id first of all let us do this then write our query so what query will i write i will write because i want to group by department id i will select department id and then i will write select what select count star from the table my name of my table is the employees table and i will write group uh, by department id if i write uh, like this sorry i only want for department number 10 and 20 so what will i write uh, i will use a where clause where department id in and what it should be in either in department number 10 or in department number what 20 and then i have to group by what group by department id okay so now if you just see if i take the pen tool you know i'll just take this pen tool and you know this query is almost you know same to this query okay what we have done over here is almost same what we did over here but here you know we have omitted this what we have omitted we have omitted department number 30 how we have omitted department number 30 because we have used the group because we have used the where clause okay where clause we have used and uh, if you are able to understand it what is what i have written over here suppose uh, here what i'm looking group functions are executed after the where clause so what does this mean this means that first this select will run in you know in conjunction of where and first the rows will be filtered and then once the rows are filtered then they will be grouped and then group functions will be applied okay uh, let me you know write the flow so that uh, it is clear so let me write you know uh, it is very important to understand this you know first uh, first uh, in first place what is running we are where clause is running second what is you know group group by is running and you know in the third position what is running the group functions are being run okay group functions so here what is exactly happening this is see this is happening so you here you have used up where clause so you have used a where clause so it will filter rows and it will only filter rows where department id is either equal to what either equal to 10 or either it is equal to what it is equal to 20 so these many number of rows will be what they will be filtered okay all these rows will be filtered so these rows are filtered now these rows have been filtered now what will happen is that now the grouping of these will grouping of these rows will happen according to what according to department id why because i have written group by what i have written big group by department id that is why grouping of rows will be, they will be performed with by their department ids so taking their respective department ids there are only two distinct department ids one is the department id 10 and the other is the department id what 20 so two groups will be formed in this case why because these rows have been you know these rows have not been selected because they have been filtered out they have you know they have not been selected they have been filtered out by the where clause only where clause is first selecting the you know all the employees who are in department number 10 or 20 and then grouping of those rows have been performed and then once the grouping has been performed the group functions are being applied is it clear i think it should be clear this is very important so if you are able to get it then uh, i want you to write this query Query to find the average salary of managers, developers, analysts. See, uh, in my employees table, if you go to the employees table, these are all distinct designations. Managers, trainers, HR head, analyst, developer, technician, developers. All these are different designations. But I only want what? I only want the average salary of managers, developers, and analysts. Okay, write a query for this. Write on your own. Okay. If you have been able to do it, it is very good. If you're not able to do it, then just 
see what I do. Okay, so what I have to select, select designation, comma. I want the average salary. So which group function will I use? Average and average of what? Average of salary from which table? From the employees table. And then if I write group by designation, if I group by designation, then you you are getting everything. But according to my query, I only want managers, developers, and what analysts. So what query will I write? I will write something like this from which table from the employees table and then I will write where you know desig designation in what designation in uh, first one is your manager the second one is uh, developer and the third one is what it is analyst analyst okay and then if I group by what group by designation if i write it then you will only get the average salary of analyst developers and managers i think it should be clear and here also what will be the order of execution the order of execution will be like this first the where clause will be executed then group by and then finally group functions will be applied so how how it is happening if you observe i, I, I like this okay uh, select a star from employees ordered by designation if you know i have ordered them by designation so now if you observe uh, if you write again i know because i think it is you know i take this time because you know i just want to explain these concepts to you so you know some may find it to be very long explanation but this is the way i do it so the things are clear so first of all what is going to happen the where clause is going to run and what does where clause do it does filtering of rows select statement works row by row and where clause will perform filtering of rows so which rows will be for filtered this row will be for filtered why because its designation is manager this row will also be filtered by because its designation is developer but this sorry yeah these two rows will be filtered because their designation is analyst these two rows will also be filtered because their designation is developer and this rashmita will it be filtered no because its designation it's what hr head now again one and two these rows will be filtered because designation is manager and then you know 10 9 and 6 will these rows be filtered no they will not be filtered why because their designation is not either in manager developer or analyst okay now what will, so we have where clause where clause has finished its execution it has finished perform the filtering of rows now what is the second thing that is going to happen the second thing that is going to happen is you know grouping so group by what you have written group by designation so according to the designation one group will be or uh, the group of managers one group will be the group of what one group will be the group of developers and one group will be the group of what will be the group of analyst and then now grouping has also been performed and once the grouping has been performed what is going to run the group functions will run and what is the group functions over here that i've used over here the group function is a avg function so average of salary of every group for example there are two analysts and if you see there are two analysts over here there one is salary is 60,000, the other salary is 30,000. The sum is 90,000 and divided by two, it is 45,000. That is why, you know, average salary of analysts is 45,000. For managers, if you go, one salary is uh, 1 lakh 20,000, other salary is 80,000 and, you know, sum is 2 lakhs. So the average salary will be what? It will come out to be 1 lakh. Okay. Now on these groups, the group functions are running. So in this way, you are getting this output. So now I think you must be clear with what I have written over here. I have written first the where then i have written the group by and then i have written the you know you know this group by and then in the third position the group functions are gonna run so you keep this thing in mind when you design sql queries all right so uh, i think it is clear now if you go to my powerpoint presentation and what i have written in the third point group functions can never be written inside where clause what does this mean uh, can you what all i have told you till now if I if I am gonna write group function inside where class, what is going to happen? Let us try to see with the help of one example. For example, suppose I say I want the count of uh, again the same query. I want uh, the count of every employee in each department according to their department. So I I will use the you know I will use the department ID and then I will use the count uh, because I want the count. I will use the count group functions from the employees table and then group by what? 
group uh, by uh, sorry department id here you are getting like this now i only want for example my query is that i only want those departments where the number of employees working is greater than 2 here this is the query query to display only those department where the number of employees working is more than 2 so can i write something like this so you first of all try this query on your own and can for solving it can i write something like this can i write something like this suppose uh, i say select and then uh, from employees table and then i write the where clause and inside the where clause i write where count star is greater than what is greater than 2 and uh, then i write group by clause group by what department id okay you see invalid use of group function this query will never run why this query will never run this will never run because of the second point which i have mentioned that group functions are ex group functions can never be written inside where clause why do you think that i can never write group function inside where clause what is the exact reason for it see i have already told you if you just observe the order of execution first the where clause is running then grouping is being performed then the group by function is being run and then you know the group functions are running so when when the where clause is running when the where when the where clause is performed filtering of rows is there any you know is have we calculated any of the group functions have any of the group functions being executed no that is why always keep this thing in your mind that you can never use group function inside where clause why you can never use it because once the where clause run the group functions the grouping has not been yet performed and group functions have also not been you know calculated so how can you use group functions inside a where clause for so that purpose we will be using separate clause that is a having clause so we will study it you know little later maybe in this or maybe in the next video we will study the having clause for solving this problem but for now uh, you just keep this thing in mind that you can never use group functions inside their clause okay now let us move on to the third point and what is the third point <coughs> the third point is sorry the fourth point only the columns mentioned in the group by clause can be selected using the select clause so i am you know uh, uh, there is you know my sql this uh, the fourth point which i mentioned over here you know it is not the uh, true in the case of my sql but for, for most of the other relational database, for example, Oracle, SQL Server and very popular, you know, standard databases, this point is always valid. But for MySQL, it is not, you know, it, um, it uh, although you can never do it, it is, you know, it is, uh, <coughs> it, uh, it is, it doesn't make sense to do it. But still, you know, MySQL allows this and uh, it does you to allow it, it allows you to do it by because it makes this assumption that the, you know, the end user is clear of what point of query he's writing. And I also, you know, maybe in some, you know, some later versions of MySQL, this is, uh, this is valid. Okay. So let us see what is, what this point is exactly saying. Let us try to understand this. Um, so I'll, you know, just, uh, if I just, you know, write this query, select department ID comma count star from employees uh, group by department id so you know this is uh, very simple this is very simple this we have already seen okay group by department id i think you are getting you know this but now let me do something different what i will do suppose i select i will select the department id and i will select salary also uh, salary comma count star from which table from the employees table and i say group by department id if i write this query do you think that this is there any problem is there any issue with this uh, if i write this query is there any issue with this query there is a serious problem with this query if you can make it out uh, first of all let me tell the in my sql you know this query will run uh, it will not give any errors but for most of the other relational database this query will not work i will just try to show you how it is not working with some other very popular databases but first of all just see that it is working in case of my sql and now if i write uh, select uh, star okay from employees and then i write order by department id okay to make you know things clear i'll just okay now uh, i'll just minimize it now if you see uh, you know these three groups have been formed this we already saw you know okay and i need to take a pen tool over here so this we have already seen you know okay pen tool okay so how many groups will be formed i think it is very simple to answer it 
uh, these 10 these groups will be found okay this group of department number 10 then group of department number 20 and then the other group of department number 30 because i have used group by department id now what i am selecting i am selecting department id and i am selecting count to count you know it is giving the count of you know in number of employees in every department but i am selecting salary also okay so salary also for example you consider this group you consider this group if i select department id from for this group for this group only if i select department id then for every employee belonging to this group the department id will always be 20 but what but if i select salary then who's salary because if you see in department number 20 you know there are six employees which are working in department number 20 and if i am talking of salary then whose salary i want to select i have not specified it that is why this query is never valid okay that is why this query is never never valid you can always select department id because you have grouped by department id so all the members in that group will have the same department id that is why you can select department id but you can never select salary but in my sql you know what is happening is you know it is giving some some uh, one one salary of you know for example it is giving salary in department number 10 it is giving salary of nikhil and for department number 20 it is giving salary of say, you know uh, sonali okay uh, that is you know mainly it is taking giving you know selecting the rows uh, uh, on the basis of how it has stored it but this query is now you know it is not valid and it will not work in most of the popular databases for uh, for your, uh, I mean, uh, if uh, you try to run it uh, on some other database, let us try to see what is the problem. Okay, I'll you know I'll just take this and I think I'll minimize it. Okay, yeah. so what I've done is that this is my Oracle. Okay, Oracle Live SQL. Yeah, all right. So what I've done, uh, you just observe that if you're, I'll just minimize it. And now this is your Oracle database. This is my, my dear friends. Keep in mind that this is not my SQL database. This is Oracle database. And I have created a table that is employees table. I have not, you know, uh, added all the columns. I have added only, you know, four columns and I have inserted some dummy data inside this table. And if you do select star from employees, select, I say select star from employees, then I'll get this. Okay. Uh, you know, I'm getting four, uh, four employees, Nikhil, Nitin, Neha and Nithi. These are the four employees. And now if I do something like this, what do I do? I do select department ID comma salary comma say suppose count star from which table from the here also the name of the table is employees and then I write group by department ID. If I'm going to run this query on Oracle database, not on MySQL, my dear friends, just keep in mind, this is Oracle Live SQL. If I run it, then what will you get you know not a group by expression this will query will not work why this query will not work because of this reason okay if i you know if you go to this presentation then what i've written only the columns mentioned in the group by clause can be selected using the select clause so here if you observe uh, okay over here if you observe this salary is this salary this column which i've selected in the select clause is it mentioned in the group by clause no it is not mentioned that is why it can never be selected but this can always be done for example if i write something like this group by salary and uh, no for example uh, okay so not to make you confused if i write if i don't select this salary you know if i don't select this salary then this query is always gonna run then this query is always going to run for example okay yeah, it is going to run by in department number 20 there are two employees in department number 10 there are two employees but if i write you know uh, if uh, you write uh, suppose and then if you write suppose you write uh, you select salary and then you group by what then you group by salary only okay you group by salary only then it is possible to select salary okay you it is possible to select salary you know you will get okay you are getting you know for you know uh, one employee is getting twelve thousand one employee is getting ten thousand you know and you know uh, one employee is getting 80,000 one employee is give, getting 120,000 but it is not possible to do something like this suppose I select department ID also over here is it will this query run this query will not run why because in the group by clause I have only used salary that so in the select clause also you can only select clause you can only select what salary you cannot select what you cannot select department ID so here if I write if I write this and you just see it it is not going to work but again this thing can also be done suppose i write department id okay now i have in my group by clause which two columns are being you know, according to which two columns grouping is being performed it is being performed by salary and department 
so each group will have you know the same salary and the same department that is why you will be able to select what the salary and the department id using this query and this query will run fine okay this query will run fine so this is what exactly i have done written over here if you observe so this i know this this was you know i just showed you in you know other database that is you know your oracle database so the only columns mentioned in the group by clause can be selected using the select clause so this is not true in case of mysql but it is true in case in in most of the other relational databases like oracle or mysql or any any of the other relational database okay so how does the having clause works and how does um, you know what it is used for so let us try to understand this and before even trying to understand this the need for having clause was discussed in the previous video so what was the need the need was that because you can never use group functions inside the where clause what was so this was the need so let us try to understand this with the help of one query i want a query to display only those department where the number of employees working is more than 2 so let us uh, before you know like to to approach this query let us first of all find out how many employees are working per department so this is you know uh, very a uh, lot many of time i have written this query okay select department id comma what count star from which table employees table and then sorry group by department department id you are getting this now i only want those departments where the number of employees working is greater than 2 so if you observe i want uh, so which root rows must must be idly selected only these rows will be selected you know only this one row will be selected department number 20 why because here only the number of employees working are 6 okay which is greater than 2 for department number 2 and 10 and 30 two employees are working so i don't want to select those department my requirement is something like this so one solution is that i can do uh, i can write this uh, from the employees table and then i can write what where count star is greater than 2 and uh, what will i write group by department id if i write then you will got invalid use of group functions and we also saw in the previous video why it is a invalid use of group functions because of this reason why this reason because first the where clause is run then you know the group by and then the group functions are run so once your where where clause is running these group functions have not been yet calculated so there is no point in putting you know group functions inside you know your where clause so where do you exactly put this condition i want this to happen so for that purpose i will use a having clause so what will i write i will write like this select from employees okay and then uh, group by department sorry group by department id oh all right all right again you know select uh, from employees and then uh, group by department id and then i will write having having what count star greater than 2 my if i write you know then only then you will get you know which employee you know you will get the employee uh, that is uh, having a uh, you know a count of uh, number of employees are working in this department is greater than uh, Two. Okay. Clear. So let me, you know, let me state one more query. Uh, I have, uh, I have designed one more query for you. So you have to write this query. Okay. Uh, query uh, to find the designations where. Uh, then query to find the designations sorry where only a single employee work okay query to find the designation where only single employee work what do i mean by this suppose uh, i write uh, select star from employees and then i write group by sorry then i write group uh, by designation designation all right if i write then uh, sorry not group by designation i like order by designation if i write uh, 
ordered by designation you are getting you know uh, these uh, employees and they are ordered by designation so now i only want those designations where one employee is working okay single employee is working okay that designation that is held by only a single employee for example this analyst post it has it is held by two employees this developer post is held by two employees but this hr head post is held by only one employee similarly this technician post is held by only one employee so only i want those uh, designations where you know there, there is only one employee that is working in the whole organization so i want this query okay so try this query on your own i'll uh, pause the video okay if you are not able to get it then uh, what uh, what has to happen first of all if you write this query okay uh, select uh, designation comma what count uh, because i want the number then i will use the count star from which table from the employee employees table and then uh, i will write uh, group uh, by designation see you will get you know number of employees working in every you know by their designation for example two are analysts two are developers but i only want the count star which counts are i only want the, those employees that you know only those designations where only single employees working so how will i approach this again i will use a having clause for it by because i cannot write something like this where count star is equal to 1 so what will i write i will write uh, from which table so, so what will i do you know i will i'll just you know copy it to notepad uh, because you know again i will not take the headache to you know write this query again and again so just let me copy this to the notepad so that it is uh, okay uh uh from employees and then go by designation so you know you are getting and now what i have to write i have to write like this having what having having what count star is equal to what count star is equal to 1 if i just copy it and i go and paste it over here i just i'll do it now if i go and paste it and then you will get you know hr head and technician are two designations where only one employee is working okay you got it and you can do something like this also you know you can use those aliases in the having clause also for example suppose uh, as emp cnt you you write this as employee count in emp cnt so you can write something like this also having emp cnt is equal to 1 so okay so it is also valid to use some aliases inside the having clause if i copy it and then if i go and just paste it you will get the result also okay all right so you have got this also you have understood the working of having clause so now you got an idea that what is happening exactly is something like this fourth after the group functions have executed which clause is executing you know the having clause is ex executing okay so first where clause and group by then group functions and then after group functions have been evaluated then we you know we can use those evaluated group functions inside the having clause so this is the order in which you know your query is executing all right so this is this looks out to be very good now for example i want to have uh, uh, suppose um, Uh, suppose the average salary of uh, all the departments so what will i write i think this query is simple um, you know this we have already seen so the average salary of uh, i will remove this because you know we have already done this so i want uh, you know department id comma what average of salary from the table employees table and then grouping by what department id i am writing this query then just let us run this query first and then uh, you know perform some other operations so uh, we'll use a having clause of course in it here i have got you know uh, this okay uh, okay now uh, let us uh, i don't do not do it for you know for this let us do it for uh, suppose designation okay so that i will you know i want more than you know 3 4 rows so that you know i can uh, i can work easily you know i can show you some good results okay uh let us write this query i think this query is very simple to understand you are getting this now i want the uh the average salary so now what i am going to do i want the average salary of only analyst developer and uh managers so what uh, this is this also we already saw from employees where designation in what designation in uh, first the uh, manager so and manager and then uh, then your what then the 
developer and then analyst analyst now if i write this query then i copy it i just paste it again it is very simple to understand i only want the average salary of manager developer analyst and this is very simple but now again i have one more condition what is the condition the condition is that i only want the average salary of those designations where you know the average salary is less than 90000 okay the average salary is less than 90000 so what query will i write i can write some now i will have to use the the having clause suppose i i i know given a last name to this suppose i give the last name as avg cell then what will i write having what avg cell is less than what 90000 now if you go and run this query copy and then you write it so now you will get only analyst and developer see you will not get manager why because for managers the average salary is greater than 90000 for analysts and developers the average salary is less than 90000 okay this much is also fine and i can do something like this also for example now i have got this result i can now apply order by order by suppose uh, designation and i write d descending okay mm, copy and then now if i go and uh, i run this let us see what see your firstly you are getting first you are getting the analyst then the developer but now i have ordered it by first order it by designation and then in descending fashion so first the developers will come and then you know the analyst row will come so now you get an idea for example here if you see having and then in the fifth position after having you know what will be running order by will be running okay so this is you know this is the you know the your sequential way of when you write group by clause this is the sequential way of execution okay first the where clause run then the group by then group functions having and finally the order by is gonna run okay so this is you know i have you know uh, designed a query in which you are using everything you are using where group by group functions having and then order by clause and their order of execution is also mentioned in serial number so you keep always these things in your mind okay so uh, i think i'm done with the mm, with the having class I'll just let me see if there's some other thing that i can also take okay suppose i give you one query uh, find uh, uh, suppose i you know this one assignment query for you quickly we'll solve it query uh, on the same line query to find uh, number of uh, employees hired in uh, 2017 uh, 2016 and 2015 and uh, the number of employees uh, suppose uh, you know just i'll you know let me write one query select star from employees or so that I can just you know I, I can see it. Order by hired it. Okay, in 13, 15, 16, 17. All right. So all right. Well, and and the number of employees hired in a year are greater than say suppose. Two. okay for example i want to find the number of employees hired in 2017 16 and 15 but what else condition is that then the else condition is that that i only was out of 2017 16 and 15 i want only those years where the number of employees hired are more than what where are more than two so what query will i write for this try it on your own this is the last query for as far as having clause is concerned try it on your own Okay, if you're not able to get it, then what do I want? I want, uh, first of all, I will say the, I will say extract what? Extract year from uh, high date. Then I will find the count. Okay, let me analyze this column. Uh, i just, uh, okay. Suppose I analyze this column as num hired. Okay, num hired all right from which table from the 
employees to do but and then but there is one more condition what will i write where because i only want for years for which years i only want for 2017 16 and 15 where extract year from higher date in what it will be in i i'm just uh, sorry my god i'll just you know just uh, i'll copy it i'll write it in a notepad you know because many times if there are some errors then i'll be able to you know easily resolve it as far as you know in notepad it is very easy to do it let me remove it let me paste it over here uh, okay, just uh, remove this from here also remove this from here also where extract year and higher date in what it is either in 2017 either in what 2016 and either in what 2015 and then uh, you are performing group uh, by what uh, you are grouping by extract year from high date year from high date let me go and first of all run this query and see if it is working or not okay um, all right I, i'm not sure whether it will run or not okay it is not it's working or maybe all right let us see okay so we are getting you know in 2015 16 17 how many employees you know uh, so you are getting it now i only want those years where you know the number of employees hired were more than two. that see this was what i wanted you know and the number of employees hired in a year are greater than what are greater than two so what i have to write in this case also uh, first of all let us do one more thing also suppose you realize this column you realize this column suppose uh, uh, e you realize it it has e year so you can write it in you know e year and group by say e year okay uh e year okay so i am analyzing this column let us see if it is working or not i'm not sure if it will work but uh, hopefully it should oh, column year and year close okay i think yeah this is a problem uh where extract a uh, year from uh higher date you know but this i this will this will always work you know i just remove it oh my god all right remove it this we don't want group by year this will always work i think now if it work okay let us paste it yeah it is working so now Uh, so what i have done you know uh, what i have done you know i have analyzed this column which column i have analyzed this extract year from high date i have analyzed it at it as was it have i have analyzed it as e year so i can use you know the analyze column in the group by clause and similarly for the having clause also i can use i can you know i can say something like this where num hide is greater than uh 2 okay where num hide is greater than 2 so what is num hide this is this column is your num hide column okay this is your num hide column so i have you know so i can write something like this and then you know i just copy it and now if i go and paste it it's going to run i think it should run okay yeah so only the year 2017 the number of employees out of 2017 16 and 15 only the year 2017 is the only year in which the number of employees hired are greater than 2 okay so if you have ever uh, studied the relational uh, databases uh, if you have ever worked with any relational database then you must be well conversant with what are primary keys so primary key constraint is used to uniquely identify each row in a table so what is exactly a primary key how it is uh, you know it is uniquely identify each row in table say for example that you have bank you have some account in certain bank and you want to you go to the bank to make some withdrawal then you won't say that this is my name and you give me such and such amount of money you will always say that this is my account number and on the basis of this account number you pay me this money or you pay me that money why because your account number is uniquely identifying you okay so in this case the account number is a primary key then a primary key cannot be unique and it cannot be not null why a primary key cannot be unique see suppose you go to the bank so it is not possible that two customers of the same bank have the same account number it is never possible they will always be unique that is why you know every customer will have a different account number so a primary key is always unique and primary key can never be null why a primary key can never be null because 
if you make primary key nev null then what is the purpose you know for example suppose you go suppose you have a bank account you have everything you registered in your bank account details for example your name your mail your mobile number your age your sex everything is registered the only thing is that your account number is set to null is it possible it is never possible so uh, so in this case account number is a primary key and primary key can never be equal to null so that why you know account number can never be null that is why it is said that primary key constraint is equal to what it is equal to unique plus not null always remember that okay primary key constraint is equal to unique plus not null so how can we create primary key so one approach of creating primary key is that whenever you create a table you mention the column that is your that is a primary key column how will you do it let us try to understand this okay so uh, i am going to my database and uh, i am just going to uh, So I have logged on to the database and uh, suppose I create a table, okay, and I create a table, suppose the name of the table is movie and suppose I suppose say the movie name and uh, suppose the movie name uh, Barcat 20 and then I say suppose uh, director, okay, and director is also, suppose it is also a string, okay. Then I, when I'm creating this table, so one approach of creating primary key, there are many approaches of, uh, you know, there are two approaches of uh, creating a primary key. But one of the approach is that uh, whenever you are creating a table inside the, you know, when you are, when you are mentioning, mentioning the column, for example, I'm saying over here that this column is uh, denoting the movie name. This is the uh, data type of the movie name. For example, it is varcat 20. It is a string type. And then uh, I would say that this is also what this is also a primary so now what will happen just try to see this i have created this table the movie table has been created and when i say dsc movie then what will happen you see this m name is column is coming out to be what it is primary key okay and the uh, you know null if you just observe this column see this column under null m name has said to be no why because movie name can never be equal to what it can never be equal to a null value all right so this way I have created a table movie and movie name is a primary key. So let us try to insert some values in the, you know, this, uh, this table. Suppose I say insert into movie values. Suppose uh, one movie was, uh, um, okay, you can take any movies. For example, uh, uh, one of my favorite movie was, uh, mm, there was a movie that was uh, that was based on World War Two. Uh, I don't remember the exact name of the movie. For example, let us say Matrix. Okay, it was one of uh, very one of my good favorite movies. And Matrix movie, I don't know the exact director. Suppose I would say that James was the director of the Matrix movie. So this is interest ins inserted, you know. Then uh, I would say that there was another movie. Suppose. Uh, uh, Suppose uh, DDLZ, it's one of the favorite, uh, it's one of the very popular Bollywood movies. And suppose the director was Karan Johar, you know, I'll say Johar, okay. So two movies have been interested, inserted. And then will I say select star from which, from the movie. Then you will get, get these two movies that have been inserted. Now let us try to do one thing. Let us try to, you know, um, for example, I would say that uh, Matrix and... Uh, Again, I let let me go and insert this row. Is it possible? Let let me try to insert this row. Will it will this be inserted? Suppose uh, I insert, I change the director to Jane's. Not I change the director to Kane's. It can be some arbitrary name, but I have set the movie name again to what Matrix. And you can observe. Sorry, all right. Uh, all right. What did I set? Kane's. But I have said you know the movie that. Uh, the movie name to be equal to what matrix and you can see that this movie name has already been inserted so once you try to do it it will never allow why because duplicate entry for matrix is never possible why because the movie name is what it is a primary key and duplicate values in a primary key column are never possible primary key is always unique and if you try to insert a null value suppose you try to do something like this you make the movie name to be what null and then you uh, try to do it column m name cannot be null why it cannot be null because it is a primary key so this way you add you create you you know you create a primary key on a column 
and then there are uh, also very special things suppose uh, you want to drop a primary key see the last point if you want to drop a primary key use alter table table name drop primary key okay so what is my table <clears throat> my table is uh, you know this is this this table okay if i say dsc movie this is my table now if i want to drop the primary key then what will i do i will say alter table then what is the name of the table movie and then what will i say drop primary key if i say like this then the primary key will be dropped so i have dropped the primary key and now again when i say dsc movie you know see this uh, primary key constraint that was occurring over here is not now it is now it is not occurring over here now okay so now it is uh, the primary key constraint has been removed and then once when i say select star from uh, uh, movie then you uh, you are getting the same records but the table has no primary keys okay and then uh, what you can of course do is that uh, suppose now you try to insert the same uh, you ins try to insert this value matrix comma k and c matrix has already been you know movie name has been once one movie name of type matrix has been already inserted you know one movie of name matrix has been inserted then if you try to insert another movie of the name matrix is it possible now yeah it is possible why it is possible because we have already removed the which kind of constraint we have already removed the primary key constraint so if you again say select star from movie you will get two movie of what type two of of type matrix okay i will say delete uh, from i will delete all the rows from the movie table okay so now again uh, if you say dsc movie you will get describe the details of the movie table now what i want to do is that i want to uh, this you see the fourth point for example you know, once third fourth point you know, to add a primary key to an existing column so now uh, you see this um, does this same name is a primary key no it is not a primary key one way we you know we created the primary key was like something like this you know when we created the table for example what we did you see we uh, one way of creating the primary key was by using at the create table when we, you were creating the table then you were mentioning that such and such column is a primary key but now i don't want this for the table has already been created and now i want to add a primary key constraint to a specific column in a table so what will i do so i will use the fourth uh, fourth point you just observe to add a primary key to an existing column use what alter table table name add constraint constraint name primary key column name okay so wherever i have you know these uh, 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 these uh, between these two you know you have to substitute you, you have to keep on substituting values so you have to substitute table name you have to substitute constraint name and you have to substitute uh, substitute what the co column name so how will i do it so i will write alter table okay and then i need to substitute the table name so what is the name of the table movie and then i have to say add constraint uh, sorry add constraint i can give any name of, see now what i have to give i have to give the constraint name so i can give any name of the constraint for example this is also a valid constraint name but generally it is very advisable that you give a descriptive constraint name so how will you give the descriptive constraint name you can do it do it something like this what is the name of the column m name what is the name of the table and what is the type of the constraint pk so it is now describing that m name column of the movie table has been given the primary key constraint so it is a descriptive name constraint name then what i have to say it is a primary and on what column the primary key constraint has been added it has been added to the m name column and then once when i say now again you have see you see i have inserted the primary key constraint on the table if i try to insert uh, if i try to say dsc movie then again now previously you were not give under the key column you know you were not getting the primary key but now you are getting what it is a primary key okay clear so this is the working of primary keys i think uh, okay all right let us continue so uh, so this is the way we work with primary key but uh, again there is one problem uh, what is the problem uh, let us try to understand this uh, uh, for example uh, if you are uh, if you are uh, if you watch bollywood movies uh, then uh, there was a you know many times it happens that movie names are repeated for example there was a movie that was called agnipath and that was released in 1990 and that belonged to amitabh bachchan and uh, there was also a movie that was uh, there was a movie that was also called agnipath and that was uh, released in the year 2012 and that belonged to rithik so uh, you know <laughs> just uh, to um, give you um, i mean uh, 
like yeah like uh, you know kind of uh, I would say IMDB Agnipat so you know two Agnipat movies are there one was released in the year 2012 and the other was released in which year it was released in the year 1990 see this movie 1990 Agnipat it belonged to Mr. Anita Bachchan and uh, then you say for example Agni Pad 2012 uh, that it was released in the year 2012 and it belonged to Ritik. So I want to keep uh, these two uh, you know tables in my these two movies in my movie table so what will I say insert uh, into movie values okay and then I will give the movie name and suppose Agni sorry Agnipath and uh, suppose uh, you know the previous uh, I'm sorry I am DB Agnipath and you know the 1990 movie Agnipath it was uh, you know directed by whom it was directed by Mukul Anand you see so I will give the name of the director Mukul Mukul okay he was the director of the movie I have inserted this row now again I want to insert one more row for Agnipath that was released in the year 2012 and the director was what director was Karan uh, okay director was Karan you can just check it also you know for example if you go over here Agni Pet 2012 movie uh, director was Karan Malhotra okay so this way it goes so I'll just uh, I'll just close these close these tabs again if I go to my database uh, will it be allowed see will it be allowed it will never be allowed because why you are making because why you are making duplicate entries for what you are making duplicate entries for the movie name and movie name has been set to what movie name in the movie table is a primary key so now this is a problem so how can I remove this problem I can say set that I, I will say that movie name is not a primary key the movie name so now I will introduce you with the concept of what the concept of uh, uh, the concept of composite primary keys so it is also possible that two or uh, you know more than you more, more than one columns in a table can be can be primary keys combinedly so primary key can also be combination of many columns so you know on what it is called it is called a composite primary key a composite primary key can have multiple columns whose combination must always be unique okay so what does it mean that uh, <coughs> in a composite primary key you can have multiple columns but their you know their combination will always be unique so i can say for example over here for example in my uh, in my application the movie application that um, i i will say that the movie name will not be a primary key the movie name plus the release year will be a primary key for example you know only unique movies uh, per year are released so i would at least go on to say that uh, movie name plus the year in which it was released will be the <coughs> primary key so now uh, what I need to do, I need to create a composite primary key. So before creating a composite primary key, uh, let me do one thing that, uh, you know, because this movie table already has a primary key, so I need to remove that primary key. So how will I remove this primary key? Is How is it possible? I will say, you see, this PowerPoint presentation, all right, you know, if you want to remove, um, I'll, you know, I'll just minimize it. If you want to drop a primary key, alter table, table name, drop primary key. So uh, I will use this. Okay. Alter, sorry, my just uh, alter table. And then what is the name of the table? Movie. And then what I say? Drop primary key. Okay. And then once when you say it, the primary key will be dropped. So now I why I dropped this primary key because now I want to add a composite primary key to this table. So before adding a composite primary key, I'm saying that movie name plus the release year is unique identification for all the movies. So because you know, I have not added the release year column to this table. So let me do that also. So what will I say? Alter table, which table movie add what add a column and I will say it is a uh, just a release year column and it is of type int so i have added a release year column so if you say dsc uh, dsc movie describe the movie table then you are getting what the movie name and the release year column so now i want to do what i want to add a composite primary key so how will i add a composite primary key composite primary key composing of what it is being composed of the movie name movie name also and the release year also so 
now if you want to do it then what will you do again you will add what you will say alter table okay which table the movie table add uh, this see uh, alt table table name add constraint constraint name primary key followed by the column name so what will i do add constraint and suppose i will say that m name uh, r year r year release year and what is the name of the table the name of the table is movie and what is the type of constraint it is a primary key constraint so i have given this name constraint this name the primary key constraint i have given this name alter table table name add constraint constraint name what kind of constraint a uh, primary key constraint and on what columns i'll just minimize it and on what columns you can just see there are two columns one column is the m name column the other column is what it is the r year that is a release year column if you go on to it again a primary key constraint has been added but now if you go you know if you say suppose uh, dsc what is the name of the table it is a movie table so if you go on to do it see the movie name and the r year are you know they are primary key so uh, so so always keep this in mind i'll i'll make this very important statement you know it is very important that is why always I'll, I'll take a notepad to write it down because it is very important i would go on to say that a table can have only one you know primary key a table can have only one primary key so here you see that m name and r year are they both you know different primary keys suppose this is this table movie having two primary keys see m name and r year no it is not their combination is one unique primary key see this is the difference m name and r year are not two separate movie uh, are not the separate primary keys for the movie table why because a table can have only one primary key but m name and r year combination is what it is what a uh, it is a primary key so if you want to just see it for example i say now i can do it insert into what insert into movie table uh, movie table and what uh, what i want to insert suppose the name of the movie i will say agnipath and uh, i will say what is the name of the director suppose this is the director that has you know that uh, suppose mukul and it was uh, 1990s agnipath and it was released in the year 1990 then when i go and insert it okay all right suppose i will say insert into movie and values okay let us go and insert it so this is inserted again i would say there was one movie agnipur that came in the year 2012 and that was di directed by karan uh, malhotra and uh, it was released in year which year you know 2012 you know now it is possible see if i say select star from which table select star from the movie table if you if you do it then you see this movie name is uh, movie name is ge getting what movie name is getting repeated but the movie combination of movie name you know sorry i know i'm just uh, there was one row that was already inserted so i will you know i will say delete from uh, movie where uh, r year equal to 0 okay i'll just remove it all right now if you say select star from movie then you will get two movies you know their movie name are same but the combination of movie name and the release year is what it is different okay so movie name and release year are together they are forming a primary key so if i try to do something like this suppose i insert into suppose i change the name of the director you know suppose i change the name of the director to like this i give any name okay and then you know the combination of uh, the movie name and the release year is remains the same for example agnipath 1990 you know it will never allow see duplicate entry what what not agnipath or not 1990 but a combination of what agnipath and 1990 so a primary key can const constraint can span multiple columns also okay so in this way so uh, <clears throat> again you know one more thing one more last thing about primary key constraint if you want to get some details about the primary key constraint then you can use this uh, uh there is one uh, metadata view that is the information underscore schema dot uh, what uh, i think it is key column usage ah uh, yeah okay so if i you know i you can uh, fetch the you know what will i say select uh, suppose i will register okay 
I will say so, select uh, then I will say uh, uh, enter column name comma suppose uh, uh, I will say constraint name all right and then I will say uh, suppose uh, table name uh, okay I think uh, okay I just need to copy it table name and then I will say you know table schema from uh, from which table from this table from information where will I uh, then I'll just add a where clause I'll give the where for example sorry where uh, table underscore name uh, is equal to what is the name of the table it is equal to movie sorry movie and uh, what is the name of the schema then I will say table underscore schema equal to the name of my you know the current database that is the publisher database so if I go on to you know make this query uh, okay so and I just uh, all right and uh, I just need to add a and over here all right sorry and all right so you'll get you know this um, move this table has you know it has a primary key constraint that is imposed on which column two columns m name and r here suppose you uh, do something like this okay there is one table that is a emp table suppose you do and then uh, that that this table we have frequently dealt with what is the employees table and employees uh, sorry employees table does it has a primary key just check it out yeah it has a primary key constraint on which column it is a primary key constraint on the eid column so this way you can you know you can fetch the metadata metadata information that is associated with <coughs> primary key we'll be also using this uh, metadata view for you know when we will fetch information about the uh, the you know foreign keys so we will use this also so what is a not null constraint this constraint forces uh, the values in a column to be not null so uh, what does this mean that whatever value is stored in a table if you mention that that the particular column is not null then uh, you can never insert a null value in that column so let us try to understand this with uh, a practical example so this is my database and I say select a database then uh, you know you'll get the database that's a publisher database and then I will create a table and suppose the tab name of the table is uh, say suppose the products table and I have two columns product ID int and uh, product name okay that is suppose var uh, 20 and against product name I add a constraint that is the not uh, null constraint so I have created its product table and now let us try to do something suppose I say insert into products uh, and then I may give the name of the column suppose the product ID and the product name and then I insert values suppose I say that first uh, the product ID is one and the product name is uh, suppose a uh, soap then uh, this will be inserted and if I say select star uh, from which table from the products table then you will get this uh, sorry select star from products you'll get it but now if you insert another row and uh, you give the second value that is a name value to null so will it accept it let us try to see this suppose a uh, product ID is 2 and then I try to insert it see it is not inserted why because product name cannot be null so why because we have inserted a null constraint inside uh, not null constraint inside the product name so product name column this column can never be null <coughs> so this is what I have written over here the syntax of a not null constraint is something like this column name data type and then not null so this is what we have done over here see when we created the table how we created the table we created the table something like this suppose the product name column that was made not null so the column name and then what was the data type the data type was varchar 20 and then I gave the not null constraint so this column product name is a not null column okay 
clear so i can never insert a null values inside this so now if i say uh, if i describe my table uh, products then what will you get you will see that this product name and there is one you know in the describe there is one column that is a null so this product name you know the value for product name against null is no so that means product name can never be what it can never be null but product id can always be null how it can be null just see for example i say insert into product uh, suppose i just give the product name if i just give the product name then what will be the product id it will be it will be null <coughs> suppose an mm, suppose the name of the product is shampoo and then if you say uh, select star from which table product table then you will get a value of id id is null value id can be set to null by because here you have seen the pid can be null but can product name be null no it can never be null so this is what is null constraint in many cases it may be required that uh, you have you need to create a null const not null constraint on an existing column in an existing co existing column sorry so how will you add it see uh, to to do this you will use a change uh, alter table change so how will you do it to add a not null constraint to an existing column so let us uh, try to see this also for example let me create another table uh, create table suppose i will say uh, products one suppose okay and uh, there is one column pid and that isn't and there is one more column product name and that is vatcar uh, 20 so i have created this table that is a products one table and if you say dsc uh, describe the products one table then you will you know both the of these column that is a product id and then the product name both of them can be what they can be null so i try to do something like this insert into sorry into which table products one table suppose values uh, one comma so so we have created the products one table and uh, then i insert a value suppose two comma uh, shampoo and then i insert uh, suppose third and you know for against the third id I, I insert a null value so how will i insert a null value i will just write null over here so now you can see if i say select star from which table from the products one table then you will get the product name as null so now what I want to do is that uh, I want to add a null constraint to the product name column of the products one table. See what I want to do. I want to add a null constraint to the product name column. Okay. So what command will, will I use? I will use this command. See to add a not null constraint. Sorry. I want to add a not null constraint. I don't want to add a null constraint. I want to add a not null constraint. The value is nullable, but I want to add a not null constraint to the product name column. So to add a not null constraint to an existing column, what command will I use? I will use this command. Alter table, alter table table name, change the old column name to the new column name and then the new column definition. So how will I go for it? I will say something like this. Alter table what? What is the name of the table? Products one. And then will, what will I say? Uh, see. Uh, change sorry uh, change and uh, what is the old column name p name what is the new column name i would say it is p name and then what is the new column definition so i have to give the whole column definition see what uh, the data type and then followed by the you know the not null constraint so what uh, was the data what is the data type that i want i want the data type to be also what it has to be a var care but i will add a new constraint to it what is what is that constraint I will and I will add a not null constraint to the product name column. If I try to do this, let us see. Okay, yeah, it is done. So uh, now if I say uh, select star from products one, then what it has done? See, it has uh, replaced all these null value. The null value that was there in the product name column, it has re replaced it with a blank string. Okay. So now I can never insert uh, in a null value in the in the product name column of the products one table. For if I try to do it, for example, here if I try to do this, suppose I say the PID uh, to be four, and then if I again if I try to do this, it will never happen. Why? Because product name column can now it can never be null. 
and if you see products one table see this column product name it can never be set to what it can never be now set to null all right uh, so uh, yeah there is one more thing that i just want to tell that uh, whenever you add a null constraint uh, sorry a not null constraint i always you know um, confuse it with a null i would say a not null constraint to a column then you it is a it is it is a generally a good practice that you also give a default value how will you give a default value for example i'll just create a test table suppose i say create table test 11 suppose the name of the table is test 11 and there is just one column serial number of type int but uh, i will add a not null constraint to this uh, serial number column and i will also give what i will give a default value suppose default value is 0 okay so if now i say insert into uh, uh, okay what will I do? I'll just add one more column. I'll quickly add, add one more column to this table. Alt table. Uh, what was the name of the table? Test one one. Uh, suppose add uh, suppose name and add. I will say column. Okay. Or add column name and then suppose the data type is of varchar twenty. Then when you say DSC test one one what values will you get the serial number and the name see serial number i have added the not null constraint so serial number can never be null so let me try to do one thing i will say insert into test 11 and i will not give the serial number value i'll just give what i'll just give the name so i i will say name sorry name and uh, suppose values in the name i just give one field what krishna okay then what will happen see select star from test 11 if you do this then the serial number will be set to its what it will be set to its default value and this is exact exactly what we did while creating the table we said that serial number default value for serial number has to be what it has to be zero so if you don't give the value of serial number then it will be set to its default value of zero and this is exactly what happened over here i just inserted the name into this test one table i didn't insert it the serial number the serial number was set to what it was set to zero and serial number can never be null see if you describe test one then what is happening serial number can never be set to null so it, because we have added a not null constraint to the serial number column okay so what is a foreign key constraint so it's a kind of referential integrity constraint. Uh, so what is exactly this referential integrity constraint? See, whenever I ask many students what is foreign key, they just say that foreign key is a key that points to, you know, some other table. So they just have don't have any clarity in mind. So but foreign key is used to impose, you know, a kind of parent child relationship between two tables. So what is a parent child relationship? A parent child relationship states that uh, suppose uh, can you create a child without a parent? It is never possible. First you have to create the parent and then you can create the child. So this is what I've written. A foreign key constraint denotes a parent child relationship. A child cannot be inserted unless what exists? A parent exists. And suppose you delete a parent and the child for the parent exists. So can you delete the parent? You cannot delete the parent. Because why you cannot delete the parent? Because the child will become orphan. So this kind of constraint is imposed by a foreign key relationship between two tables. We will also see, you know, after some time, we will see that foreign key constraint can be imposed within the same table. So, uh, you know, uh, so this is just a kind of extension to foreign key. But uh, right now, just uh, just consider foreign key is like it points to the primary key of another table and it maintains referential integrity between two tables. So let us first of all understand the need for foreign key and see how you know between these two tables between two tables there is no referential integrity. For example, I have one table the EMP table and I have one table the DPT table. You know these tables kind of tables we use frequently and I say select star from EMP and I will say select star from DPT. So let me first of all state that these two tables belong to the same organization. So for the organization, there are two employees, Nikhil and Nitin, and working in the sales and marketing department. So Nikhil is working in sales because his department ID is 10 and department ID 10 is sales department. Nitin is working in the marketing department. So both of these tables belong to the same uh, organization. And now let me do something. I will insert a record into which table. In, I'll insert a record in e EMP table. And I will say values. Suppose there is an employee, third employee, and 
name of the employee is Neha and her department ID is 40. If I try to insert this record, it will be inserted and I will say select star from EMP and select star from DMP. Can you see what is the flaw with this uh, this kind of um, this these two tables? What is the flaw with these two tables? There is a serious flaw with these two tables. For example, um, just uh, all right. What is the problem with these two tables? See, uh, if you it's because these two tables, you know, they belong to the same organization. Here, these two belong to the same organization. Here, I have inserted an employee. Which employee? See, Nikhil is working in the sales department. That I know, you know, Nikhil is working in the sales department. But here, I have inserted an employee which is working in department ID 40. But is department ID 40 existing? Department ID 40 is not existing. That is why this, if you try to insert this, if you insert this employee, this employee should have never have got inserted. See, because department ID 40 is, ex it is not existing. Then how can an employee work in department number 40, you know, department ID 40. So ideally this record should have never got inserted. Okay. So can you just uh, make out which will be the child table and which will be the parent table? This employees table will be what table? It will be the child table. And this department's table will be what? This will be the parent table. Why? Because the child cannot exist unless the parent exists. See here, this Neha cannot exist until until a department with the ID 40 exists. But because we have not inserted the foreign key constraint, it is, you know, it is allowing us to do so. For uh, now, suppose I try to do one more thing. I try to delete depart the marketing department. So what will I say? All right. Uh, I'll just go over here. I'll just uh, delete from which table? Delete from DPT where uh, D name equal to what? It is equal to uh, marketing. So uh, where D name equal to marketing. If I try to delete the marketing department, it will get deleted. And I will say uh, select star from EMP and then I will say select star star so select star from dpt but again now there is a serious problem i deleted the marketing department i deleted the marketing department but you see this employee nitin has become a orphan record because why because its parent you know its corresponding department in the department's table is not existing the dpt table it is not existing so this record has become an orphan record so idly when we try to delete the marketing department it should not have allowed to delete the marketing department so if you want to impose these kind of relationship between these two tables so that what kind of relationship that uh, a parent uh, a, a child cannot exist up until and unless a parent exists and a parent cannot be deleted until and unless it <coughs> and it has some dependent records child records so this is the kind of relationship between two tables that is imposed by a foreign key so how will we add a foreign key i will just clear these two tables delete from uh, emp and i will say delete from dpt first of all i'll clear these two tables and uh, you know these two tables are now empty if i say select star from dpt it is empty and then i say select star from emp it is empty and now if you want to add a foreign key then you will use this command what command to add a foreign key constraint on existing column use alt table table name add constraint constraint name then foreign key then on the column on the child table that you are uh, imposing the foreign key and which table it references so i'll just you know i'll just want to make a point